Good morning, wherever you are watching from in the world, and welcome to round five of the 2023 Fee Network Junior GP World Championship, coming to you live from just outside the magnificent city of Barcelona. A 4.2 kilometer in length with 14 turns, Circuit de Catalunya Barcelona is one of the classic tracks on the annual motorsports calendar. A mixture of hard braking, fast corners, a one kilometer front straight, plus plenty of opportunities for passing make for the perfect racing destination. Today, it's the stars of the future who take to the Halo tarmac just about 30 minutes outside the city of Barcelona. I'm Chris Jordan and today I have the pleasure of being alongside Tristan Finocchiaro as we get set for what should be a cracking day of racing under the Spanish sun. And Tristan, I have to say, it is another cracker of a day. Real crackle of anticipation too down in pit lane as we walked around. I'm looking forward to this one. How are you feeling ahead of us? Absolutely, completely excited for this one. Chris, uh, all the fans have flooded to the circuit this morning. We saw them all going down the pit lane for that pit lane walk, getting all the autographs with the riders. These are the stars of the future here at the Finetwork FIM Junior GP. All these riders will be coming through these categories. It is the gateway to the World Championship to, at Grand Prix level, and I'm excited to see how these riders will fare today. Yeah, and you can see there, 27 degrees. It's still coming up on 11 a.m. here if you're from the American audience that's 81 degrees Fahrenheit but that's only going to get warmer it was 30 plus yesterday we took some strolls around pit lane and yeah it was a difficult one this is what happened though last time out in the junior GP championship at the Algarve and starting at race two it was Angel Piqueras who led going into the opening corner a little further back Jabi Zurututa crashed out of contention while we see Almanza Marco Ruda going toe to toe here rubbing shoulders coming down the front straight. Almanta had the lead going into turn one, but it was all chopping and changing. Joel Esteban there, Luca Laneta as well. But it was Piqueras Esteban fighting it out. But there is your winner, Xabi Zuratutza, coming from the depths of hell at the back of the grid and through the long lap penalty to become the Junior GP 100 race winner. In race two then, it was Piqueras who once again led into the opening corner. A little further back, excuse me, it was Jacob Rulson, Marcus Ruda were in the thick of the action. As we look at Piqueras once again, a trio formed between Esteban, Piqueras and Almanza. Esteban had to make a little bit of a comeback. He was 1.5 seconds behind at one stage, but what a ride to take the win ahead of Piqueras on the line. But it is all about this rider on our screens. Number 18, Angel Piqueras, our championship leader. It's a big, big weekend for him. He has the opportunity to wrap up the Junior GP title. He's already got the Red Bull Rookies Cup crown to his name, and he's looking to follow after Jose Antonio Rueda. And this is what he said as he starts on pole. Sí, ha sido sí un día complicado porque bueno en, en el FP3 he tenido una caída al principio del entreno y bueno he tenido que llegar con la moto por el pilín corriendo para salir otra vez y bueno he quedado cuarto en, porque en el FP3 solo vale clasificarte para para la Q2. Y después en la Q2 se salió, tenía un buen feeling del, del otro libre y, y he salido confiado y bueno, he cuadrado la vuelta y he podido hacer la pole. Es un circuito difícil porque, bueno, es muy difícil por la recta, ¿no? Porque si tú a lo mejor vas solo y después alguien te pilla un rebufo, te quita la pole. Entonces, esto, estoy bastante contento. Pienso que será muy difícil escaparme aquí por la recta, pero bueno. Todo puede ser, ¿no? Entonces, a ver. Hoy le dedico esta pole a, a mi hermana Zulema porque es su cumpleaños que hace 23 hoy. Well, a happy birthday to Zalema and Picaris. You could see his strategy there. We've already seen him pull the pin a couple of times this season for victory. He feels it might be a little bit difficult with the longest straight on the Junior GP calendar here in Barcelona, over a kilometer in length. So we could be in for a big, big battle, Tristan. Yeah, absolutely. Like you say, the, the, long, the longest straight on the calendar and slipstream is so important around this circuit. We saw a lot of riders trying to get that slipstream yesterday, running slow in a lot of set in a few sectors, and a lot of the riders have been slapped with a back of the grid penalty, the, including the junior talent team riders, all four of them. Aditama, O'Shea, Boazri and Daniel Sharil will all start from the back of the, uh, back of the grid, as well as Alia Bartolini, who was also caught riding slow in one of the sectors. Alex Gordon is another rider. He'll start right from the back of the grid. And Leo Ramestoffer also was caught not just riding slow in two sectors, but also 
riding dangerously through the long lap loop. So he'll have to ride through the long lap loop again during the race, as well as starting from the back of the grid. So a double penalty for Ramistoffer. Yeah, you got to be really careful around here. You don't want to incur the wrath of the stewards. Jacob Ralston then, he will be out to spoil the Angel Picaris on pole party. Yet to win this season, he had a bit of a disappointing run last time. He was competing at the front in race two and dropped to P15. He's got one podium to date so far. This is his best qualifying, his previous best came at the Algarve last time where he started 40. He starts second today and will be hoping to target that breakthrough victory and deny Picaris another win in the class. Yeah, Ralston's looked so, so strong so far this weekend. Another rider who's looked pretty strong this weekend as well as the number 22 of David Almanza, always up there on the timing screens. Yeah, a real, real talent, but he's got the problem in the first four races where he crashed out, not necessarily through any fault of his own. Maybe an Estoril, he did high side at the chicane, but he bounced back in spectacular fashion at the Jerez round race two to take victory. He was on the podium then last time in race two at the Algarve, just missed out in race one, and you can bet he will be part of that lead group. Should a lead group form, which we imagine it does, it is Junior GP after all. He will be part of it, whether it's three or 20 riders. Yeah, you can you can bet anything that there will be an absolute freight train at the front of this race. Lining up, heading the second row in fourth spot then is Jabi Zuratuza. One win and one podium currently to his name and he'll be looking only 17 years old. He picked up that first win back at uh, Portimao and he'll be looking to try and do that again here today. Yeah, the 100th different junior GP race winner and what a way to do it myself and colleague our colleague Liam Hodgins had the pleasure of commentating on that race and I tell you it was an absolute showstopper coming from the back of the grid through the long lap penalty and then he denied Tachacombe Boasri looked to be on for the win coming through the final corner but Zabi Zuratutsa with the ride of his life to come through and take it on the line Nico Carraro then, he was the winner in the opening race of the season. Another spectacular win, one win, one podium. But as you can see from his string of results there, he hasn't quite scaled those heights yet, hasn't been back on the podium. Valencia, his best finish in race one in round two. But since then, it's been a little bit off form for such a talented rider. Well, starting from the second row of the grid, he'll be looking to turn that around then with that uh, dip of form of late perfect place to be able to do it there front right in the middle of the front row we'll be able to get that inside line down into turn one so he's positioned himself in a, in a pretty decent spot there yeah it's a pretty long run to the line as well we've mentioned it a couple of times already about the straight but it is a long run to the line if he can just get a good start he will be in contention as will Luca Linetta twice pole man in 2023 he was on pole last time out in the Algarve as well but encountered some problems at the start took a visit into the pit lane just before a warm-up lap and that cost him his pole position in race one but as you can see it didn't affect him too much he came another rider to charge from deep on the grid to take a podium finish race two though he did start on pole but came home in p11 he'll be looking to maybe rectify that last result after such a strong race one in the algarve but he is definitely a threat from the second row Definitely really coming into his own this year as well. We saw him, we saw flashes of brilliance from him last year, but this year, like we say, he's really come into his own. Um, got that pole position last time out and um, and, and, and a few podiums this, this year as well. Alvaro Carpe then will line up in the seventh spot on the grid. The Spanish rider has picked up a few podiums so far this season and looking strong so far this weekend as well. Yeah, he seems to like a Spanish round. Three podiums in a row coming at Valencia and the Jerez double. We're back on Spanish territory now here in Catalonia at Circuit de Barcelona. Will he be a contender for the podium? I wouldn't bet against it. Yeah, didn't score a point last year, but really coming into his own this year. He's joined the Husqvarna team and really coming strong on, on that machine. So definitely the right step in the, a step in the right direction for the Spaniard. Facundo Yambias then, the Uruguayan rider, just a teammate of Angel Piqueras, who starts on pole. He will launch from P8 on the Honda machine. Zero win, zero podium, zero pole so far, but he has picked up 12 points. It's not been maybe the breakthrough season he was hoping for, but Valencia showed promise getting a P9 there. But as you can see, he's finished outside the points on several occasions. In 
the points, picked up two points there, or three points rather, in P13 in race two at the Algarve. So he'll be looking for a continuation. Maybe a top 10 is a good ambition for the young Uruguayan. Yeah, it's a difficult step coming over here from South America, coming over here to the European style of racing. It's a very, very high level here at Junior GP. It is the final stepping stone before Grand Prix racing. You see a lot of these riders move up to the Moto3 World Championship and beyond. So many big names have come through this championship, so it's a very, very high level. Indeed, and another one of the riders who is one of pedigree. We see he already has a podium to his name this year. Adrian Cruces, just 16 years of age. That podium came in Jerez race one. He was on the front row last time out in the Algarve, but couldn't quite make that count, as you can see two non-point scoring finishes, two DNFs. So he'll be looking to rectify that. Yep, and starting back there on the grid, he'll be looking for a good start and a good run down into turn one. We'll expect to see a lot of changes of positions on that run down into turn one and on the first lap as ever in Junior GP and, ever, and as ever in racing. This rider though, Joel Esteban, so impressive this year. Yeah, I'm not sure how much our watchers or our viewers caught of that Algarve race too. But my word, what a race he had. He's come up from the ETC. He got his breakthrough win last time out in race two. I think it was four laps remaining, three laps remaining. He was behind the lead duel of Almanza and Piqueras by about 1.6 seconds. And he went on to win the race. Absolutely superb effort. Yeah, really, really impressed by Esteban this year. He's really made that step up from ETC to Junior GP. He's made it almost look easy, and it definitely is not. So um, great attitude he has towards it as well, just making sure he's enjoying his racing and he's uh, hitting his targets and he's achieving his goals. So incredible stuff from the youngster. Yeah, he's, he is definitely fond of a charge through the pack. So a little further back in P10 on the head of the fourth row, but don't dis count the young Spaniard. So then, this is the grid for the upcoming Junior GP race one here. Angel Pagueras then lines up on pole position ahead of Jacob Rolson and David Almanza. They'll be looking for a strong run into turn one. Zero two is a Carraro and Lineta make up row two ahead of Carpe, Lambias and Cruces on row three. Then on row four, it's Joel Esteban, Cormac Buchanan and Morosi, Marcus Ruda, Marcus Uriur. Uriarte and Hamada are on the fifth with Rosenthal, Uchiumu, Uchiumu and Collins on the sixth row. Plonk heads row seven then ahead of Uezu Tietzi. Detweiler heads the row eight ahead of Elia Bartolini who was slapped with a penalty as well as Shireen O'Shea and Adetama. Uh, Buazri as well with a rider for, with a penalty for riding slow yesterday. Ramastoffa will have to take a long lap penalty in this one as well, as well as Pass starting from the back of the grid with Gordon starting from dead last. So off on the warm-up lap we go. You saw some big, big names at the back of the grid, namely Tatakon Boazri, P2 last time out, a race winner already in the Junior GP class that coming last year at Estoril. It'll definitely be worth watching what he can do from further back on the grid as they flick through turn one and turn two left-hander and get ready for this big, long right-hander. That is turn three. Got to keep it tight here. It's very, very long, looping, sweeping right-hander before we make a run to the line at turn four. Popular overtaking hotspot. Expect plenty of action around these parts of the track, particularly sector one, Tristan. There's a lot of overtaking action and we expect to see plenty of it here. Yeah, we went through the overtaking hotspots yesterday and I would definitely say it's definitely the corners at the end of the straight. So turn one, turn four, at the end of that short, short, sharp little straight, turn five as well. This one we're just looking at right now and then down the hill at the end of the back straight as well down at turn 10. But as we've seen over and over again in Junior GP, every corner is a passing opportunity. <laughs> yeah, it very much is. We're seeing we have our hotspots listed out in our notes all the time and the riders decide, no, I'm going to make a new one. <laughs> Almost no point in listing them out, is there? <laughs> very little, very little. So this is the championship standings. Well, very briefly, but we saw Angel Piqueras is on top in the Junior B GP World Championship. Two races coming today, and if he can leave here with 75-point advantage, then he will become the new Junior GP World Champion. Yeah, He's he aiming to follow in the footsteps of Jose Antonio Rueda. He won here last year. He's now in the Moto3 World Championship class. 
but he also won the Red Bull Rookies Cup, so he would just become the second ever rider to do so. Piqueras needs to score 21 points more than Alvaro Carpe to win it this weekend. 11 more than Luca Linetta, 8 more than Ralston, and 7 more than the number 7, Joel Esteban. It's a tall order, but it could be, it could be done. Yeah, a lot of talent out on track. Piqueras chief among them, but you never know what can happen. This is racing after all. You never know what could happen. So the red flag is up. Riders are on the grid as we prepare to go. It's 11 o'clock. This Junior GP round five race one is only moments away from kicking off as the last few riders now roll up to their spot on the grid. We hold the red flag above and we will be underway with lights out in just a couple of moments. So here we go then, the revs are arriving, the green flag is gone, the red flag is gone, the first lights are out, and we are away here in Catalonia. Piqueras has a good start, but the number 12 of Jacob Rulson looks to have gotten the inside line, but he is tucked in right behind Piqueras, and Piqueras has definitely got the run to the line coming into turn one. Will Lani will be able to fire it up the inside coming in. Rulston has a look, as does Carraro. Carraro gets up the inside of Almanza, but he's got the inside line, Almanza on the left. But it's Piqueras who takes the whole shot coming into turn three. But Rolston has made a move through the right to left switch. And it is the number 12 of Jacob Rolston who leads coming out of the first sector. Piqueras slots into second with Almanza in third. It's going to change again. Almanza is making a move upside. Ooh. Oh, he gets right up close. close with Piqueras. Piqueras had to check himself. And he's dropped into third with Almanza now in second place. A good start then from Nico Carraro, but he's dropped back a little bit further down now. And it was a beautiful move from Ralston there through that fast right-hander. He leads the way then from Almanza and Angel Piqueras. These positions will continue to change for the duration of the race. Ralston still looking for that first victory. 15 laps to go, though. Almanza just looks like he's trying to get a little bit of a head start here. Yeah, there goes the hand. Follow me, boys. Let me catch that Jacob Rolston. <laughs> I've never seen that happen once. But it is Rolston out front. We see a long lap penalty coming the way, coming up on our timing screen. Is that for Leo Rammerstoffer? And he will have to serve that over the next couple of laps. It's Rolston that leads though over Almanza. Piqueras is in third. Joel Esteban fourth. Jabi Zoda Tutsa in fifth. Nico Carrado, as you mentioned, got a good start. He's in the top six places. Facundo Yambias, Adrian Cruces, Alvaro Carpe, and Luca Lenetta round out the top ten. But it is all going to chop and change. Esteban got a flying start from tenth place on the grid. Now up into fourth and looking really, really racy. On the back of Angel Piqueras, he's right in his slipstream as they go down into turn one. But the front two also. Almanza, it looks as if that's got the lead ahead of Ralston but it might all change down into turn one, More expected abreast. to continue. Well, it's Almanza manages to hold on, but Esteban, Esteban very pushes wide it there. a little bit wide, and is that Cana or Rolston who's gone back through, and Esteban has slotted back into fourth place with Piqueras in third. So it's as you were coming across the line, which is a bit of a surprise, but not for long as Rolston has a little luck up the inside, but Almanza closes the door in his face. Rolston going to have another little peek up, see what he can do, but Piqueras is right on his tail. And again, it's as you were coming across. Adrian Cruzes also looking menacing at the back of this group on the number 11. He's looking to try and join the party at the front now as they continue to change positions. Piqueras is on the move. If he wants to win it this weekend, he's going to have to be looking at that top step on the rostrum. But if Ralston and Almanza have anything to say about it, it won't go the way for Piqueras. Esteban now all over the rear wheel of Piqueras as well. Keep an eye on the youngster. So, so impressive so far this year as Joel has been Joel Esteban. Very fast in the ETC last year. Missed out on the championship with injury. Just having a little look further back on the time sheets of some of the boys who were slapped with penalties from the back of the group. Buasri and Bartolini have already pushed their way up into P18 and P19. Ali Tabas in P15. And Eddie O'Shea, Britwatch, is in P11. An absolutely superb couple of opening laps for the number eight. Let's see if he can keep that pace going and get himself up into the top positions here. Podium could potentially be on. He's setting some, a decent pace out from, uh, in mid-pack. But it is Rolson who leads with Almansa. Let's see if it all changes coming down turn one. Remember, it's a kilometre in length, so slipstream is going to be huge here. Zuda Tutsa side by side with 
Esteban, but there's not oh, a whole Cruces. lot of shopping. And Cruces gets a, sets the fastest lap, but it gets hung up on the outside by Nico Carraro. Yeah, Cruces trying to force it to fit there, trying to find a gap that was there, but wasn't fully committed to it. And when you're in a grid like this with riders like this, you really need to be committed to those moves now as Rulston up the inside of Almanza takes that inside line. Piqueras now just watching these front two doesn't feel like he needs to be getting it too involved in the battle at the front. Still 13 laps to go in this in this one. So no sense in rushing things at the moment. The race will just start to settle down a little bit. But as you can imagine, the, the positions will continue to swap. Yeah, good point. You can imagine this is going to be a real test of Piqueras' racecraft. He's got the championship advantage. He could seal it today. But the last thing he wants is a mistake, maybe to crash out and open the door for one of the other contenders to come in and close that gap. Yeah, he could win it this weekend, as we've said, but he doesn't have to win it this weekend. There's still Aragon yet, yet to come up next, and it could very well be done there. A couple of riders running a bit wide in the background. Esteban just losing sight of the top three at the moment, but you can imagine by the end of that kilometre long front straight, he'll have reeled them back in, perhaps just a couple of mistakes there for the number seven, still as you were for the top guys. Yeah, it's uh, very settled this race as of yet. Rulston, Almans and Piquet is very happy just to lead as a front three. They're going to see if they can open up a little bit of a gap to the guys behind us. There's plenty of chopping and changing. Esteban, Carrado, Cruces, Zurutuza all battling as Almanza has a little look up the inside coming through into turn one, but it is Rolston, and once again, Slipstream hasn't been coming into huge effect here, as there are three riders battling there, Cruz is Esteban, and I'm not sure who the other one is, I think it's Carraro, but again, the front three remains the same, coming across the line and into turn one. This is something we didn't fully expect, Picaris mentioned it yesterday, that the Slipstream on that front straight is a huge advantage, but it seems riders are not yet taking full advantage of it. Zuda Tutsa, though, moves up into fourth place. Carrado sets the fastest lap of the race, a 149.304. But it's as you were, once again, Rulsen looking comfortable out front with Almanza and Picara slotted in behind. Then it's Zuda Tutsa, Zuda Tutsa rather, Carrado and Esteban completing top, top six places. Yeah, it's not uncommon to see some of the riders slightly further back in the field setting the fastest laps of the race, of course. They've got a few bikes that like Carraro's got, four bikes ahead of him, punching a hole in the air, so he can know there's a lot less wind resistance on board that Moto3 machine, so that'll help him no end down that kilometre-long circuit, taking nothing away from the lap he's put in, though. Rulston then chasing that first victory. He picked up second place earlier on in the season, but still yet to taste champagne on the top of the podium, and he's looking pretty racy at the moment. He's looking confident at the front of this race, doesn't seem like he's out of his depth at all. And it's just actually starting to stretch these guys a little bit now. Yeah, it's a very interesting tactic here from Rulston. It looks like he wants to break away, get them out of his slipstream. And he could be on for a first ever win if he can put up a little bit of a gap. And we're going to see it now as we cock off another lap. Just a little bit of housekeeping. And Leo Rammerstorfer's day gets a little bit worse as he has to repeat his long lap penalty. But just as we say, Rulston was trying to open up a gap. We see Almanza, Piqueras, Zurutuza, and Carraro now right on his tail. Carraro looking for the inside line. It's one, the number 18. Is that Alvaro Carpe? It isn't. My apologies. But we see a rider going down. That's the number 78 of Rosenthaler, who's gone down. A dangerous place to go down there at the end of the front straight, so we're going to hope that they can get the bike off the circuit. Currently, yellow flags down into turn one. Hopefully, they can, like we say, get the bike off the side of the circuit and get it out of harm's way. Yeah, hopefully, and you can see the marshal sprinting on to get rid of it from turn number one. Thankfully, it looks like he is OK, but Licky Molly Husqvarna in tag. Let's just have a look what happens here. Oh, he just tags the back of O'Shea. Tags into the back of Eddie O'Shea. That's very unfortunate. O'Shea has done well to stay afloat on that. But my word, he slid a cross track there. What a nightmare for the Licky Molly Husqvarna in tag GP team. With Rammerstoffer just being handed a repeat long lap penalty, Rosenthaler uh, crashes out of this race. See Eddie O'Shea now at the back of this group. You've got that front group with Lynetta latched onto the back in P10, and then a little bit of a gap to that battle for 11th spot. Currently, Eddie O'Shea leading that, but it'll be a tall order to try and catch this front group. He's running more or less 
just about seven tenths of a second slower than these guys out the front. So it'll be a tall order for the Brit to catch these guys out the front. Lunette has just dropped off the back of this group as well, but hopefully by the end of that front straight, he can latch himself back onto the back and we will have a 10 rider battle for the win. Zaratuza now right in the slipstream of Angel Piqueras. They all head down the front straight one more time, all going to the inside of the front straight. We go five coming in and Zaratuza <laughs> has come out and Carraro slots into second. And for the first time coming into turn one, we see a change in the lead. Zuratuza firing it up the inside. Incredible there. We saw him getting right in the slipstream of Piqueras, was putting himself right in his wheel tracks, and he got the perfect buttery slipstream down into turn one and then made that move. Brilliant stuff from Zuratuza. Took victory last time out in the Algarve, and he's looking racy here in Barcelona. Yeah, he looks very much like he wants this. He did it on the line the last time in race one in the Algarve. It looks like he's going to try to do it a little bit earlier this time round. Carraro has done well, but that's Rulston diving up the inside one of the network boys. That's Almanza. Oof, and was that Rulston just slightly out of a seat a little bit? But Almanza has an answer for him. No, he doesn't. Rulston cuts the nose off him and remains in P3. Zero two zero is that leads from Rulston. From Carraro, sorry, Rulston currently in third. Almanza as well, looking racy in fourth. And Cruzes making some big moves so far in this race. Luneta has dropped off the back of this group, struggling to get back on to this leading battle. Sideways down as then misses that battle a little bit further back for 11th space. You, 11th place, you've got Eddie O'Shea in there, Lambias. Morosi as well in there, and a couple of the other talent team boys, Tachikorn Boazri in there as well, who picked up an impressive second place last time out at the Algarve, Chris. Yeah, very impressive rider. He's come through the Asia Talent Cup system, as which you can now see applications are now open for the Asia Talent Cup, a breeding ground of the best riders from the continent of Asia. Tachikorn Boazri has a little moment there, just coming around the right-hander, still slots in behind Eddie O'Shea. As we look a little further back, with the number Uchuimu bringing up the pack, and it's all changed again out front at Zurutuza, followed by Cruces and Almanza coming into turn one. And then is that Alvaro Carpe a little further back, just making a move up the outside to get himself into the top five or top six places? So, with nine laps to go, it seems that the action on track is beginning to heat up. It's Zurutuza, he leads Cruces, Almanza is currently in P3, Cruces and cuts the nose off his teammates as well. Almanza, as he looked at up the inside, Jacob Rulson has slotted back into fourth position. Angel Picaris, he's had a quiet race. He was mostly in third place, and here comes Carpe. He's just done him up the inside on the left-hander. So oh. Picaris, it's falling back just ever so slightly here, but I think it's a matter of biding his time, picking up some safe, safe points. Alvaro Carpe looking toward the inside of Rulston. No way through, through there, through turn six. Carpe really coming to his own this year after jumping onto that Husqvarna machine. Didn't score a point last year, but now joined the Intact GP Husqvarna team and is really, really pushing on on that machine. And like we say, he's really coming to his own. Zaratuza then it is that currently leads out the front. One last time out in Portimao, then crashed out of race two or a little bit tight through there. And Almanza and Cruzes both make their way through on Zaratuza. So then. Almanza is now that leads with Cruz as his teammate all over his rear wheel, but the, the positions will change once again as we head down that kilometre long front straight. Yeah, the final right-hander now as we come through to the long straight. You could throw a blanket over the front nine here. We're looking at a move Rulston. up the inside there as Rulston oh, does it on the grass. And Carpe takes the wider angle. Who will lead coming into turn one? Almanza has the advantage, but Chol Esteban and Carraro are charging up the inside. This is four or five riders abreast. It's Almanza, followed by Rulston, and then it's Cruces. Take a breath, no idea where to look as they all barrel down into turn one. Four, five abreast, riders everywhere, the dust being kicked up almost on the grass. And it's the number 22 of Almanza that leads then from Rulston and Cruzes Pejeras now menacing in fourth place, now up into third. He slots himself underneath the number 11. Pejeras making moves now. Pejeras making moves, but keep an eye on Alvaro Carpe, who's the quickest rider of this lead group last time out by about a tenth and a little bit to spare in his back pocket. So just keep an eye on him. But it is going to get bunched up here as Almanza leads Rulston. Rulston going to have a little look up the inside. Not quite. 
but as they swing around the left-hander, as Picaris now is beginning to really get into motion. Time's just dropping off slightly on the last couple of laps, but that will be with all the battling that's going on out the front of this race, but lap times don't matter anymore. It's about who crosses the line first. Almanza then still leading ahead of Ralston. Ralston hung, hungry to taste victory on that gas gas machine. Yeah, really looking strong this weekend, was following his times during practice and looked so good, so consistent on that bike. Yeah, having spoken to some of the riders as well, they were concerned about the speed of Almanza. He has been constantly among the top three, looks a real talent. And we actually ran into Moto2 star Alonso Lopez yesterday, and he's in the Fee Network uh, garage this weekend, helping out the team. But he's been very impressed by David Almanza's performances this weekend. He's definitely got the pace to lead at the front, is what he said. Well, he wasn't wrong. He's been out front here non-stop. It is Almanza who leads over Rolston. And then the battle for third place, it could be any of them, was Cruces who had it over the line. Picaris is in fourth, and Carraro hangs it out the outside of two riders. He has some of that, says, take some of that to Picaris. And a brilliant move out the round of the outside on Picaris and Carpe to get himself into fourth place. We get the hands out to follow me, boys. Why would you want to follow the leader? You want to lead the race, guys. It's all action here out the front. And poor Chappie Zuratuta, a couple of laps ago, he was leading this race. He's been bunted all the way back, just ahead of Joel Esteban. Well, Facundo Yambias remains at the back of this group. It'll be interesting. We mentioned Yambias, a top 10, would be a very good result for the Uruguayan rider. But is he just waiting for his moment to strike at the back of this group? It could go any way here. Could be a turning point for Yambias. Here's a replay of all the action that went down into turn one. Almanza breaking hard on the curbs and Rulston just slotting it up the inside on that gas gas machine. Perfect block pass executed there from the gas gas rider. Beautiful images there through the first complex, that turn one and two. Really, really nice section of racetrack here at the circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya. Rulston then, it is relentless, wants to lead every lap that he can on that gas gas machine and is just able through that those those last couple of sectors to just put a little bit of space between himself and the riders behind but as we see lap after lap by the time they get to the end of that straight that little bit of time that he's put on them was worth nothing yeah he is very strong through that opening sector and opening couple of sectors but as you mentioned down the straight we're going to see that little bit of a gap he had built up disappear here as he's veers it to the left coming into turn one round the outside then of Cruces will that Carraro make that move stick he absolutely does brilliant stuff so Cruces slots back into fourth at the expense of Carraro who is now in third Zuratut has fought his way back up to fifth place with Picaris in sixth and Picaris once again is he just showing refusing to show the wheel just happy to take home some good points while well, he's got his main title rival just after overtaking him that's alvaro carpe who has just fired past him so maybe that might kick the championship leader into action here joel esteban lead following then luca Lineta, as we can see has fallen back elia bartolini's charge from the back of the pack sees him move into p11 just behind morosi eddie o'shea 14th he was another rider to start at the back of the grid so that's pretty excellent ride from both the italian and young brit yeah that group has swallowed up luca lanetta now who was a few bike lengths up the road from this group but he's now right in that mix with the two junior talent team riders brasri and o'shea in there now back to the front guys ralston it is still that leads from almanza and carraro Javi Turituza looking menacing on the number 85 machine as well. Piqueras has been bumped down the order here, but it's a difficult situation for Piqueras. Doesn't want to get too involved in the mix, doesn't want to get in any danger. But at the same time, if you're not overtaking in Junior GP, you're being overtaken. And if you're getting swallowed up into the pack behind, it's just as dangerous as being battling with the guys out the front. So, needs to think cleverly here, Piqueras. Yeah, we mentioned it already about his racecraft. He's probably, it looks like he's racing, not with the same abandon he had earlier in the season that like, has seen him take three wins so far. He seems to have a little bit of cautious, caution about how he approaches this one with the championship on the line. He's just going to try and get a little bit closer to it this weekend if he keeps racing like this. He's currently running in P7. That would pick him up a comfortable nine points. 
That wouldn't quite extend his advantage, but with time running out from the likes of Carpe, Carraro, Almanza, Rulston, they're going to have to start winning races if they really, really want to reel in Picaris over the next few rounds. So it is Rulston who still leads out front. He's led a number of the laps here in race one in the Junior GP. A really strong performance from him. Davra Almanza has not been far away. It seems it's the Rulston Almanza show in one and two. Carraro has slotted into third position. He hasn't really been challenged since he got there after he punted back Adrian Cruces, who has dropped to sixth place with Al Alvaro Carpe and Xavi Zodotuta both getting the better of the Fiend Network at Mir Racing Team Rider. Four and a half laps to go then. And it's the calm before the storm in Junior GP as Almanza now takes the lead from Rulston. And there's a change for third as well. Azuratuza has a little look up the inside and does make that move stick on, on Carraro. Alvaro Carpe as well now looking menacing on the number 83. Currently sat there in fifth position. The Estrella Galizia boys look on. Eager to see where Piqueras will finish this race. Has picked up three wins, six podiums and one pole position so far. This season has been on the podium in every race up until Portimao where he was forced right wide with two laps to go. Finished seventh. Apart from that, his worst result has been P3. So a pretty consistent season for the number 18. Yeah, he has been excellent all year, and we saw the live championship standings there. Things remain as they are. He'll be 51 oh, points ahead close. of Shabby Zuratuta fires it up. The outside coming into turn one, getting into the inside line into turn two to take the lead ahead of the Fear Network Mirror Racing Team boys. Almanza in second, Cruces in third, with Alvaro Carpe in fourth, and Jacob Rolston. He has been dropped to sixth position coming through there. Well, he's got some work to do now to make his way through the pack. He's just got Picaris behind him with Joel Esteban following in the championship leader. And Facundo Yambias remains at the back of this group. He's dropped off just ever so slightly. Moves being there, made there a little bit further back from Joel Esteban. Last very strong runner last year in the European Talent Cup, as we mentioned earlier on, and really coming into his own this year in the Junior GP category just dropped off the back of the front guys ever so slightly still in this group but not in the mix with the front three but still three and a half laps remaining and the order I'm sure will change from corner to corner as it does Lambias just dropping off the back of this group now you can see that battle for 11th in the back of your picture as well but Zuratuza now eager to taste victory once again didn't finish in race two at Portimao but he'll be hoping that first victory has opened up the floodgates and they'll be coming in like London buses. There's a crash there now for the number 72. That's unfortunately, Amada down that who race. has gone down in a turn seven, I believe. And the yellow flags are out there, so they'll need to be careful coming through that now. They're not at that part of the track yet. They're coming back into sector one from sector four. Turn one coming up. Hopefully, Hamada is OK. And Zuratuta leads across the line with Almanza and Carpe close behind. But will he lead coming into turn one? Well, they're all taking different lines here, aren't they? So it's Zuratuta, who does have the advantage. Cruces has a little look up the inside, but it's Carraro, who likes that move around the outside in turn one, getting the inside line into turn two. He slots in, stays in second place, with Cruces now in third, Carpe in fourth, and Almanza. Well, that's not great to see. That's Hopefully he... It's all precautionary and it's just a stinger more than anything serious. So coming around turn seven, oof, he lost that very violent. early. Yeah, just on the brakes there, just happened very violently, perhaps a little bit too much, perhaps just caught a little bit of the curb and that just snapped away so, so quickly. The front just washed away and he was down, hit the tarmac quite hard there. So no wonder he's walking slightly wounded, but I'm sure he'll be up and okay and ready for the next one. So these guys out the front, no idea where to look half the time. There's moves being weighed all the way through this leading group down into turn one. There was 10 bikes all all pretty much competing for that same piece of tarmac. There's only, only so much tarmac. There's only so much space around this Catalonia circuit. But these guys now, Zuratuza leading the way ahead of Carraro. He's kept himself in the mix all race long. Esther Bands now moved Here himself up into fourth as well. And he gets bunted back by Almanza as well, who jumps up in the inside for P2. And 
blink and you miss it here because Carraro and Zuratutsa uh, rather was leading. Carraro met his move, but all of a sudden Zuratutsa is back in third place and within the clutches of Joel Esteban, who was on the last lap at the back of this pack. Adrian Cruces was on the podium, but now he's just ahead of Yambias and behind Jacob Rolston, who has led most of the race in seventh and eighth place. Over we go then. Only a couple laps remaining. This is going to get spicy here. It's under the Barcelona sun. Blistering conditions. Carraro leads over the line. Esteban takes a wide line. Carpe wide line as well. Is Carpe going to make that move stick? And here comes Angel Piqueras on the outside. He, oh, that brilliant from the championship leader on the outside. Carpe looked like he was going to make a move, but Angel Piqueras shows all his class and quality there to slot in behind Joel Esteban, who is, at, well, like I said, at the back of this pack only a couple laps ago, and now he's in the front. Picaris, we were wondering when he was going to make his move. He's met it with two laps to go. Coming round now to the right-hander. Picaris is in second place. Zuratuta is up into third place Car at the expense of Carpe. But Carpe is going to fight back. But Zuratuta has the inside line now on Picaris. Picaris is a sandwich between Zuratuta and Carpe. And Picaris has been dropped back to fourth position. It's all chopping and changing here with a lap and a half to go. It's crunch time in the FIM Junior GP World Championship. And just as we thought we were going to write off Esteban, he's made his way right to the front of this group. So as we can see, anything can happen here in Junior GP. A lap and a half remaining of this circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia. And it is Javi Turatuza who currently has the advantage. But Angel Piqueras, he can smell blood. He knows now it's, it's hammer time. It's now or never in Barcelona for him. Is he all oh, a little bit of a moment for Piqueras? But he still makes it stick front. though, he's still leading. Brilliant. You never give a smell of blood to a vampire. And that's exactly what Angel Picaris is. He's a vampire. He smelt the blood and now he's out front. Coming around into the final sector. One just over one lap remaining. The championship leader has made his move. Zuratuta sits in second, just ahead of Joel Esteban. But keep an eye out for Alvaro Carpe in sector one. He's been brilliant coming around the tight and twisty turns that are there in sector one. He's going to make a move, but Picaris is leading over the line. Right then. Down into turn one, they go. Trying to take a little bit of a breath there, see what was going to happen. But as ever, it's completely unpredictable as Zuratuza leads the first, the final lap, the first sector of the final lap. Angel Picaris slotting himself into P2. Alonso Lopez looks on, he's here helping the Fenetwork boys, but they've been pushed back in this pack so far this race. On this last lap, Carpe making moves now further back, and the two Gas Gas boys are swapping paintwork. Luckily, they're the same colour. Yeah, Rolston and Carraro getting rubbing elbows there. That won't be on the Christmas card list, Ooh. but it's Carraro who drops back as Manta is getting the elbow grease out. He dives up the inside of Carraro there. He wants his podium. Out front, though, Zuratuta, who leads over Piqueras. Jacob Rolston has led for the most of this, but the Finewek Mir boys get a bit close and personal. Almanta is scything his way through this lead group. He is taking no prisoners. He's just gone through and Adrian Cruces into fourth position. He's going to chase down this lead group now. Zuratuta out front. Piqueras, Rolston, Almanza just behind them. But here comes Carraro up the inside of Cruces and oh, Almanza's he's gone! Down. Oh, he's gone down! Almanza. Oh, and how many times have we seen that this season? David Almanza on the charge and he's gone down on the last lap as he looked for a podium. So it's Zuda Tutsa then who leads with Jacob Rulsen after making a move on Piqueras. And it's Zuda Tutsa leads, so Piqueras has been dropped back to third position. Coming around now into the final quarter, Zuda Tutsa has got the advantage. Will the slipstream come into effect? I don't think Rulsen's close enough. And Zuda Tutsa is going to take the win ahead of Rulsen. Piqueras is in third position. Nico Carraro comes home fourth. Adrian Cruces and Joel Esteban in the top six. Davral Manta crashes out on the last lap as he's looking for a podium position. But Zura Tutte is back on the top step. Look at those celebrations. A brilliant, brilliant ride from Zura Tutte. An absolute barnstorming final lap here at the circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. A brilliant ride from Zura Tutte timed it to perfection, was leading down into turn 10. And as Jorge Lorenzo once said, if you go into that stadium section leading, you're more or less going to win the race, although he was proved wrong in that race. <laughs> Jorge Lorenzo was proven wrong. <laughs> 
Tortilla's not awesome. When you say it, eh? When you say it, you jinxed it. <laughs> yeah. But brilliant stuff. Look at that wheelie from Jacob Rolston as well. Eddie O'Shea just behind. A brilliant ride from Eddie O'Shea. P12 after coming from back of the grid. Just behind Elia Bartolini and Tata Buasri. Also riders who came from the back of the grid. Brilliant ride from Buasri for P10. Picaris, though. He has set himself up for a championship win. We were questioning his tactics. He was very, very cautious there today, but yet finishes on the podium. But it's all about this rider here on screen. Shabby Zuratutza. Yep, Pekeras finished in front of all of the riders he needed to finish in front of, but uh, still a tall order to pick up that championship in race two. Zuratutza, though, what a ride from the number 85. Yeah, absolutely super stuff from Zuratutza. And another brilliant race from Jacob Hulsen. He is back on the podium after his earlier one this season. Brilliant, brilliant wheelie here. He's quite fond of that, and he's very good at it. Side-by-side -side wheelies with Angel Piqueras. Two very, very happy riders, and why not? Piqueras extends his championship lead with a P3 here. 16 crucial, crucial championship points for the young Spaniard, and the title is very much on. Can he see this in race two? That we will yet have to find out. But watch him go. He is a talent for the future. Zabi Zuratuta, he's really, really coming into his own these days. Two wins in the last three races. The first win coming as the 100 different race winner in the Junior GP class. And he did that from coming on the back of the grid through the long lap penalty to steal it on the line in the Algarve race one round. Today, it was a much simpler affair, I think it is fair to say, because he started on the third row, led for much of the race. Jacob Rulson and Almansa did lead in the early stages. Zuratutsi really came into his own during the second half of that race. Getting some congratulations there from the marshals and the number 85 real talent for the future in this class and who knows even beyond as he rolls into pit lane clearly clearly delighted with his performance so we await the park Ferme celebrations i'm sure they will kick off in big style as he does a little stand stand up on the way through to park Ferme. let's see how the celebrations will kick off a stoppy just in front of his team, and let's take a listen to the celebrations here in Circuit de Catalunya. on the shoulders of his team. Vamos, Xavi, they say. Let's go, Xavi. A superb performance. Jacob Rulston dropping over to offer his congratulations to very, very happy riders, no doubt. Rulston still waiting for that breakthrough win, but an absolutely superb performance today. He was leading in that lead group constantly. He did get dropped back to about P7 or P8 at one stage with just a few laps to go, but managed to fight back brilliantly to take another podium here. The Asper junior team clearly have a big, big talent on their hands. As do the team Estrella Galicia, 0-0 side, Angel Piqueras. Champion elect, well, we have to wait and see in race two. He's picked up 16 crucial points here as his championship charity goes on. He doesn't look overly delighted, but this is the story of the race. Zuru Tuta, what a move that was to fire it up the inside coming through there. He's, uh, Jacob Rolston then bullies back. Angel Picaris well just behind them on the last lap. David Almanza, a heartbreak for him as he charged for the podium. And then it's Jabi Zuratuts that led Rolston over the line with Angel Picaris in third. Disappointment though for David Almanza. He crashed out of the race while on the podium charge. But big congratulations all round from the two riders there. Clearly delighted with Two excellent, excellent rides. We'll hear from our race winner momentarily. Tristan is down in Park Ferme. So we will just wait for Zabi to make his way over and Tristan will be able to get his thoughts.
We can see there the celebration still in full flow. Jacob Rulston, Angle Picares. Picares didn't maybe have the biggest smile on his face, but didn't seem overly content with this race. But he's still on the podium and still in control of his own fate. Now it's time to pass over to Tristan and our race winner, Chabi Zuratutza. Chabi Zuratutza, you took victory in race one in Portimao. You've taken victory here in Barcelona. It was an incredible last lap. You timed it to perfection. Just talk us through it. Yeah, it was incredible race, amazing race. Very, I, I am very intelligent in this race because I am in the group. I'm put leading, but I, I see I don't go fast first, and I go in the group. And in the last lap, I try to pass all and do the last lap alone and win my second race of the championship. Perfect. Now in Spanish. Bueno, ha sido una carrera bastante bonita, ya que he sido muy inteligente y bueno, he analizado bastante bien la carrera, que cada vez se me, va, se me da mejor. Y bueno, muchas gracias al equipo, que son unos cracks, han trabajado muchísimo desde el jueves, ya que hice una cagada mía, pero bueno, ya lo he solucionado. Y, y nada, muchas gracias a mis sponsors, que si no sería por ellos yo no estaría aquí, ni en ningún lado. Y bueno, y a mi familia, y a mi tío, y a mis padres, y a mi prima, y a todos. Os quiero a todos. Congratulations. Thank you. So this is how race one here at Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia, Barcelona went. Jacob Rulston, brilliant start, but it was Angel Picaris who took the advantage going into turn one at lights out. It was chop and change right behind him. Rulston slotted in behind with Carraro, Almanza, Zuratutza just in behind fighting for third place. Rulston made a move then up the inside, but Almanza managed to hold it off, but not for long. Rulston finally getting out into the lead. Almanza put in a fine ride. Both riders put in a fine ride to take the advantage out front with Picaris slotting into third position just behind them. Eddie O'Shea then, the number eight, started at the back of the grid and he got ran into the back of by Rammerstorfer, or Rosenthaler rather, making for a difficult day for the Licky Moly Husqvarna team as Rosenthaler had to go through the long lap penalty as well. Back out in the victory fight though, Rolston, the number 12, and Almanza, the number 22, getting close there. But it was Rolston again who took the advantage as the Team Australia Galicia 00 boys looked on. Angel Picaris looked like he was having a quiet race, slotted a little further back in that lead group, but it wasn't to be for long. The number 72 of Hamada crashing out. Hopefully he is okay. He looked a little bit shaken after that incident, but managed to clear the track pretty quickly. Jabi Zuratutsa then began to make his move and pushed out into the front, and as did Angel Picaris. Here we can see the number 18 of Picaris, after a brilliant move at turn one, managed to take the lead with just a couple laps remaining. But then it was all chopping and changing again. At turn one, Xabi Zuratutsa coming wide in the number 85, and he was leading Picaras before Rulston lined up a move on Picaras. Here we go, up the inside of the Team Australia Galicia rider, but then just behind him, David Almanza, who was on the podium charge, crashed out of contention on the last lap. Zuratutsa then coming around the final corner. There was no catching the number 85, as he held on for a second win ahead of Rulston and Angel Picaras. So, big welcome to the fans here from the stadium announcers. We get ready for the podium ceremony. And Tristan, it is wonder wonderful to see such a large crowd out here for round five of the championship in Barcelona. Yeah, it was great to see when we pulled up to the circuit this morning, all the fans flocking to the circuit, all the fans flocking to pit lane for that pit lane walk. So out comes Angel Piqueras, P3, and I have to give him big credit for that helmet. I got the view of it yesterday, I'm a big fan of it. Australian rider then, Jacob Rolston, he finished in second and will take his spot on the podium. But this is your race winner here from race one in the Junior GP Championship from round five. A clearly, clearly delighted Chabi Zuratutza. Nothing tastes sweeter than victory, and it's his second on the bounce, but barring that crash in race two at Portimao. So now it is time for the three riders to get their very well-deserved trophies. 
presented by Joseph Luis Santa Maria, the managing director of the circuit here. And also the team representative getting his well-deserved and well-earned desserts. So big congratulations to Angel Piqueras. He takes home the trophy for P3. Muted celebrations, I would say, from the championship leader. Maybe he was hoping for a little bit better things, but a P3 today in race one is not a bad result by any means. Yeah, he looks a bit disappointed with that one. He parked for a muted celebrations, and that is who I thought it was. Joel Kelso, Moto3 World Championship rider, handing out the second place trophy to his compatriot, Jacob Rulston. Rulston, you can see as well, also really wanted that victory, but it was Zuratuza that took it, and he's definitely happy. Jean-Marc Desnus then giving the winner's trophy to a very, very happy Xabi Zorotuza. And now time for the Spanish National Anthem. Stadium announcer doing a fantastic job to get the people going here after a wonderful rendition of the Spanish national anthem. So, they'll take their helmets. They should have a little bit of fizzy water to spray. They'll get their photo on the podium first. And a little bit of Queen starts playing out. You can always be certain of one thing here in Barcelona, the DJ is always on point. Yep, I'm enjoying. Zuratuz is going to be hoping no one's going to be stopping him in race two. And here we go. Out with the bubbly, fizzy water, of course, these are just young teenagers and the stars of the future. But the celebrations Austin's are around. Yeah, Ralston's the only one there that's got <laughs> that's got the champagne or I think it's the Prosecco actually. But yeah, these guys, both under 18. That's it. Well, he'll need to be careful with that champagne with race two coming up. So these are the results from the opening race of the Barcelona round here. Zabi Zurutuz is your winner with Jacob Wilson and Angel Piqueras joining him on the podium. Nico Carraro just missed out on the top three by three tenths of a second with Adrian Cruces, Joel Esteban, Alvaro Carpe just behind. Facundo Yambias pulls off a good result for P8. Alessandro Morosi then the head of that second group. Tachiko and Buasri, Elia Bartolini, Eddie O'Shea all coming from the back of the grid to put in fine rides. While Luca, Lanera, Marcus Uriarte, and Daniel Sharia complete the point scoring finishes. Marcus Rula, Norman Buchanan then coming in just in about a second and a half, a couple of seconds behind Sharia. With Arby, Aditama, Uchiumi, Rammerstorfer, Detweiler, Almanza, Tiazzi, Plonk, and Gordon all collecting race finishes, but no points. And as you can see, David Almanza did remount but came home 22nd, not what he was looking for. Uetsun Collins also took the checkered flag with Rosenthaler and Hamada, both crashers. So we will have the championship standings now and it is a pivotal race to coming up. We'll just wait for our graphic. There it is. Angel Piqueras is out top, number 18. We haven't quite got the numbers there. I don't trust my own math skills to wing it, but I just knew, know that he's picked up 16 extra points. And we'll bring you a full roundup of how he can win the championship when you tune in for race two later. But it's all about one rider in race one. That is Chabi Zulututza takes his second victory of the season in spectacular fashion.
Moto2 European Championship action on the way then here at the Circuit Barcelona de Catalunya here in the Catalunya region of Spain. Its uh, circuit was built in 1991. The construction of the circuit coincided with the Olympic Games hosted in Barcelona in 1992. 4.7 kilometers long, that's just under three miles. 14 corners around this incredible circuit. Eight to the right and six to the left. It's a circuit that has played host to some historic moments in motorsport involving names such as Ayrton Senna, Nigel Mansell and Michael Schumacher in the car racing world. And of course, it was the scene of an incredible race that no MotoGP fan will ever forget between Valentino Rossi and Jorge Lorenzo back in 2009. But this weekend, it's hosting the Finetwork FIM Junior GP World Championships. And we've got Moto2 European Championship action on the way here in Barcelona. The big news going into the weekend or starting off the weekend in FP1 was the championship leader Senna Aegis who only managed two laps in FP1 before he high sided coming out of turn one and he won't be racing this weekend. He should be back for Aragon but he high sided out of turn one, had a broke the uh, I think it was the fourth and fifth metacarpal in his hand Chris and unfortunately won't be racing this weekend. So an opportunity for some of the riders to pick up some valuable points here this weekend with, of course, Tatai out as well. It'll be myself, Tristan Finocchiaro and Chris Jordan bringing you all of the action here in Moto2. But drama before racing has even kicked off. Here's the highlights then of what happened last time out. It was Senna Aegis that started the both races from pole position and just flew away off the line with Carlos Satai sat there in second position. Alberto Sura was making incredible moves on the number 67 Mr. Sheen and he bagged second place in race one. Aegis ticked the laps away and did an incredible job on the number 81. Garcia and Tapia were making moves as well, but it was Aegis who took victory in race one and added to his tally in the Moto2 European Championship. He started from pole position in race two as well and got a good start ahead of Xavi Cardaloos. Moves were being made further back between Roberto Garcia, Marco Tapia was in there as well, as well as Xavi Cardaloos, Roberto Sura, sorry, Alberto Sura was also defending that fourth place from Tapia, the number eight machine. But it was Aegis that pulled away out the front and did exactly what he needed to do, taking two wins from two in Portugal. A brilliant wheelie and a brilliant stoppie for the number 81. He took full points away from Portimao. Roberto Garcia picking up his first podium as well. Unfortunately, though, won't be here this weekend. Like I said, myself, Tristan Finocchio and Chris Jordan will be bringing you all of the action. No Aegis this weekend and no Carlos Tatai. Yeah, it's a huge disappointment for Senna Aegis. He was coming into this weekend and realistically it looked like he may have wrapped up the title. Unfortunately, he was 61 points ahead and unfortunately he's going to miss out. And having caught up with him yesterday, he was speaking about it, clearly gutted by the injury and explained the injury to us. It was a high side and getting his hand caught on the handlebars. A nasty one and we do wish him a speedy recovery. In terms of timing, well, we've got the summer break, so he will be back for the Aragon round and out to seal the title. And you mentioned Carlos Tatai as well. So for the big crash last time out in Portimao, and we are wishing him a speedy recovery. It was a big incident and it was so great to see during the week and posting it to Instagram with a thumbs up and a big smile across his face. But the absence of both riders means a little bit of history is on here today. So, Javi Cardalus is on pole and this is what he had to say. Uh, we were struggling a, a, a bit uh, during these past two seasons on the qualifying. It was so difficult to, to find uh, this half a second to be uh, on the pole, for example, as, as today, that, that's the gap I, I, I had from the, the second rider, so quite happy about that. First of all, it's important to, to, uh, to try to, to reduce the gap uh, on the championship. I have a good uh, opportunity, so uh, zero pressure, just try to, to enjoy riding last, like last race, and you will come for sure. We were working, we are working uh, so good on using tires, these, these days, so this gives me uh, extra motivation for, for these two races because also uh, will be very hot conditions uh, and for sure will be not, not, not easy, So, but we are, we are ready.
With Senna Aegis out of the action, then all eyes are on Xavi Cardelus, who is yet to win a race in the Moto2 European Championship. He's uh, been a part of the category since 2015 and he's going to be looking to pick up that first victory. He's half a second clear in qualifying on that pole position. He's finished in every race so far. He's going to be looking, like we say, to pick up that first victory. This is essentially a home round for the Andorran rider, the closest circuit to home for Xavi Cardelus here at the circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya. And he'll be eager to taste champagne on the top of that rostrum. Yeah, with the absence of age, he's 61 behind, 61 points behind the Australian in the standings, and he has looked the fastest rider here all weekend. It is a huge, huge opportunity for him. First to debut on the top step here in the Moto2 European Championship, but also reel in the runaway championship leader. Nico Antonelli then starts P2. He's got a podium to his name. That came in Estoril in the opening round. Another rider who will be chasing a first ever win. In fact, the little bit of history I had mentioned previously, we have no riders on the grid who have been on the top step in Moto2 yet. So a new name will debut on the very top step of the box. Will it be Cardelus? He starts as the favorite from pole, but Nico Antonelli will definitely have plenty of questions to pose. Antonelli, a name you'll be familiar with from the Grand Prix paddock over at World Championship. Unai Aradre on the front row here in Barcelona. He's only finished in the top, inside the top 10 once this year, and that was back at Jerez with that eighth, play, eighth place. He was a fast runner over in the World Supersport 300 category, also raced in the World Supersport 600 category as well over in the World Superbike Championship. Also ESBK champion in 2021. He's going to be looking to try and pick up that first podium. A brilliant result here in qualifying for him and a perfect opportunity with Aegis missing. Yeah, recently his qualifying form has been excellent, but it's yet to really turn into Sunday race pace. Now, a rider who had plenty of Sunday race pace last time out, Alberto Sura, starts from P4. He put in a very, very impressive opening race performance at the Algarve, starting a little bit further back on the grid, but he challenged Senna Aegis across the opening laps, managed to even get ahead of him, I think two or three laps in, but a long lap penalty came his way. And after coming through there, he slotted back into P5, but still managed to get second on the podium. Yep, so we're up riding over in the Moto3 World Championship last year, stepping up to the Moto2, but over in the European class, here's Roberto Garcia. He picked up his first podium in the European Moto2 Championship last time out in the Algarve in Portimao. He's going to be hoping to replicate that. He's in the middle of the second row. He's got that perfect line down into turn one for the 17-year-old. Got very close also to a podium in Aragon, but retired out of third place. But he's done it now, and he's going to hoping that that's opened the floodgates for more to come. Yeah, real breakthrough podium in race two at the Algarve. He's been very consistent this season too. He hadn't stood on the podium prior to that, but he was consistently among the top five, top six riders in this class. So we've seen it so often. Once that first result comes, then the series of them come after. The floodgates open. Alex Toledo, he's got podium experience in this class, but that came in 2022. As you can see there, consistently among the top 10, yet to really scale the heights of a podium challenge. I'd keep an eye on him though from second, uh, the second row. He looks like he could do something this weekend. Yeah, Toledo from Tarragona is local track, I guess, for him about 100 kilometers south of here. His only podium in this category was here in 2022, where he started from the front row. So very much a home hunting ground for the Catalan. And then just behind Toledo, we've got Pieter Bershikurski, the veteran of the category, yet to score any podiums this year, the 21-year-old. He's had a difficult season, a few DNFs this year. Yeah, he's on the comeback from the injury trail as well a little bit, so he's looking to build a good run of form. P6 at the Algarve last time out then, the perfect platform platform for him to build upon. He is a talent, we've seen him on the World Championship stage as well. Uh, just hasn't quite got the run of form going here in the European stage as of yet. Here's a little look at Harrison Voigt then, who lines up eighth place on the grids at one podium so far this year. That was back at Estoril race one, the very first 
race of the year and hasn't finished a race since. So I guess he can say he's finished on the podium in every race that he's finished, but he's going to want a bit better than that. He's uh, stepped up from the Moto3 category this year and really taking to the Moto2. Just uh, a little bit of bad luck for him this year. Yeah, I think you're clutching at straws a little bit there with being on the podium in every race he has finished. But it's true, he, though. <laughs> he, st he still has one P3 in the opening race in Estoril. And he was super impressive in that race. I was at us and attending and calling us with our friend and colleague Liam Hodgins. And he put in a super, super impressive performance. But he's just been a little bit unlucky since he's got mixed up in crashes and crashed out a lot as we look at Marco Tapia. Yet to get a podium in this class, but a double P4 last time out is plenty of encouragement coming into this one yeah the 16 year old from Mallorca will be looking for a good result here in Barcelona he was 15th in Moto2 back in 2022 his best result P4 last time out in both races at Portimao and that was actually his first top five so hoping to ride the crest of a wave here at the circuit de Barcelona Catalunya Yari Ruiz rounds out the top 10 then he's had one podium so far this year on his Boscoscura machine brilliant to see the Boscoscuras over here in the European Championship as well as over in the Moto2 World Championship I mean, it's good to see a variation of chassis here in Moto2 obviously they all run they all run that same engine but having that variation just makes it that ever ever so slight that it, uh, just gives it extra a little bit of spice Absolutely. So we're going to have uh, just a couple of minutes now to race start. Just over three minutes until we see lights out here. As you can see, the temperatures, well, as you could probably see, maybe not feel, but the temperature here is quite high. I think it's gone above 30 degrees as the day progresses and we approach midday. So those umbrellas are playing a crucial role in keeping our riders cool and composed. Xavi Carlos then, he'll be looking to start from pole and make it count. Right then, we await the start of the warm-up lap for these guys. This here is your grid. Cardalus then is half a second clear on pole position ahead of the Grand Prix. Ex-Grand Prix rider Nico Antonelli and Unai Arredre Alberto Soro rounds out row two ahead of Garcia and Toledo. Pieter Bershakerski heads row three ahead of Harrison Voigt and Marco Tapia. Then it's Yeray Ruiz, Matia Rato, and Monjardo on row four. Sam Wilford starts from 13 with Yeray Ryu and Matia Volpi. On the sixth row, Maxwell Toth is joined by Kyle Paz and Montero, while Rejek, Hobby, and Chananinta complete the grid here for your Moto2 race one. 21 riders set to do battle at the circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya for round five of the Moto2. European Championship. The pressure is on Cardalus. Can he pick up his first win after being involved in the series since 2015? Whatever happens here, we will have a first time winner in this championship. They get the warm up lap underway. And you've got to be thinking that it's, there's a lot of pressure now resting on the shoulders of Cardalus. But in a way, there isn't because he knows he's half a second clear at the front of the field and he knows that. He's got that extra little bit of time in his back pocket, but you can't discount a rider like Antonelli. Yeah, absolutely. And one lap race pace, uh, one lap pace is very different to a race pace. Cardalus has been mightily impressive this season. He's been probably, I'd say, the best of the rest as Senna Aegis has dominated. And Carlos Tatai picked up the other win, but he's been on the podium three times this season. So he has shown strong levels of consistency there are plenty of other threats out there. Nico Antonelli, as you already mentioned, he's got such pedigree. He's got a podium. He needs to pick up things a little bit. But Alberto Sura is my one to watch from the second row. He is a huge talent, and he really came to the fore last time out in Portimao. Yeah, well, keep an eye on Unai Aradre. He'll be hungry to taste the champagne on the podium, hungry to get inside the top five. His best result so far has been eighth place back at Hareth and he lines up on the front row as well. We get this warm-up lap underway then and Antonelli wants to lead away on this warm-up lap. You see varying tactics on these warm-up laps. Some riders like to go ahead and lead the way on the warm-up lap. Others like to hand back so they're not waiting on the grid too long because obviously the, the longer that you're waiting on the grid, the longer the, the nerves build. But every rider likes to do it differently. Aegis then, 61-point lead, and the worst possible scenario 
four ages. If Cardalus wins both races, as he'll leave here with an 11-point lead. So, not the end of the world for ages, but obviously not what he wanted because he could have wrapped it up here this weekend. But the attention now is on your front three. Cardalus, Antonelli and Oradre also keep an eye on Sora. Garcia and Toledo coming from the second row as well. The tensions are rising then as they head onto the grid. And we're about to have 16 laps of this incredible circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya. So then all eyes on the number 18. What can he do with this golden opportunity for a maiden Moto2 European Championship win, a chance to reel in an absent Senna Aegis and starting on pole position? The attention turns to the lights then. The red flag is raised at the front of the grid and we wait to get this race started. The safety cars deployed at the back of the grid and we are just moments away from European Moto2 action here in Barcelona. The attention turns to the lights for the first time this weekend for the Moto2 European Championship and it's a good start from the number 23 of Nico Antonelli. Will he get the whole shot down into turn one? Cardalus has been swallowed as Alberto Sura comes from the second row of the grid. And then Roberto Garcia is then who leads down into turn one. It's Garcia then from Sura. And the number 10 there has made it a brilliant start as well. And we've lost somebody I see a name flying down the Maybe it's just my timing screen and transponder issue, but a shocking start from Xavi Cardalou. So much wheelie coming off the line, but it's number 31, Roberto Garcia, who was on the podium, debuted on the podium. We said that he could have been a breakthrough win for him and the floodgates may open. Well, he has got the perfect start here. Alberto Sura, we tipped him as well to make a charge as Alex Toledo dives up the inside for fourth place. But Xavi Cardalou has recovered. He was swallowed up alive at the beginning of that uh, at the beginning of lights out, I should say, as I put my teeth back in. The number 10 then, Unai Oradre, has gotten off to a decent start as well, but he runs onto the green slightly there. And he <laughs> flicks the hand behind. Follow me, boys. No, no chance, fellas. I'm so it's Roberto Garcia line. who leads. I'm going to take a terrible line through there, but follow me anyway, says Toledo. Right then. Alberto Sura is that snatches the lead from Roberto Garcia. Garcia picked up his first podium last time out. Oh, and it's so oh. close through there. He makes contact and sits up the number 67 on that Busca Scura machine. Kind of loose then, right on the rear wheel as well. It looks as if this front three are breaking away ever so slightly now on this first lap. Yari Ruiz with a mountain, well, a big higgle hill to climb to get to this front three. Yeah, the front three have gapped Yari Ruiz there pretty quickly, just coming out the conclusion of this lap but brilliant stuff from Roberto Garcia then to recover the lead Alberto Sura Garcia and Cardalus are your front runners here and they once again get very very close this time coming into turn one but it's Alberto Sura then who gets the better of that exchange but he lost a little bit of drive flicking around the left there and Garcia closed up very quickly Cardalus in third we've been saying all eyes on the Andorran but it has not been the best of starts but he's looking to make his way back up the inside of Garcia there, swinging around the right-hander as they attack Ooh. the left, uh, another right-hander here. Well, this could go anyway. Cardalus is looking to make some positions up here, but Alberto Sura is in control. See Cardalus there trying to take the tight lines, trying to get the drive on that promo racing machine. He's just got to be careful he's not using too much time, too much of the tyre there, turning it tight and trying to get the power down to try and make a move on Roberto Garcia. There's still... 14 and a half laps to go of this Barcelona circuit, so there's no rush for the Andorran rider. And you feel like it's only a matter of time as he's all over the rear wheel of the number 31. Alberto Sura, oh, oh, he's out just of the edging seas. onto track limits there ever so slightly. Not sure if he quite ventured out onto there, but it was very, very close for the Italian. Oh, that's very oh. close. And Alex Toledo does not look happy. He has a stern look over. I'm not quite sure who it was. Was it Harrison Ford? But <laughs> he was not happy with him. He very much made contact, lunging up the inside of the left-hander and bunts Toledo down a position into P6, I think he is now. Maybe down into seventh, actually. 
Right, so it is then that leads, and they've just gapped Card loose on the exit of the final corner, and it looks as if Garcia is eyeing up a move into turn one. He's right in the slipstream of the Italian. He pulls to one side, not quite late enough on the brakes, though. Sura very, very strong down into turn one. They flick it right, they flick it left through that first complex, and then there's this long right-hander. This will chew up the rear tyre, and you can see Garcia now looking eager to make a move. Here's a replay of what happened down into turn one. Slow-mo here of the guys. Beautiful shot coming into turn one. Garcia has the advantage from lights out. But you can see Cardelus made a quick recovery after dropping to, what, sixth position coming into turn one, turn two. But back into the live, and it's Alberto Soda who still leads. Well, Radre is looking menacing in the background, trying to find his way past Yari Ruiz. And he's eager to see if he can latch onto the back of these guys at the front. And it's not, they're not too far away here. Just You just feel ever so slightly that Sura is just holding these guys up, but we'll just have to wait and see what they can do after they get past the Italian, if they can manage it. But it looks as if Garcia is definitely eager to give it a go. Well, Radre having a look at the inside of Yari Ruiz, he's making that stick. The number 10 slots up the inside of the number 72. Can Radre catch these front three? Harrison Voigt is stuck in there as well. He's looking menacing, looks as if he wants to try and make moves there on the number 29 machine. You can just hear how loud these Moto2 machines are through that stadium section. Deafening. Yeah, Unai Oradre started fourth. He's had a couple of decent qualifyings. We mentioned it prior. It looks like he's finally found the key to turn that, translate that into race pace. As it bunches up out front again, it's still Sura who leads, but it looks like Garcia has got the slipstream coming into turn one. Will he get the inside we'll line? Card loose. Card loose. It's a double slipstream and he's making his move. He's got ahead oh, of Garcia. Beautiful. Is he going to keep it pinned? Brilliant, brilliant stuff from the Andorra. An absolutely superb move. Two for one coming into turn one. Braked late and kept it pinned. Third to first in one fell swoop for the number 18. Is he going to put the hammer down? It is crunch time now for Card loose. Will these guys be able to go with him? Garcia's all over his rear wheel at the moment. Doesn't look like Cardelus is going anywhere at the moment, but still just over 12 and a half laps to go of this motorcycle race. Or Radre is making good inroads in on Alberto Sorry, We'll have to keep an eye on that on the timing screens, but it looks as if visually that he is closing in ever so slightly then. He's not going anywhere at the moment is Cardelus, but still plenty of time left to go in this race. Here's another look at that move, timed it to perfection. Garcia had a look at the inside of Sura, but at the same time, Cardelus two in one down into turn one, and it just shows, just showed the rookies of the category how to do it. Right then, Sura makes a move now up the inside of Garcia, as Sura back into P2, but Garcia gets the cut back and slots himself right back up the inside of the Boscoscuro rider. Fastest lap for Cardelus on that last lap. And a Radre. Radre. Wow, he has wasted no time after getting past Yerai Ruiz and he has got the hooks into this lead four. So he has very much found that race pace he so all craved. He put in some excellent sector times this lap already. And he was the quickest going through sector two and he's won the quickest through sector three and the quickest again through sector four. A 276, a 144, 276, the fastest lap of that of all the riders on track last time out. Yeah, and that lap time would have put him second on the grid in qualifying faster than Nico Antonelli and only two tenths shy of what Cardelus did in qualifying and he was half a second clear of the field. So an absolutely incredible lap from the number 10 and he's well in the mix here. We have a four bike battle for the lead in Moto2. This is incredible scenes here in Barcelona. Let's hope it stays like this for the rest of this motorcycle race. Cardelus then leads from Garcia, the number 31, number 67. That's Alberto Sura, the only rider in this top three on the Boscoscura machine. All other three riders on that Calix chassis, all running that same Triumph engine, though, of course. All standard engines here in Moto2 to try and keep the racing as close as possible. And it's working here out the front as Cardelus leads from Garcia, Sura and Oradre. Yeah, since Cardelus has been out front, he hasn't really had any questions posed as we can see Oradre just set the fastest lap of 144.276 really really good time 
Um, but yeah, nobody has really had a question for Carlos since he's gone out in front. Garcia's just tucked in behind him, but it's all about what Unai or Radre can do now. He is showing incredible pace. He got by Yerai Ruiz about a lap and a half ago. Look where Yerai Ruiz is, and look at and look at the difference in times and space between the front four and where Yerai Ruiz is. Brilliant, brilliant stuff from Oradre. He's going to get into the slipstream here. Maybe he's just a little far back to make a move, but definitely want to keep an eye on the number 10. All right then, Sura, Oradre now up in to second place, and Oradre is on the move on that number 10 machine. He's looking medicine. Cardalus is just escaping here. They're going to have to be careful. It wasn't an incredibly fast lap on that last lap for Cardalus, 45 flat, so seven tenths shy of what Oradre put down earlier on. It's just these guys scrapping has allowed him to just pull away ever so slightly. So we'll have to keep an eye on that one, just see if they can reel him back in by the end of this lap. If anyone can do it, it looks as if Oradre has the pace to be able to do it. All right, Joe, then putting the hammer down, Sura all over his rear wheel. I take back what I said earlier about Sura holding them back. He definitely wasn't. He's clinging on to these guys and he's matching their pace perfectly. Yeah, he's putting in a good ride here. It's Roberto Garcia who lost out big time from that Unai Oradre move as he moves off the podium positions. I thought Oradre was going to be too far back off the back of Garcia to make a move. But he gets a two for one coming into turn one. What do I know, Tristan? <laughs> well, when we assume we get proved wrong here in Moto2 as Garcia slots himself up the inside of Roberto Sura. Can he get the cutback? No, he can't. Garcia was wise to that move. I tell you what, mate, we're putting the commentator's curse on Sura there, saying he was doing well. We've done it a couple of times, so maybe we'll start making predictions over the next couple of laps for the sake of alone. the riders. <laughs> but it is still Carlos out front, but Oradre is approaching fast. Incredible performance from Oradre then. His current best result is eighth place, so no matter where he finishes, it'll be an incredible result for him. But he's not settling for anything less than the win here. He has got himself right onto the back of Carter Luce and he's not letting the number, 80, what, number 18 sorry, have it his all way. Here's a little look at Sam Wilford, currently sat in sixth place in this race. The Brit, he's been involved in the championship since 2019. Before then, he was racing Moto2 in the British Superbike Championship that runs the Moto2 category that was running with Supersport, also ran in Supersport, racing the RRV 450s in the past in Thundersport and the Aprilia Super Teens as well. So he's been around a while as Sam Wilford and he knows these European tracks well at all, but are we going to have a change for the lead here? Or Redre having a little look, but no rush just yet. Ten laps remaining. Yeah, just showing him a little wheel card. Aradre showing a little wheel to Carlos just to let him know I'm here, I'm here, I'm putting the pressure on you. Any mistake, I will be ready to pounce. And there are three riders following Carlos. Aradre looks best placed at the moment to take to challenge him for the lead, while Garcia and Sura are battling for that final podium place. Garcia showing some good pace here. Yerai Ruiz, he's in a world of his own in fourth place. With Rato and Wilford battling just for sixth and seventh. Wilford, if he can get ahead of Rato and come home six, that would be a season best result for him and a sign of clear progress for the British rider. Nico Antonelli, we haven't mentioned him all race. He started P2, he's down in P9. I'm not quite sure what happened to the Italian, but he's behind Tapia and just ahead of Toledo. Harrison Voigt as well has dropped back, as has Peter Bershikersky. So less than ideal races for a number of who we thought would be contenders from the first, second row. Yeah, a bit of a, a damp squib for Nico Antonelli, starting from the front row, but have a look at this action out the front. Garcia chucks it up the inside of Aradre. Ooh, Not a lot close. of room through there, but he doesn't care. He shoves it up the inside anyway, and he's up into second place. Getting very close there. Brilliant move from Garcia. We were just saying Aradre looked the best place. Again, we put the commentator's curse on. What do we know, Tristan? What do we know? Clearly nothing. We know Garcia is in second place and Unai Aradre is on for a first ever podium. But there's a lot of legs left in this one. Still, nine laps to go. Right, hammer down time for Cardalus. He's got a slight bit of breathing space with these guys battling it out at the back. But we've seen time and time again, they're able to reel it back in despite Cardalus putting the hammer down at the front. 
Yeah, we just see on our timing screens that Chananinta is in pit lane. It looks like his day is over, but that won't affect what's going on out front here. Carlos still holding on as the leg is flying off from Unai Aradre there. He does Garcia. that every corner. I've, I've noticed it's on that, he, that outside leg. He just lifts the foot, his foot. Oh, yeah, as he makes a move down into turn 10. Kept and Garcia leg. gets it yeah, back. But Garcia on the cutback. Brilliant stuff from Garcia. Good effort from Aradre. And let's just keep an eye on that leg. You can see it again. He, he loves to lift the leg coming around some of these corners. It became quite popular not so long ago, that sort of style of what he's doing is he's using the outside leg to push on the tank and push the bike into the corner. Of course, riding is all in the legs, so he's using the outside leg, like I said, to push the tank, push the bike into the corner. He's just, whilst doing that, his, his outside leg is just lifting off the foot peg. We saw it a lot from Luke Stapleford over in the British Superbike paddock as well, a style that he adapted quite a lot. Um, but these guys now at the front, just as you try and explain something, they make a move and, and, and just ruin your little run of form. I think you could have gone down a rabbit hole there, Tristan, yeah. explaining that, so maybe it was for the best. No, <laughs> but it's super interesting stuff to know this. We've got a yellow flag at turn one and two. I'm not sure who has gone down there. But it is Cardaloos out front. Sura was making a move. It's still the one, two, three, four as it was, but Sura was having a look upside. And just as I say that, Oradre forces himself up the inside of Roberto Garcia. He and that is Garcia, cost Garcia two places as Sura sees his opportunity and strikes. But wow, he's given up the position there. And we just mentioned Nico Antonelli started second on the grid. Well, his day has just gotten a lot worse. He will not be seeing the checkered flag after dropping like a stone through the pack. He is now Ooh, crashed Radre. out of contention. Radre a bit wide through there. Yeah, unfortunately, that's a sight we've seen too many times. That graphic popping up to say Nico Atanelli has crashed out of a motorcycle race. It's just been an absolute curse for Antonelli, the gravel trap. As Sura has a look at the inside of Garcia, Sura makes that move stick on the Boscoscura with the yellow flashes. Oradre, though, so impressed by him this race. He's not starstruck at all. He's not phased by the fact that he's fighting for victory. His best result, like we said before, has been eighth place. He's getting well stuck in the mix. Yeah, he's having a super run here. Let's see if he can maintain it. How is his race stamina? Because he had such a super start. Remember, he was in fifth place and about 30, 40 meters behind these guys, battling with Yerai Ruiz for fifth place. Uh, Ruiz, speaking of, has dropped to sixth at the expense of Rato, but he gapped the gap in front of the top three to that fifth, uh, fourth and fifth place. He met that up in no time, in less than a lap. So he's put in a serious, serious effort here over the opening half, just over the opening half of this race. But with seven to go, it'll be interesting to see if he can maintain that pace. He's putting in super effort by far and away his best performance to date in the Moto2 European Championship. Here we look at the number 13 of Rato. He's already gotten by Yerai Ruiz, who has dropped to sixth with fifth place Mattia Rato. Yeah, that battle for fifth hotting up nicely is then. Battles all the way through the field here in Moto2. Yari Ruiz trying to find his way past the number 13 of Mattia Rato. Yari Ruiz, a rider just 19 years old, at a podium back at Jerez. These guys at the front now. Oradre all over the rear of Cardalus. Cardalus rear just stepping out there on the change of direction. And it just feels like Oradre wants to make a move here. He's getting, like I say, all over the rear wheel of Cardaloos. He's having a little look at turn 10, just maybe a cheeky look for later, a lot, later on in the race. Cardaloos a little bit wider than Oradre through there, but no room through as they flick left through the next sector, the next uh, corner, sorry. Yeah, a little peek up the inside of Cardaloos there. Looked like he may have just left the door open. But maybe Cardaloos a sign of things to come. Shut. Yeah, again, we've seen him a couple times. Just offer a wheel to Cardaloos. Carlos though is doing well. Oradre is swarming all over him. He's not letting him get away at all. A little bit of a gap has opened now from the battle for first to the battle for third with Garcia just behind Alberto Sura. Let's see, here we go. Now Oradre has gotten in front here coming down the straight into turn one, but Carlos is later on the brakes. Brilliant stuff from the Andorran and he remains in control coming through turns one and two and about to swing it right to turn three. We've seen how strong Cardaloos is down into turn one. He made that brilliant move to take the lead, overtaking both Garcia and Sura earlier on, and has pretty much been untouched since. Now, these top two looks as if they're breaking away ever so slightly from Sura and Garcia. 
Lap time's not too dissimilar last time around, but this lap here looks as if they are breaking away from Sura Sura, perhaps struggling a little bit on the Boscoscura machine. So we hope from a neutral perspective that these two can latch back onto the back of this battle for victory. But either way, we've got a battle on our hands here out the front as Cardaloose is defending relentlessly from Unai Oradre. Oradre rookie in the category this year. <coughs> European Superbike champion back in 2021 in the open category. So knows his way around a 600cc machine, does the number 10. Right, Garcia now Garcia. makes a move on Sura. Oh, no, he doesn't. Sura closes to the door, runs a little bit wide, oh, though, and Garcia has that times. inside line. Sura, though, with the inside line as they flick it right. Can Garcia get the cut back through here? He's eager to get his way through. He can see the front two breaking away, and he wants to have a go at trying catching these two out the front now. Yeah, this is a cracking battle for third position. It looks like one has the advantage. Sura had the advantage coming through. Garcia saw the gap, but Sura closed the door shut, cut his nose off, and Garcia then attempted another inside line. And now he's going to go on the outside coming into turn one. Will he make this one stick just behind the front two? Sura looks to have the advantage here. Can Oh, well, actually, excuse me, it's Round Garcia who has the advantage. Round the outside, brilliant, brilliant stuff. That was a cracking last sector from both these riders. Brilliant battle for third, and Garcia, who now holds the advantage. Meanwhile, out front, Carlos is still our race leader. Oh, this battle's not done yet, is it, Tristan? Doesn't look like it, as Sora has a little look to the inside, can't make it stick this time around, though. A little look at the lap times on that last lap. The front two both with 45 ones. That's how they've broken away from Sora. Sora with a 45 nine, so perhaps just struggling a little bit for pace. But maybe now, with Garcia ahead of him, he can just follow his lines, hit his markers, and use him to perhaps latch back onto the front two if Garcia has that amount of pace in the tank on that number 31 Fantic machine. You can see Oradre looking menacing on the back of Cardaloos. Just wonder if he's had that pit ball, if he knows it's just him and Cardaloos now, if he knows he's got that time to just, like we say, bide his time and find his way past. Cardaloos definitely knows he's there, going a little bit defensive down into turn 10. Can hear him on the overrun. Oradre taking those wide swooping lines, trying to have a look. Lost a little bit of ground through there, but easy to bring that back down through the right-hander. You can see that left leg just floating off the side of the foot peg as he runs it through this fax sector, this final sector, so, so quick on a Moto2 machine. Garcia's now dropped Sura. We'll have a look at the lap times as they cross the line and just see if he can make inroads on these front two. Little bit of wheelie for Carter Luz coming through that final corner. That's going to cost him just a few, a little bit of drive. So maybe Unai Oradre can see his opportunity here. He's taken the inside line, but Carter Luz is an absolute demon on the brakes coming into turn one. You're not going to outbreak him there. Garcia is on the move then. 45 sevens for the front two on that last lap. 45 four for Garcia. So he is making inroads on these front two. And if these two start battling it out, Garcia will be well in the mix and we will have a three bike battle for the win. Will he be able to catch these guys? And will Oradre be able to find his way through on Cardaloos? Cardaloos putting an incredibly defensive, you can see how defensive he goes. He makes sure there's no way through. It's a wide circuit here, the circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya, but Cardaloos making himself as wide as possible and making the circuit, the line that Oradre has to take as tight as possible, making sure there is no way through. Onto the green there, though. Ooh, that's one to keep an eye on, then, from the number 18. Will we see a move down into turn 10? We've seen Oradre have a little look every time we go down the back straight, then, one more time. No, nope, not bothered about having a look this time round. Perhaps just keeping something in the tank for the last lap. Yeah, you'd imagine four just over, uh, just over three laps to go, four, just under four laps remaining. Oradre hasn't let Cardaloos out of his sights, but you just know a move is coming as we see a yellow flag pop up on our timing screens. We'll bring you an update of who that is momentarily. But it is all about this battle at the front. Cardaloos, very defensive, but brilliantly defensive. Oradre biding his times out to Marco Tapia, who's gone down. That's a, that's a shame. He was running quite well up in seventh. That hand, Sam Wilford, a good position, and he can get an equal best result for the campaign today. Oradre having a look again, but again, just as we saw last time round, Cardaloos strong on the brakes. There's Tapia, unfortunate end to his race for the number eight rider. 
the 16-year-old from Mallorca. Picked up his best results last time out, but not to be this weekend. All right, Dre then, still looking menacing. Whatever happens here, it's an incredible ride for, for Radre. His best result being 10th so far. Yeah, absolutely super stuff. We said it beforehand as well. He always had that qualifying pace, always did some decent results, getting second row, third row. He's on the front row as well, but he's really turned it round now and translated that into Sunday pace. He is all over Carlos here. Carlos is going to have a lot of problems over the next couple laps. It's only a matter of time for Oradre lines up that move. Carlos, we've said is already very defensive, but very good defensively. Brilliant on the brakes coming into turn one. But you just wonder where is Oradre going to try and make his move? Yellow flags through here, so no passing for Oradre this time around. That'll be for the crash for Marco Tapia. And number 31, Roberto Garcia, has just dropped off the boil a little bit now. He put in that strong lap to try and catch those guys, but now he's just dropping off the pace and has fallen back into the clutches of Sura. So we've got a battle for the lead and a battle for third place. What more could you want for European Moto2 action? Carda Luz, though, apt putting the defensive ride of his life here in Barcelona. Desperate for that first victory, but so is Unai Oradre. Well, Radre right in his wheel tracks, right in his slipstream, down into turn one, goes towards the outside. Cardaloos really, really defensive, but can Radre make it round the outside? Too much of an ask. Yeah, it's a lot to... Too much of an ask is the perfect way to say, because Cardaloos is just so good coming into turn one. Maybe a turn four, turn five, he's going to try a little move, just to test her with only a couple runs left, or less than two laps to go. So will Oradre have a little look up the inside here? He's probably just a little bit too far back, so he might try to get the run to the line coming through into five. Right, then can Oradre muster up something special here to take not only his first podium, not only his first top five, but his first victory in Moto2. Like we say, Cardaloos ever running that defensive line, making himself as wide as possible. Oradre having a little look here. Now, the yellow flag should be cleared down into turn 10. Will we see a move as we near the final lap of this race here in Catalonia? He's not having a look this time around. He's happy to settle for second at this point in time. Suarez made a move up into third place in the background there, and he looks as if he's gapping Garcia in the background, so that, that, that battle could be decided, but this battle at the front is far from being decided here as we go through the final sector for the penultimate time. It's crunch time here in Moto2. It's last lap time for these front two. So he, Oradre is oh, on the green. the green there, but that won't come into effect. It's still not the last lap as you come around the final corner. He will need to be careful of that next time around. Oradre, will he get into the slipstream here of Cardaloos coming into turn one? Cardaloos has been a demon on the brakes. Can he make a move at turn one? He has a little look up the inside for sure, oh, but Cardaloos once again brilliant on the brakes. Next up, a passing opportunity is probably coming up at turn number four for Oradre. Carlos in control as we swing it left and back right. Turn three, long looping right-hander. If he makes an overtake here, I'd be mightily impressed, but that's a very difficult thing to do. Turn four, will you make it stick in here, Tristan? Not quite good enough into turn four. There's another passing opportunity into turn five. He's running a wide line. He's going to try and get the cutback to get the drive, to get himself underneath. Cardaloos into turn five, and is he going to make it stick? He's very, very tight. Is he going to run it wide? He, he does it, he makes it, oh no he does, he does. Carlos has got the cutback and they're side by side coming through here. This is what we wanted to see, they're going to flick it through six, coming up to seven, there's going to be another opportunity, but Carlos holds the advantage. Who wants it more, Cardaloos or Oradre? They definitely both want it, but who wants it more? We're going to find out, the head down the back straight for the final time. This is possibly the final overtaking opportunity, Cardaloos so, so tight through there, he's not letting any room for Oradre to get through, but Oradre saw that and he's trying to muster up something special on the flick to the right-hander. He can't make it stick, though. Is he going to do a Valentino Rossi into the final corner? Are we going to see something special here? Or has Cardaloos got it in the tank 
through the penultimate corner for the final time. It's last corner time. Is Oradri going to muster up something? He's taking a raw wide line. Is he going to be able to get the drag to the line? It's a short drag to the line in Catalonia. But no, it's going to be Cardaluce that takes his first victory in the Moto2 European Championship. A brilliant podium for Unai Oradri. Alberto Sura takes third place. Roberto Garcia in fourth. Rato rounds out the top five. And what a battle we had on that final lap. Absolutely super, super stuff. And what a defensive line from Xavi Cardaluz coming around turn 10. We saw Radre try to get the cut back and to drive out. <laughs> I don't know how he did a late break, kept it pinned as well at all points and absolutely no chance Radre could get through. And that was the winning of the race. What a race, brilliant, brilliant performance from Cardaluz. Thoroughly deserved win. But 25 points, as we can see here, he now moves to within 36 points of the absent Senna Aegis. It is big in terms of the championship. Can he pick up another 25 points in race two? And what a historic moment for the Andorran rider, taking his first victory here in the Moto2 European Championship. Incredible, incredible victory and an incredible wheelie there for the number 18. He takes victory ahead of Oradre. Alberto Sori did get the better of Garcia on those final laps to take P3 ahead of Roberto Garcia. Yari Ruiz rounding out the top five with Rato winning that battle. Sorry, Ruiz winning the battle for fifth place, rounding out the top five ahead of Rato. Number seventh went to Monjado ahead of Sam Wilford and Piotr Bershakursky. Alex Toledo rounded out the top 10 ahead of Ryu, Volpi, Voigt, Paz and Toth who rounded out your top 15. Oradre though, Hadn't finished inside the top five. His best finish was actually eighth place going into this race, but now he has a podium and was so, so close to taking victory here in the Moto2 Championship. Sam Wilford goes to congratulate the number 10. A brilliant ride for Aradre. Previously ridden over in Supersport 300, picking up one win in Port, four podiums from 2019 to 2021. Alberto Sura jumped up to a 600cc machine after riding over on the Grand Prix stage of the World Championship stage last year in Moto3. Failed to score a point last year, but now really coming to his own on that 600cc machine. Kind of loose, though. Rode the perfect defensive race, made sure there was no way through for Unai Oradres. Congratulated there by his teammate, the number 87, Gerard Ryu. And a historic moment for the Andorran. A moment he will never forget. And you can see the delight as he comes in. Stoppy there for the number eight, the number 18. Almost can't believe it. And what a victory it was. Did it in fine fashion. Like we say, a perfect offensive race from the Andorran rider and he's congratulated by his promo racing team. Finished every race so far has Cardaluce and now he's got that victory. He's been in Moto2 for donkey's years since 2015, veteran of the category. It's his fourth podium of the year and now his first victory like we've said. He's had eight podiums across the five seasons. And there he is, Oradre. What a moment it's been for him. Possibly a breakthrough result for the number 10. He started from a little bit further back on the grid. Well, he started from third, made his way straight up into victory contention. Lost a little bit of ground towards the beginning, but put in a very, very good race at the end and takes the fastest lap of the race by some margin. 44.2, Alberto Sura then. Picked up his first podium last time out in Portimao and now he's got another one here in Barcelona. Can he go one better later on in race two? We all yet to find out. Was very strong in the opening stages of the race but didn't quite have it in the tank towards the end. And here is again that race winning overtake. You can see the suspension doing its work there down into turn one down two riders in one corner. Incredible move there. And there was Oradre trying to make that move for victory, but Cardalus cut it tight, did exactly what he needed to do, put his bike right in the way of the number 10. 
It was a drag to the right line, but Cardaluz took it from Oradre and Alberto Sura. An absolute barnstormer then here in Barcelona for the Moto2 European Championship. Perfect action to kick off the 600cc racing of the day. He's delighted with that one. And we will be hear hearing from the Andorran. Just now he's down there with Chris Jordan. Javi, a first ever Moto2 win, 25 points for the championship, a superb performance here in Barcelona. Talk us through your race and how you're feeling. Yeah, I'm very happy to, to achieve this, this first victory for sure. Uh, lucky for us, Sanerno riding. It's a shame because I would like to, to win a race fighting with him, but it is what it is. Uh, so thanks to the team, the family sponsors, they bring me a good bike for this race. Uh, let's see to, to make another good race and for sure I will try to enjoy because like this I will make a, a good result again and try to reduce the gap with Senna. Okay, now in Catalan, please. Sí. Evidentment que content per aquesta plena victòria. Uh, ha sigut un, un camí llarg. Està clar que m'hagués agradat guanyar ajudant amb el Sena, uh, però bueno, les coses com, com són, s'ha lesionat, hagués pogut tocar amb un altre. Uh, he disfrutat molt sobre la moto aquesta cursa. L'equip m'ha donat una bona moto gràcies a ells, als fons de la família. Així que res, a, a intentar ajudar i disfrutar de la següent i a veure si reduïm el gap amb el Sena al campionat. Enhorabuena. And here's how he did it then. It's not the way he wanted to get it. He wanted to beat Senna, but he'll take it as it comes. It was the first victory of his campaign of, uh, since he started in the Moto2 Championship, but it was Garcia who took the whole shot down into turn one, ahead of Alberto Sura, who got a brilliant, brilliant start from the second row. Cardaluz didn't waste any time in getting back onto the front two, though, as he put the hammer down on that promo racing machine. It was gloves off between Garcia and Sura at the front. Garcia making moves on Sura, but then this brilliant move from Cardaluz, two in one into the first corner, and he made it stick. And from then on, he was untouchable at the front of the race. We then had a four bike battle for the victory, and it was Cardaluz from Garcia, Sura, and Oradre put himself well into the mix, setting the fastest lap of the race, catching the leading group, and latching himself right onto the back of Cardaluz. Garcia wasn't letting Oradre have it easy though as he shoved it up the inside of the Spaniard. Oradre bit straight back though, sitting up his compatriot and that allowed Sura to get through as well. And then we had Antonelli unfortunately crashing out. He had a bad start from the front row and then unfortunately crashed out of the race, but then back out the front. Tapir was another rider who crashed out and that lost time for the AGR rider. Then it was this move on the final lap. Cardaluz and Oradre for the victory. Sura and Garcia for third. Cardaluz, perfect offensive run, got the cutback, put his bike exactly where it needed to be and made sure there was no hope for victory for Unai Oradre. Still a brilliant, brilliant result for the number 10 and a brilliant, brilliant first victory for Cardaluz. He held it until the chequered flag put a brilliant defensive run down into turn 10 and held him off to the chequered flag. It was delight for the promo racing squad as he took victory. His first victory in Moto2 and a first podium for Oradre. Sura picks up his second podium in the category as well. And a brilliant ride from the Andorran rider. Right, then we get ready for the riders to head out on to the podium. That Andorran flag slapped bang in the middle of the rostrum for the first time. Cardaluz then announced as the winner. And Alberto Sura sat there waiting, the Italian waiting to go out onto the podium as he'll receive his dues on the Bosch Gascura machine. The Italian rider on the Italian bike congratulates the team representative for Promo Racing 
Well, Radre delighted with his first podium. An incredible, incredible run from the front row, and he'll be looking to do that again in race two. But what a moment in the career for Xavi Cardalus. His first victory, didn't get it the way he wanted to. He wanted to beat Senna, which is fair enough. He's a racer, that, well, they want, that's what they want to do, but he'll take it as it comes, and he's made considerable inroads in the championship. Whatever happens, even if Cardalus takes victory in race two, Senna will still have an 11-point lead at the top of the standings. Representative for Premier Racing takes his trophy as Surat takes the third-place trophy here in Barcelona. The managing director of the circuit congratulates the riders as Rodri delighted with the first podium and with second place. 20 points towards his championship campaign. But a moment that Cardalus will never forget. He is a Moto2 European Championship winner. He stands on the top step for the first time at what is essentially his home circuit, the closest circuit to home for the number 18. And we will hear the Andorran national anthem. Well, epic rendition of the Andorran national anthem sings through the circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia for Xavi Cardalus. They spray the champagne, he goes straight to the team representative. And then now to the teams and to the guys watching on at the bottom of the podium. Well, an absolutely barnstorming race then we had in the Moto2 European Championship. We wish Senna Aegis all the best with his recovery after his big high side yesterday. Sitting out of these two races, we'll be back for Aragon later on in October. A big gap, big summer break for these guys. But if Cardalus can go into it, having scored 50 points, he'll be going into it with a big smile on his face. Here is the confirmation of the standings ends. Cardalus it was that took the win ahead of Radre and Surat rounding out the podium. Roberto Garcia took fourth place after taking his first podium last time out. Yari Urith, Matea and Matea Ratto were in involved in a battle for fifth. Urith getting the better of Ratto in the closing stages of the race. Francesco Mongiardo finished in seventh place ahead of Sam Wilford with Piotr Berchikersky in ninth. Alex Toledo rounded out the top ten ahead of Gerard Rio. Matteo Volpi, Harrison Voigt and Kyle Paz. Maxwell Toth rounded out the top 15 at the American rider ahead of Philip Rehecek and Charles of Aubrey down in 17th spot, the French rider on the Calex machine. Unfortunately, we lost Tapia Antonelli, Montero and Chanon Inter from the race. They'll be looking to set that straight in race two later on. A brilliant race then we had, and here is how it has affected the championship. The, the gap is now down from 61 points to 36 for Senna Aegis with Xavi Cardalus taking victory. 
Mattia Ratto now up in to third place, consolidates that. 56 points adrift of Aegis ahead of Sura and Ruiz. Garcia is there down there in sixth place ahead of Carlos Tato, who's also out with injury as well. Marco Tapia rounds out the top 10 in the championship ahead of Nico Antonelli, who's had a run of bad luck so far this season. Oradre jumps up to 12th place ahead of Volpi, Rodriguez, Monjado, Rui and Harrison Foyt rounding out the top 17. Bershikersky sits still in 18th place in the championship ahead of Kyle Paz. 21st place went to Toth ahead of Channel Inter, down in 22nd. Delight then for the Andorran rider as he takes his first victory. You could see the emotion, the moment of realisation that he is now a Moto2 European Championship winner. A milestone he's been chasing for quite some time now. Said in his interview, he didn't want it to happen this way, but he'll take it as it comes. Watching from in the world, and welcome to Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia, and welcome to round five of the 2023 Fee Network Junior GP Championship, coming to you live about 30 minutes outside the city, 4.7 kilometers in length, 14 turns in total. This circuit is one of the classic tracks on the annual motorsports calendar. A mixture of hard braking, fast corners, the longest straight on the Junior GP calendar, make for the perfect racing destination. Today, it is the stars of the future who take to the Halo Tarmac, which is just outside the wonderful city of Barcelona. The sun is shining and it is a hot one out there. I am Chris Jordan and today I have the pleasure of being joined by Tristan Fanacchiaro as we get set for another round of European Talent Cup racing and it is under the Spanish sun as we take a little tour through the paddock. Tristan, it is all set to be a cracker and the drama has already started in the ETC. Only one point separates, I should say, the top two in the championship, but there is a lot of grid positions between them here today. We'll come to that in just a moment. Incredibly excited for this one, Chris. If uh, Portimao has anything to go by and all the pass rounds are anything to go by, there'll be plenty of action here. Yeah, it has delivered in every round so far. And we expect it to deliver once again as we take in some of the sights around. So, last time out at the Portimao roller coaster, it was just the one race. Max Kiele started on pole and took the whole shot into turn one ahead of Jesus Rios early on. But in typical ETC fashion, it was constant shopping and changing with Kiele's Rios, Pavaltina, Salmela, Guido Pini, and Dodo Baggio among the front runners. Kiles and Alcina getting a bit up close and personal, but the number 28 was putting in an excellent performance to control it out front. Salmela had a go then, but Kiles had a response. And then it was Casey O'Gorman who tried to lead for a little while, but Kiles once again led out front. But unfortunately for the Aspire Junior team rider, despite leading out front, he crashed on the last lap, which handed the opportunity to Dodo Baggio to end a run of straight, four straight fourth places. Casey O'Gorman came second, and he came from P30 on the grid with Guido Pini completing the podium. So that's how it all played out just a couple of weeks ago in the south of Portugal. And I swear, if we have anything like the drama we had on display that day, then you will be on the edge of your seat throughout this race 31 degrees in the air 38 degrees on track it is a hot one six miles per hour the wind very little crosswinds which should make for some excellent excellent racing here around what it really is one of the best circuits on the motorsports calendar so many twists turns great overtaking opportunities 
I'm very much looking forward to that this one as we look at the pack and the multi multitude of international riders we have. Yep, always throws up something special, does the European Talent Cup. These are the stars of the future. This is the first stepping stone in their road to Moto GP as they start. And the, the first stepping stone within this paddock. And we look at Brian Uriarty here. He will start from P1. But he did not qualify with the fastest time of the qualifying session. As you can see there, three wins so far this season. He also missed out in the Algarve. We'll talk more a little bit on Uriarty just in a bit. But just a quick review of what happened in qualifying. Uriarty posted, topped his group, in ETC group, in qualifying. But he wasn't as fast as Max Kiles, who claimed pole position, but incurred the wrath of the stewards. And the championship leader, Max Kiles, will launch from the back of the grid. The number 28 will have a big, big task on his hands because he's only one point ahead Brian Uriarty and Uriarty has had a bit of a mass master plan in recent weeks he's had an injury picked up an injury in a mini GP biking training accident had to pull out of the Algarve round where there was only one race saying he'd rather come back and be fit for this one in that race Kiles crashed on the last lap which was absolute despair for him but he's come back still one point behind and now he starts on pole while his main title rival starts at the back of the grid Young Finnish rider here, Rico Salmela. He's got podium quality, as you can see. 2P2 so far. Very unlucky to miss out on the podium as well in the Algarve. Just taken on the line by Guido Pini, despite having led going through the final corner. So, joining these guys on the front row, the number one. He wears the number one because he is the reigning champion. That's Guido Pini. He's currently fourth in the championship with 90 points. He's got four podiums to his name so far in 2023. They came in Valencia, Jerez, both were P2s, and Jerez and the Algarve were P3 finishes. Front row packed with quality. Quality all through the field here in the European Talent Cup as the, the fans have camped out here to watch this incredible action, the stars of the future. Jesus Rios then, the number 54, starts for no wins, no podiums, no poles as of yet. He's got 29 points, sixth in the, his best grid position, I should say, prior to this is P4. He's coming at Portimao last time out. Sixth, fifth and eighth are his best results. A lot of DNFs and non-point scoring positions so far. But he has taken some steps this year. It's been a year of development for Rios, and he was right at the front in those races last time out. Now, another rider we're going to see line up beside Rios momentarily. He's flying the Irish tricolour. So naturally, I'll be egging him on. We're, not, we're meant to be impartial, but it's hard not to be. When there's so little Irish riders, you have to pick a favourite when he has a tricolour. 15 years of age, that's Casey O'Gorman. What a ride he had in the Algarve. He started 30th on the grid and came home second. Even led for a little bit, as we saw in the highlights in the review. Super, super performance while he debuted with his new team, Super Hugo Racing 44. Incredible natural talent from Casey O'Gorman. Put, like you say, put in an incredible ride back in Portimao and has always, all the way through his career, been at the front, been at the sharp end of everything he's raced in and has been incredibly impressive. I mean, he caught the attention of Shaky Byrne, who helped him out a couple of years back and has just... Every, like I say, every, every place he's been, he's impressed. Yeah, a big, big talent. We managed to actually catch up with him yesterday as well. And he's starting fifth on the grid today. We caught up with him just before qualifying and he didn't seem to have a lot of hope about qualifying. He's like, oh, I never quite do so well in qualifying. Well, he's answered himself, he's second row. So it's it'll okay. be interesting to see what he can do here. But he also pinpointed uh, Rico Salmela as the, probably the rider to watch along with Max Quiles, but r as having the best pace all weekend as we look at Pau Alcina here, who will complete the second row. But So Rico Salmela and Max Quiles, Casey said, are the good riders, and a couple of riders have also said they are the ones with the best pace, but Casey O'Gorman, once he gets racing, he is a demon on that bike. Yeah, he's uh, once, the, once the red lights go out, he goes into absolute, like you say, demon mode, Carter Thompson then lines up seventh place on the grid, the number fifth on the number 50 machine. 
He's had a bit of an unlucky run this uh, this season, only picking up points in one race back at Estoril. Yeah, it's been another year of development for Thompson, just the two points registered back in SRL, as you said. P7 is best qualifying to date. He ended up having to actually retire from that race, so hopes for better fortunes today as he launches from seventh. Then beside him, Guillaume Plonk. He had a decent start last time out, but it was only because it was a jump start he ended up having to go through the long lap penalty. But he looks a decent talent. Came eighth last time, ninth last time uh, in Jerez, tenth in race one in Jerez. What are the odds he comes seventh? Continues that sequence of form. Guillaume Blanc looking to pick up personal best here if he can in a decent position on the grid. Best result so far was P9 back at Jerez. That's in 2023. His best result ever in the European Talent Cup came last year, was P6 and was actually at this very circuit in Catalonia. So he'll be looking to try and repeat that again this year or even go better. Rush Moodley then lines up ninth place on the grid, South African. Yeah, very talented rider. We've seen him make some big steps throughout 2023. Two fifth place finishes in Estoril and Algarve. Quite enjoys a Portuguese, Portuguese race, as you can see. Hasn't had the best of time at the Spanish circuits. A couple non-point scoring in DNFs in Jerez and Valencia. So he'll be hoping for some better fortunes. He's promoted onto the third row due to penalties. So let's see what he can do. He'll be one to watch from deeper on the grid. As we have a little look at fans probably putting some analysis on what's happening out on track, giving their predictions. Jesus Torres then, 10th on the grid. Eighth, oh, I lost my voice there. <laughs> Eighth in the championship with 40 points. A couple top 10 finishes, seventh in Estoril, by far and away his best. He'll be looking to build on that and add to his points tally here in Catalonia. Yep, Torres eyeing up a personal best if he can. Like I say, currently best is eighth. He's in a decent place to be able to do it. And there's going to be, as ever, a freight train in this race. Expect there to be passing at every single corner. Like we said, this is one of the very first stepping stones in the riders' career. So many fast riders have come through here, have come through this category and gone on to do incredible things. Last year's champion also stepping up to the plate this year with that number one on the bike. And he's still in the mix as well, Guido Pini, and will be lining up towards the front of the pack. So keep an eye out for the number one. Equally, Joel Esteban rode very, very well last year. Could have won the championship, missed a couple of races due to injury, but he stepped up to junior GP this year and he's really, really impressing. So it just shows the quality of the field here in ETC. Yeah, we'll have no spoilers to what happened in the junior GP race earlier in case you want to go back and watch it. But in previous rounds, we have seen him step up, take podiums and a victory as well last time out in the Algarve. So it just goes to show this really is the breeding ground. This is a rider now we really, really expect to move up next year. Brian Uriarty, he has been blockbuster entertainment value. Valencia race two, sensational couple of moves on the last lap to take a frankly ridiculous win. Well, in Estoril, I believe it was only two thousandths of a second, just like Tony Elias and Rossi in 2006, that he took the win. Did you steal that stat from our colleague Liam Hodgins? Or did you, is that one of your own? Uh, off the top of my head. Uh, okay, sure. <laughs> How dare you doubt me? <laughs> it just sounded like a Liam stat. <laughs> my one good stat. So this is your grid. It's Uriarty, Salmela and Guido Pini on the front row. Rios, O'Gorman, Paul Sina, complete row two. Cara Thompson, Guillaume Plonk and Rush Mudley making for an international looking third row. Rounding out, well, rounding out to um, row four then. Torres leads Zani and Bojosa. Morelli fronts row five ahead of Brinton and Roman. Serpa her, her, uh, heads row six ahead of Hakim Danish and Pantacleris. Then it's Pugliese, Al Sahuti and Berto Bertola in row seven. On Van Trik, Valentino Ehrlich and Fernandez in row eight. The back of the grid then, it's Daniel, your championship leader, Max Quiles and Dodo Baggio, who won last time out in race two. So right. then we see Kiles and Bajo at the back of the grid. Can you tell us why, Tristan? Yeah, so a few of these riders have incurred the wrath of the stewards once again. It's natural in low capacity racing that a lot of these riders are out looking for slipstreams and a lot of them were caught riding slowly in a few too many sectors and the stewards deemed it to be 
unsafe. So Max Martinez will start from the back of the grid as well as Max Quiles also starting from that back of the grid. Dodo Bodjo was another one that incurred the wrath of the stewards and will have to start from the back as well. Keanu Vaya, another one of the names in there. There were so, so many names that were, that were caught doing it. And with this kilometre long straight, a lot of these riders looking for that slipstream, but going about it the wrong way. Yeah, the stewards have been very strict with it this year. We've seen penalties handed out in every round. 31 degrees, 38 degrees, track temperature, 31 air. But yeah, the stewards have been strict. They're really trying to stamp out riding slowly on the racing line. And we've seen it, and it's, it's probably worth stamping out. But slipstream is so crucial on these machines, Tristan, as you know very well that it could be coming around the straight like this. It could be w uh, nearly w upwards of a second in a qualifying lap time. So you can see r why riders want to do it, but there's a way to do it. Yeah, it could, it could it could very well, like you say, could it even be up to a second, especially on these low-powered bikes. These little Primoto 3 machines don't have a lot of power. So if you get that, that, um, that hole in the air punched in front of you, it's worth a lot of time. But like you say, there's a correct way to do it. And unfortunately, sometimes it's just luck of the draw. So then no championship can be won today, but as you can see, Kiles, one point ahead of Brian Uriarty. They have been neck and neck all season and great value on track. Keep an eye on the number 28 of Max Kiles. He is riding from the very, well, not quite the very back of the grid. We still have the last chance riders who qualified onto it. But the number 28 of the Aspar Junior team is launching from 26th alongside his teammate, Dodo Bajo. So both Aspire Junior team riders are at the back of the grid, just ahead of the last chance riders who qualified for this race this morning. So the number 28 and 47 expect a charge from the back of the pack for both these riders. Both have race winning pedigree. Dodo Bajo won last time out, but we're back at the front as the red flag is held up. Eyes on Brian Uriarty. Will he have the whole shot going into turn one? Red flag is there, the green uh, safety cars pull up behind. We're just waiting now for one or two more riders to get into their grid position. I think that's Jesus Rios who's riding up a little bit slowly, or it's just maybe Guillaume Plunk just behind him, but the red flag's gone. Red lights are about to go out, revs are rising. Brian Uriarty is on pole and he gets a super start, as does Guido Pini. Rico Salmela is a bit slow off the line. Number 54 there, Jesus Rios, slots into fourth place with a brilliant start as well. We look at Rush Mudley a little further back. Is he going to try and move up the inside? Not quite. Salmela, long run into the line here, so it could be anyone. It's Salmela recovers from that not, well, not optimal start. But it's Brian Uriarty then on the switchback. Will he take the lead? No, it is Salmela. So it's Team Australia Galicia 0 0 1 2 out front. This time it's Salmela Ooh, who leads Pini really Uriarty. Wide. I didn't quite see what happened to Pini, but he's after dropping back. Jesus Rios, Casey O'Gorman, and the number 26 of Pau Alcina all scrapping it out for that final po provisional podium place. But the perfect start for the Team Australia Galicia as the two of their riders get away perfectly. And it's number 54, Jesus Rios, who slots into third position. Keep an eye on the yellow bike, the number 67. That's Casey O'Gorman, the Irishman, Irish family, born in London, British Talent Cup champion a couple of years ago. And a very, very hot talent here in the European Talent Cup. It's Salmela, though, that leads from Brian Oriate, Rios, and the number 67, Casey O'Gorman. The, oh, we've we got already a have a crash crasher already. Who is that? We have a look. It's Roman, the number 38, I believe. Well, that's hugely. Matteo Roman, yeah. That's hugely disappointing for him. He's just. Day is over and round is over after just. A oh, that's a big orders. crash in the background there. I'm not quite sure who that is, but oh, hopefully he's okay. That looks a big, big one. The number 69 of Buhosa is gone down a massive high side thank god he's up on his feet and running back it looks like he might even want to rejoin but back out front it is salmela and uriarty and they are building a gap here already to jesus rios and casey o'gorman and uriarty is in the slipstreams pulled out a little bit is he going to try and move coming into turn one Right in the, keep an eye on the number 51. It's such a long run to the line on these machines. Maybe he pulled out a slipstream slightly too early. What do I know? He's taken P1 for now. Takes it to lead. Salmela slots in second. 
and it's 54 still. Jesus Rios holding on to third position. Just behind them, Guido Pini has recovered from going wide a little bit earlier and is in fourth. With Casey O'Corman, I think, just about to try and move to reclaim fourth position back up the inside of the reigning champion. Well, what a huge shame this is for Bujosa. We've already lost a couple of riders. Let's have a look. Big, well, back big at crash. That. What happened to... Oh! It's just a big high side there. Unfortunately, it can happen on the first lap. Was a little bit wide, was a little bit offline. Running a strange line through that. Let's have a little better look at it. So he's uh, trying to go up the inside of another rider there. Tries to get on the. Oh no. Yep, yep, the just too much gas. Whips around and sends him flying into the gravel. Thankfully, enough skill on track for the other riders to take evasive action. And he looks to be pretty much unharmed from what was a big crash. So hopefully, we will see him back at the next round. There is quite the summer break to come, of course, so plenty of time to recover if he is a little bit shaken. And Jesus Rios now having a little look up the inside of Salmela. And will Salmela get the cut back? No, brilliant stuff there from Rios. And Uriarty's out of the seat. And Rios, all of a sudden now, is in the lead. Uriarty has dropped the P3, and Salmela is hot on the heels of the MRE talent rider. Brilliant stuff from Jesus Rios. Uriarty, not sure what happened to you there, but taking that left hander, you just seem to have got it wrong, and we're out of the seas, and it's cost you two positions, and you have to have, he has had to slot back into third position. Rios yet to finish on the podium in European Talent Cup. Could this be his first podium still? 11 laps remain, sorry, 12 laps remaining of this race. And it is yet to be seen. I'm sure the positions will continue to change. B Pini's got his way, made his way up ahead of Casey O'Gorman. And now Max Quiles is right on the back of this group already. Sound the Jaws music, people. Max Quiles has wasted no time across the opening couple of laps. He is sitting in ninth. I'm Fastest lap of the race as well. It looks like we may have lost another rider. I'm staring at my, at my timing screen just to look for Dodo Bajo. I don't quite see him there yet. 14th. He is in 14th position. So both Aspar Junior team riders have wasted little to no time in getting towards the front of this race. At the moment, though, it's Rush Mudley who is taking the lead. Rios, once again, up the inside, Uriarty. Uriarty taking the outside line. Looks like Guido Pini's trying to follow him through. Gets a little bit pushed wide by Salmela. Salmela in fourth. Guido Pini slots in behind the number 24 then, and Guillaume Blanc. Excellent race from the young French rider. <laughs> he is in sixth place. Yep, Blanc looking menacing then. But look at Rush Moodley out the front. He's made his way out the front of this race, but how long will it stay for? These riders constantly swapping and changing positions as the race goes on. But now Quiles is right in this battle, and it won't be long until he makes his way to the front of the race. He's got Casio Gorman to contend with first, and then Guido Pini making moves now as well on Plonk. Moodley then it is that leads from Rios, Brian Uriarte, Rico Salmella and Guido Pini, your reigning champion currently rounding out that top five, but he's coming under pressure now from Plonk and Casey O'Gorman. The action will continue all race long. Don't expect the order to stay like this. No, but we're beginning to see a lead group form, a lead group of 13 riders as the track limits comes the way of Casey O'Gorman, I believe. We might see that shortly. So Casey needs to be just a little bit careful when running on some of these corners. He doesn't want to hit the green again. Max Quiles on the very left there. But who is oh, that? Ariarty. What a move that is up the inside. Uriarty. <laughs> sorry, I think that was... No, yeah, it was Uriarty. Uriarty, Uriarty yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a move that came. Cuts across to take the lead. Jesus Rios bumped back into second, but Max Quiles, what a ride this is from your championship leader. Uriarty must have been looking at this as a huge chance to put an advantage over Quiles and take the championship lead. Just a point separates them in the championship in that title race. Jesus Rios and Oriarty going toe-to-toe -to -toe here. But here comes Quiles for second place. Uh, second place, he's taken first place off Uriarty. That's going to be a shock to the system for Uriarty. What are you doing here so quickly, he'll be thinking. Max Quiles has come from the back of the grid and three laps in, he is leading this race. Well, he's already made it to the front. What can he do now? He's at the front. Very, very difficult to pull away in this European Talent Cup category and even more difficult here in Catalonia with that kilometre-long front straight. But he's doing an incredible job on the number 28 machine. Casey O'Gorman's looking menacing now up into third place. Sal Muller just defending that position as well from Pini. Oh, but he doesn't quite. Pini sits him up. Now, what can Casey O'Gorman do about these front two? I'm sure the order will change 
as they come along the front straight one more time through the final corner and let's see sorry the penultimate corner now through the final corner jumping the gun a little bit there now let's see how these bikes fare along this front straight we know that that gas gas machine that aspar machine sorry is very very strong along this front straight but nothing can outweigh the forces of the slipstream 10 laps to go he then here in Barcelona in this European Talent Cup race. Max Quiles led over the line on the last one. He leads into turn one, but Casey O'Gorman is making shapes. Brian Uriarty, championship rival, P2 to Max Quiles, just one point behind him in the title race. Hangs it on the outside of O'Gorman, but he won't let he won't want to see Kiles getting the win here. They expect a battle for the ages between these two. Casey O'Gorman having a cracking ride here, as is Jesus Rios, just hanging on the back of this lead trio, trio in fourth place. Rico Salmela also in this group, as is Guido Pini, Rush Mudley, and a couple of other riders a bit further back. But it is championship action at the front with Casey O'Gorman getting the elbows out between the championship's top two. Keelers then doing an incredible job out the front of this one. Casey Gorman's all over his rear wheel. But the Mon Lao rider, Brian Uriate, is also looking menacing this race. This is just going to keep carrying on like this for the rest of the race. We can tell uh, We can see it's settling into no, a rhythm so. anytime soon. So Look it's Keelers who is here. out front. I have to say, Keelers last time out, I know he crashed out in race two. Uriarte fires it up the inside of Casey O'Gorman there. Brilliant move from the young Spaniard and three time race winner in 2023. But touching back on Max Quiles, he loves leading at the front. You saw in the highlights earlier on, in the Algarve, he led from the front. Salmela, O'Gorman, multiple, Jesus Rios, Pau Alcina, all had goals at leading and taking over as Uriarte. Oh, the final is to the Valentino Rossi. He's done Not it up the time. inside, but Quiles, I guarantee you will have an answer for this. He loves being out front, but Casey O'Gorman has oh, a brilliant double bubble drive out there. As Jesus Rios gets back into this triple slipstream, shall we say, and they're going to be five abreast coming into turn one. So He's done the Valentino Rossi, as you said, yeah. but Quiles, look at where Quiles is now. He's been swallowed up by this lead group. That is the damage. Oh, Rush Mudley, I think. Shortcut. Has had an absolute howler there, and he will have to give up a lot of time and a lot of places to avoid a long lap penalty. Double long lap penalties just coming up for number 13 and number 18. That's Hakim Danish has had to do one, and the number 18 of Bertala. They both have to go through the long lap penalty loop. I think that was Rush Mudley who went wide. It looks like he's given up enough time there. The number 21 has dropped back into the second lead pack here. Whoa, Uriarty! Whoa, Uriarty he's gone Uriarty, off, he happened? made contact there, and now he's off in the gravel. Will he be able to keep it on two wheels? He's going to lose a lot of time, That's and he can't quite. Here. He's, he's going to give it everything to get back in here, but that is his hopes of victory well and truly gone. Now he may try and get some points, but he has dropped back all the way back. He'll be hopeful to get back on circuit. He's definitely got the pace to recover some positions, and he's already back, back on circuit. He's currently running in 27th place, 16 seconds behind the leader as of the last check. So that is absolute disaster. We'll get a replay of that shortly. Uriarty, well, he started on pole <laughs> to twists and turns in this championship race. He started on pole after Quiles was dropped to the back of the pack. But now Quiles is in this lead group, having taken three laps to get out front. He's in the middle of this lead group here that Jesus Rios now leads, Rico Salmela in second, and Casey O'Gorman in third place. It will not stay like this. Is that Guillaume Planck just ahead of Guido Pini? And then it's Max Quiles. We went into this race thinking it was advantage Uriarte in this race, but it's not now. Now it's Quiles is in this front group and Uriarte's dropped way off with that incident. Look at this down into turn one, though. No idea where to look. Bodjo's now in the mix as well. He's come from the back of the grid as well, and he's now slotting himself up into, Ooh, I Quiles think, is third. Getting stood up there. The Aspar guys move on, but there's look on, but there's plenty of action happening on Sun Circuit as Moodley now in the lead. Toto Bajo, where have you come from? I just noticed him coming through there. He was back in 14th the last time we checked. He's wasted no time at all. He is in this lead group. We saw the Aspire team there looking a little bit worse for wear and a little bit nervous. That's because Max Quiles got punted out and stood up twice coming through the corners there a couple corners ago. He's still riding in this race. He's, he'll have seen Uriarty go off track as well. So now, is it a matter of pushing for a podium or taking your points as they come? 
Quiles knows all too well, of course, he crashed out from the lead in the last lap, so he knows the dangers of pushing too much. We might as well scrap qualifying because it clearly makes no difference in this European Talent Cup race. They're all starting from the back of the grid. Let's just order them by race number. Potentially, potentially. Well, we're looking at the back now. What can Brian Uriarty do? He's still at the back, 18 seconds from this lead group. He's got a mammoth task on his hand if he is to pick up any points here. He's running 18 seconds, sorry, not off the lead group, but off the riders ahead of him. So a mammoth task to get back into this. Now, Rush Mudley has recovered from his mistake. He's running, running out front ahead of Casey O'Gorman. Dodo Bajo has taken second place from O'Gorman, so it's all chopping and changing here. Guillaume Plunk, keep an eye out for him. He is mixing it here with some of the big guns, and he's putting on a hell of a performance, the young French rider. Could he be on for a podium here in the European Talent Cup? All right, then, there's a snake down the front straight. Don't like seeing that one. A little bit dangerous from these guys, but it does happen. They're trying to break the slipstream, but ideally they need to not do that. Oh, Peeney up the inside. Beautiful move down into turn one as the, as the order continues to change here in the European Talent Cup. Now Rios out the front looking for that first podium in the European Talent Cup. Can he make it happen this time around? Casey O'Gorman having a little look as well. Here's Uriarty. He's way off the back of these guys now. Yeah, it's a lonely, lonely ride for Brian Uriarty. I've got him clocked at 17, 18 seconds behind the uh, guys ahead of him, which is Ivan Serpan on Van Three. So the riders ahead of him. Brian Uriarty has a mammoth task. He's going to hope some bad luck falls upon the riders ahead, and oh, it has. Who's this? Oh, is that Rush Mudley who's gone down? We've lost That's three the riders 50. from the lead group. Carter Thompson. Okay, oh, panics. Powell Sina, Zani, Rush Mudley's teammate, Zani has gone down. They were part of that lead group. Powell Sina and Carter Thompson. We'll catch a replay of what happened there. For a moment, it looked like we may have lost some of the biggest, biggest names within the lead group here. But that's happened at turn five. The yellow flags are out as that's a big move up the side inside there of Dodo Bajo from Jesus Torres. Guido Pini, though, is out front. Jesus Rios still sticking it out here. Guido Pini, though, sticks a move up the inside. Will Rios get the move back on the right-hander here? Not quite having the angle potentially through one of the final corners, but we know how optimistic that move must be. So he'll settle in with the slipstream coming up. Disaster here then for Pau Alcina, Carter Thompson. You can see, oh, and Zani was just taken out, absolutely helpless. A collision behind him between Thompson and Alcina, I think, has just taken out the riders there. That's a huge, huge shame. Zani absolutely helpless in that situation. So up front, Zani's teammate, Rush Mudley, jumps into the lead, but not for long, Guido Pini. Cuts it back in case Casey O'Gorman's hanging it on the outside of Mudley, the South African. It's Ireland v South Africa here. And the Irishman looks to have gotten the win in this short battle. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. And up the inside there of Jesus Torres. I'm not quite sure it's a Guillaume Planck. It absolutely is. Dodo Bajo there too. It's all chopping and changing. It's all elbows out racing here. Max Quiles has dropped to the back of the front runners here. I think he's just taken a little break out from all this... Um, all this battling happening out front and just waiting for his moment to strike a little later in the race. Right then, Peeney on the number one, the reigning champion. It is that leads. He's got Casey O'Gorman, the former British Talent Cup champion, right on his rear wheel. Absolute incredible depth of field here in European Talent Cup, considering how young these guys are. The experience that they've had and the level that they run at is incredibly, incredibly impressive. And they're looking to slingshot themselves onto the world stage as it looks as if Rios is going to do two for one down into turn 10. O'Gorman slots into P2, oh, but he loses Pini it. Rios goes back. wide as Brilliant. well. Brilliant, and O'Gorman forces Rios right. Brilliant from Pini. Well, it was more the other two went wide. But just to take advantage of that, Dodo Bajo then cap capitalises on the mistake as well to move into second ahead of Jesus Torres. Excellent riding here from some of these riders. Any mistake is going to be pounced upon. Bojo now then, right in the slipstream of his fellow Italian. It's Pini from Bojo. And now the number 22 of Torres looking menacing as well as he goes down the outside on the front straight. Four, five, six, maybe abreast. Get the fingers out, Tristan. We need to keep count here. 
And up the inside is Jesus Torres. Guillaume Planck is in out second place. Jesus Rios out front. It is all chopping and changing. It is anyone's race. Any of these front riders is within a shout of winning here. Rico Salmela is at the back of the group. Dodo Bajo is at the back of this group. They are both riders with podium potential and race winning pedigree. But wow, this could go any way at all here. Absolutely incredible scenes. Mad racing as always in the European Talent Cup. Salmela is looking menacing in the background. He's going to look, ooh, Kiles with a really nice move there. He's putting himself back into victory contention. Just keeping an eye on the names who are consistently within that top three. Uh, obviously, Casey O'Gorman, Quiles as well. Rios more or less there or thereabouts. PD all, always pretty much there. Those are the riders you can expect that probably take it as it as it comes at the end and probably be in that top three. Those riders that have managed to keep themselves up there for the race distance tend to be the ones the pick up the points at the end. Pini now trying to put himself back into that top three. Rios, number 22 there. Torres making a nice move at the inside of Casey O'Gorman. Casey, not one shy of a battle. No, not at all. Absolutely sensational rider on track and great value to watch him do his stuff. So he's sitting in fourth just behind Jesus Torres at the minute with Jesus Rios in top spot. Max Quiles, is he going to have a little look up the inside there? Not quite. I think Quiles, well, knowing where Brian Uriarty is, he's already picked up one or two positions. Uriarty has virtue of the crashers ahead of him, but still has a long way to go ahead of the riders who are in front of him. So Rush Mudley's on the far right, the number 27 then are Salmela and Dodo Bajo on the far left, but it's Rush Mudley then who will take the lead into turn one. Guido Pini right behind him. Jesus Torres is putting in a sensational ride here. He's on for a podium, which will be a superb result for the Spaniard. And then Rico Salmela, he's been at the back of this group over the last few laps, but just beginning to make some moves. Casey O'Gorman has been bunted back down to fifth position. All these riders in, in this lead of nine have sat or occupied the lead or the top two, top three spots over the last couple of laps. So with four to go, expect us all to change again as Jesus Rios, who has been at the front of this battle for the majority, is back in seventh, running in eighth place, having a little hook. And for some reason, we see Rush Mudley put the hand out. Follow me, boys. Why would they follow you, Rush? You're in the lead. They want to get ahead of you. But it's Guido Pini then who is going to make a little move or eye up a move on the inside of the South African here. Jesus Torres slotted in behind the reigning champion. But it's Mudley who leads, coming around and about to click clock off another lap. Just over three to go. Moodley yet to taste the champagne in the European Talent Cup. His current best result is fifth place this year. Fourth last year, he managed to, to grab but still yet to stand on that rostrum. He's got Pini right on his tracks now. And Torres really, really coming strong in this race as well. On the number 22 machine, Rico Salmela now is coming to the fore. We heard going into this race that he was one of the riders with superior pace. It doesn't really matter in the race though when you've got all these riders completely locked together. We'll see them change positions as we go down the front straight once again. Will Pini take the lead down into turn one? He takes the outside line. But Casey O'Gorman okay, look at Casey. a wide, wide angle there. Is that going to pay off? Well, he's going to earn a couple of positions. He's gone up into fourth position. Brilliant stuff from Casey O'Gorman. He'll slot up into fourth. But it's going to be Jesus Rios, is it? No, it's Max Quiles who's leading coming into term three. Rios slots in behind the uh, 2021 champion. And Jesus Torres is fighting for his life out there. He is clinging on to P3. This would be a superb result. We've seen some riders here with pedigree some other riders who have been part of the lead groups in previous rounds but just haven't made that step onto the podium yet could this be the end, end of their wait to taste the box after oh, Keyless, Reyes, look at that. pushes them right and Jesus Torres opens the open the door for Jesus Torres brilliant opportunism from the Spaniard but Keyless, brilliant move to push himself temporarily into the lead and now into second place Torres didn't need a second invitation on that number 22 machine riding for the Cunet de Campione squad. A squad that's done a lot to help out youth and young riders of all different nationalities. But now it's coming to crunch time and the usual names are pushing towards the front as Quiles now takes the lead. Rios desperate 
for his first podium. So is Rushmoodley, but he's been pushed down the pack as well. Bodjo now trying to put himself in the mix as well. And we're going to come on to the penultimate mat lap. Two corners left of this lap. And then it'll be two laps remaining in the European Talent Cup. How are they going to fare as they head onto the front straight? We've seen in the past that when Quiles gets onto the front straight on that Aspar machine, he can maintain the lead. Will he do it this time around? Rios right in his slipstream. You've got to think down into turn one, there's going to be some moves made, but he goes real, real defensive. Bodjo goes towards the outside. There's Ooh, bikes everywhere. Look at Casey. A little bit here. Uh, brilliant from Jesus Rios and Jesus Torres took an inside line there. <laughs> Both these guys are on for a first ever ETC podium. Guido Pini is slotted in the third, but not for long. Casey O'Gorman is on your case. He is just behind this lead too. So, ooh, was a little moment there for Jesus Torres. I think he was out of the seat with just under two laps to go. Oh, it is see. all very tight here. Guillaume Blanc hangs it on the outside of Guido Pini. Max Kiles just in behind, waiting for his moment to strike. But it is Jesus Rios out front. Le <laughs> Not anymore, it's Casey O'Gorman. Guillaume Blanc <laughs> now is into second place. It's all chopping and changing. Jesus Torres is down to third with Guillaume Blanc <laughs> in second. And Jesus Rios, excuse me, has moved to fourth. It has, in the blink of an eye, all changed in the top four. Max Kiele is just hanging behind here in fifth place, waiting for his moment to strike. Guillaume Planck, does he fancy a move up the inside here? Not quite yet. It is Casey O'Gorman leading up front. Was had a little bit of contact between some riders there. They have nervous looks from the Aspar team but their two riders from the back of the grid are still very much in contention as Dodo Baggio cuts up the inside of Guido Pini to get into fifth place. That pushes Max Kielas right and he's dropped back. But now it's Casey O'Gorman who leads Guillaume Plunk, Jesus Torres on for a first ever podium, but he's got so many contenders within a blanket throw of him. All right, comes in to the final corner for the penultimate time. It's Casey O'Gorman that will lead them across the line as they start the final lap of this European Talent Cup race. Although Guillaume Plunk coming alongside the number 67. And what will we see down into turn one now? It is last lap time. It is crunch time here at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya. Max Quiles has made his way to the front down into turn one. Bodjo is now in the mix into P4. Pini into, into P3. And Rios now slotting himself into P2. Desperate for that first, that, not first victory, for that first podium. Yeah, uh, there's a bunch of riders here chasing a first victory and the first ever podium, but it's Max Quiles who is in control at the moment. Guido Pini fires it up the inside of Jesus Rios, but Rios responds as Dono Bajo tries to hang it outside on the outside. So, drive out of here is going to be crucial. Can anyone find the inside on the left-hander? Guido Pini has a little look up the inside of Rios, and Rios is hanging it outside, brilliantly defended from Rios. It looked for all the world Pini was going to take that, but this is all just playing into the hands of Max Quiles. He's had another look, and Rios has been so good at defending that, but he can't do it this time. Aspar team here looking on nervously, but don't be so nervous, boys. Your boy is in the lead, Max Quiles. This could be a huge, huge win for him. This will put him 26 points ahead of Brian Uriarte, who is still at the back of this pack. He's at in P19. He won't pick oh, up any points. Oh, it comes Bojo! Oh, he's taking out Quiles and Jesus Torres. Oh, he's taking out his teammate. The absolute disaster in the Aspar team. Oh, I was just you saying, don't be so brewing. nervous. Dodo Bajo has cut up the inside and wiped out Max Quiles. And that Pini puts Guido Pini in front with Casey O'Gorman just in behind. And I think it's Rush Mudley. It is Rush Mudley. Oh, a massive collision. And that has probably decided the face of this race. Guido Pini is going to win it. Rush Mudley is going to try to get the drive line, but Casey O'Gorman holds on for a second. Rush Mudley in third. Jesus Torres comes fourth. Morelli in fifth. Oh, that was a huge, huge, huge incident. Oh, wow, the you ramifications could, could see for that the coming. title you race. You just see how hot Dodo he was coming Pajo in. Dodo Baggio tries to move up the inside. Delight, obviously, for Guido Pini, but despair at Aspar. Oh, Dodo Baggio has dived up the inside and wiped out a couple of riders. Rico Salmela, part of them. Max Quiles, a teammate, part of it as well. Absolutely devastating for the Aspar team. Guido Pini is celebrating the AC Racing Team rider. He's got his teammate there alongside him, Pugliese. 
and getting congratulations all around. What a well-deserved win. He's been always fighting at the front this year. Oh, how do you like your drama, Tristan? Last lap, last lap drama, but ideally with overtakes and not with crashes. Casey O'Gorman, happy with that one. Yeah, unfortunately, Bodjo just came into that way, way too hot. You could see him coming from a, from a mile away back. I could see it coming as he was on the brakes, and yeah, unfortunately, it ended in the gravel trap for those three. Yeah, the turn 10 incident involving those riders is under investigation. And well, not we'll much investigating to do, really, is there? Just went into well, the we'll see what happens post race, but it's all about Guido Pini at the moment. His first win of the campaign and second in the ETC. The reigning champion is up and running on the winner's board. Super performance from the Italian Casey O'Gorman, too. Excellent, excellent, excellent ride. Well, Rush Mudley debuts on the podium too. He's had come so close in the past. Come so close in the past, but today he finally gets himself onto the box. We saw Jesus Rios going by him there. Just looking through the timing screen. It's absolute disaster for Jesus Rios. He got caught up in that incident, came home 15th. He was on for a first podium. Oh, that incident has had huge ramifications for the title race and well it will very much be looked at by the stewards so Christian Daniel there the number 97 two of Morelli he took huge advantage from that incident as Guido Pini for Morelli finishing fifth as we watch Guido Pini come into pit lane to what will surely be some jubilant scenes in Park Fermi, his team most certainly waiting there, probably sprinted all the way up pit lane to Greece, their young superstar in the making. Guido Pini, the reigning ETC champion, European Talent Cup champion, gets his first win of the season. And as we can see there, it has very much been well received by his team. Let's have a little listen in to some of these celebrations. A massive win then for Guido Pini, and that very much brings him back into championship contention. He was 34 points off the front last pre-race, but given that Max Kiles, Brian Uriarty, and Dodo Baggio all failed to pick up points, he has now pushed himself within reach of those three riders. He's overtaken Baggio, and he is now just nine points behind Max Kiles out front. Casey O'Gorman too, superb ride from the young Irishman, consecutive P2s. It's great to see the Irish tricolour doing so well in the world of motorcycle sports. While Rush Mudley, what a big smile he's got on his face. The South African takes a first podium in the class. So we are going to hear from our race winner, Guido Pini, momentarily. You'll just have to get out of the celebrations. Our intrepid reporter, Tristan Finocchiaro, is nearly ready to talk to him, but Guido Pini is still dissecting the race with his team. And this is how it all happened. Dodo Baggio fired up the inside, collided. Oh, disaster, collided with his teammate and championship leader, Max Kielas. Rico Salmela caught up in us as well. That wiped out three riders. And Guido Pini, and we can see Jesus Rios in the background going wide. Guido Pini took the advantage and the initiative from there. Yeah, Jesus Rios picked up a point in the end despite going through the gravel trap, but it was Guido Pini. He nearly had a little moment coming there. He was out of the seas, the excitement getting the better of him. In a drag to the line between Casey O'Gorman and Rush Mudley. It was Casey O'Gorman, the Irish rider from Super Hugo 44 team, to take his second P2 of the season. Rush Mudley with de debuts on the top three. So then, we have our race winner, Guido Pini, down with Tristan Finocchiaro. Let's get his thoughts. Guido Pini, an incredible victory. You were in the mix all race long and a very, very hectic last lap. Talk us through it. 
Yeah, I think it's my favorite race in my life because it was really hot. I tried to push hard all the, all the race, uh, but the group was really big. In the last lap, I tried to pass Maximo after a crash, but I'm so happy for this win. Uh, I have to say thanks to all my team, all my sponsor, all my Nico Ferreira coach. Thank you so much. E ora in italiano. È stata una gara veramente bellissima, incredibile, faceva veramente caldo. Il gruppo era veramente, veramente grande, però dai, ce l'abbiamo fatta per il campionato è perfetto. È una vittoria incredibile. Devo ringraziare tutta la mia famiglia, la squadra e tutte le persone che mi sostengono. Grazie. Bravo. Grazie. Bravo indeed and this is how it all happened. So, we had Brian Uriarty starting on pole position. Poor start from Rico Salmelis on drop a little bit. Guido Pini was right in the thick of the action, as was Jesus Rios, but Salmelis recovered from a slow start to take the whole shot going into turn one. It was a Team Australia Galicia 0-0-1-2 as we lost the first of our riders out back. That was the French rider Roman, the number 69. Max Kiele started at the back of the grid, but wasted no time in getting himself to the front. He led for a while, but was stuck in a major, major battle with a big lead group. Brian Uriarty then was part of that lead group, and disaster struck for him. His race-winning ambitions was over after this fall, an incident in the gravel trap. Out front, Jesus Rios was having a fantastic ride and very much in the thick of the action. Led for large part, Guido Pini and Casey Gorman just behind him. Then another big crash. Wiped out a couple of riders, Carter Thompson in there, Zanny as well. Max Kieles then decided to take control out front, dived it up on the left. Jesus Rios slotted back into second, and Kieles, one point ahead of the championship prior to this race, saw a huge advantage before him. But it was Jesus Rios who was fighting back then for the win. Casey O'Gorman flying through here as well. And he led for a short period. Guillaume Blanc, part of that group too. He had an excellent, excellent ride until it all came to a head shortly after. Max Quiles back in front. Dodo Baggio there just behind Guido Pini as they're switching it through turns one and two. Max Quiles, though, loves to lead from the front. Looked very much on for the win until this happened. Dodo Baggio, his Aspar Junior team teammate, comes in and wipes him out. And Rico Salmela was part of that as well. Absolute disaster. Despair in the Aspar Junior team box. But over an AC Racing team, it was pure joy. Guido Pini took full advantage to take his first win of the season. Rush Budley came third after just missing out to Casey O'Gorman on the line. And what a race. We'll be back next time for Aragon for what will be another cracker in the European Talent Cup. So a very international looking podium. Two tricolours of Ireland and Italy side by side joined by the South African flag. So the team representative coming out from AC. He will receive his reward alongside the race winner. Rush Mudley then out on the podium for the very first time in the ETC. Casey O'Gorman back on the second step of the podium. Consecutive races now where he has been on the podium in P2. Superb run from the Irishman. But it's all about this man coming out now. Young rider Guido Pini secures his first win of the campaign and really enters the championship picture as the reigning champion. Director General del Circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya, l'encarregat de felicitar l'equip AC Racing Team. So the Director General, Jose Luis Santamaria, Director General of the Circuit, hands out the Team Manager Prize for following it up with a memorable prize for Rush Mudley, a moment he'll never forget. Rush Mudley. Tenim ara Messier Jean-Marc Disney, Casey O'Gorman picks up another trophy for his troubles here. 
and another P2 in what will be a huge boost of confidence for the young Irish rider. And out comes Joel Kelso, Moto3 World Championship rider, to hand the winning trophy to Guido Pini. And now the Italian national anthem. A wonderful rendition of the Italian national anthem, one of the best anthems out there, in my humble opinion. Agreed. <laughs> not biased at all, Mr. Finocchiaro. No, not at all. Brilliant, then. Brilliant to see Pini returning to victory after his championship win last year. Yeah, superb. Very much back in the running now for the championship. That puts him nine points, I think. Off the top of my head, nine points off Kiles in the championship picture as we hear some more belting songs coming out here at Circuit de Catalunya Barcelona. I quite like this music play, played on the on The, the DJ podium. is very much on point here today and even during the MotoGP and World SBK rounds here. You can always hear it coming through to TV. Guido Pini making sure it's a moment he'll never forget. A little kiss of the trophy for the AC t Racing Team rider. Casey O'Gorman taking his time coming down from second. Ah, well, that's because they have the picture to come. And here are your race results then. Guido Pini, your winner, ahead of Casey O'Gorman, Rush Mudley. Jesus Torres put in a super showing, but just missed out on the podium. Marco Morelli took advantage of that big crash to come up fifth. Guillaume Planck dropped the sixth. Christian Daniel in seventh, a brilliant result for him. Adriano Donoso, Benyat Fernandez also coming well inside the points, profiting from that big, big last lap incident. Giulio Pugliese rounds out the top 10. Guido Pini's teammate, Emmanuel Brinton. Top 11 for him, Al Sahuti, Edu Gutierrez, Pantier Liakis, and Jesus Rios complete the point scoring finishes. Brian Uriarty just misses out on the point after his big, big moment. Hakim Danish coming in behind him. Van Trigt, Herlicht, Yvonne Serpa, Eduardo Bertola then complete the finishers. Pau Alcina, Doro Pajo, Max Quiles, Rico Salmela. It was a chance of opportunity for them, but they all got wiped up in that last lap incident. While there were more finish, uh, non finishers, I should say, Leonardo Zani, Carter Thompson involved with Bujosa, another rider who didn't finish. So, this is what it does for the championship. And get the popcorn out. Max Quiles still leads Brian Uriarty by one point, but here comes Guido Pini, nine points off the top. Dodo Baggio still in contention, 29 behind. Rico Salmela didn't pick up any points today. He's 36 off. Fernandez, Jesus Torres, David Gonzalez are 6, 7 and 8. Casey O'Gorman moves up to ninth position as Rush Mudley comes into the top 10. Good point scoring finish today for Guillaume Planck moves him up a couple of positions. Pugliese, Fernandez, Alcina, Jesus Rios all following in behind. Donoso and Danish in 16th and 17th. Point for Brinton today sees him progress up the championship standings, as does Christian Daniel and Al Sahuti. Marco Morelli's fifth place finish today, picking up 11 points for him. He's 21st. Lorenz Luciano, Leonardo Zani, Edu Ligori, and Gonzalo Perez following them, as Gutierrez, Aloma, Perone, Carter Thompson all sit on two and three points, as does Pantialiakis, while Owen Van Trigt has one point to his name in 2023, two days. So, drama by the bucket load in Barcelona, but it is celebrations for the ACE racing team, and Guido Pini, as the young Italian, enters the title conversation.
Barça, Barcelona, Catalonia in the northeast of Spain, and in the province of Catalonia, plays host of round five of the Junior GP V Network World Championship. We've already had one race today on a brilliant circuit. Long lap penalty, as you can see, is turn two. 4.7 kilometers in length, 14 turns, and with the longest straight on the Junior GP calendar, it is the perfect place to go racing. Six left-handers, as we can see, eight right-handers. It is packed full of passing opportunities because of a mixture of hard braking and fast corners. So we are looking forward to second race of the day here in the Junior GP Championship. I'm Chris Jordan, and today I have the pleasure of being joined by Tristan Finacchiaro, a good mate and colleague of mine. And Tristan, if it's anything like race one, we're going to be in for another spectacle here. Oh, absolutely. Goes without saying, as ever in the FIM Junior GP World Championship, it is always close racing and it always throws up some sort of spectacle. Like we've said many times on the broadcast, this is the stepping stone up into the Grand Prix paddock. You cannot get into the Grand Prix paddock, a Grand Prix seat these days, without riding in the F, the Finetwork FIM Junior GP Championships. So this was the story of race one. It was championship leader Angel Piqueras on pole position. But look at that, Jacob Rulston wasting no time in slotting in behind the Australia Galicia rider. Long run to the line. Piqueras just about managed to hold off some of the contenders behind him while Matza hung it up the outside of Carraro to get himself into third position. Rulston though, didn't want to hang about at all in this race. Almanza had made moves and got into lead, but Australian rider Jacob Rulson put in a fine performance and he wanted his turn out front. So Eddie O'Shea then the number eight, but he had nothing he could do about the crash that happened behind him. Ross and Thaler riding into the back of him and what was really not a great day for the race one, I should say. Licky, Morley, Husqvarna, Intact GP team. Thankfully, Russell Thaler came out of that relatively unscathed. But back out front, it was Almanza and Rudston going toe to toe for the lead. With Adrian Cruces slotting in behind them. Angel Picaris was part of this lead group as we look at his team watching on. Picaris just dropped down the pecking order ever so slightly during race one. Well, then we lost Tamara, uh, Hamada into the gravel trap halfway through. He looked a little worse for wear, but thankfully seems to be okay. Jabi Zurututa made some moves then to get himself into the business things as Angel Picaris had a big, big moment there. Zurututa, though, meant business. Picaris made his move, having hung back for a couple of laps, made his move and led out front. But Joel Esteban, Zurututa were part of the hard charger from a little bit deeper on the grid. Back into turn one, and it was Zurututa who had the advantage over Picaris. Then Piqueras again, just getting slit out by Jacob Rulston. Disaster for the Finn Network Mir team. Dabra Almanza was on the podium charge, but crashed out of contention on the last lap. Out front, though, crossing the line. Nobody could touch Zabi Zuratuta as he takes the win out of Jacob Rulston. And Angel Piqueras taking a podium to extend his championship advantage. So then, this is a big race in terms of the Junior GP Championship. 70 points remain on offer after this race. Angel Piqueras currently holds a 61-point advantage over Alvaro Carpe. So if he can outscore the Spaniard by 14 points, he will become the 2023 Junior GP World Champion. There's a crown to be decided here in Barcelona. Will it be decided today or will he have to wait until October for the next round of the FIM Junior GP World Championship in Aragon? I'm sure he's going to want to wrap it up today, but I'm sure the likes of Almanza, Rulston, Zuratuza, and of course his championship rivals Carpe are going to want to put themselves in the mix. So here is the man of the hour, Piqueras. Three wins today, coming at the Valencia doubleheader in race one in Jerez. Couple more podium 
four more podiums to add to his name. He's only been off the podium once at the Algarve, and that was in race one. He was very much part of that lead group battle, but a mistake on the final lap saw him go wide, and he actually recovered quite a few positions to take that P7 finish. But we wonder what is his mindset coming into this race. He needs to outscore Alvaro Carpe by 14 points to take the title. So a victory here could do the job for him as we see some motorcycling enthusiasts camped up and they hiding from the day. sun. They've been there all day. They're having a great day eating their local bocadillos. Yeah, well, what better way to spend a Sunday? Jacob Rolston then, two podiums to his name in 2023. And as you can see in the graphic, the race one Catalonia earlier this morning saw him take the second. Superb ride for him from the Australian in race one. Wasn't it, Tristan? Yeah, incredible ride from Rulston. Was uh, eager to try and taste victory, but he settled for a podium position. And like we said, was an incredible ride from the number 12. So expect him to be making moves in this race as well, starting from second place on the grid. He's got that inside line into turn one. And rounding out your front row is David Almanza on the number 22 machine. Yeah, a very, very talented rider for everyone to see, but he came 22nd, as you can see, in that race this morning. That was only after a last lap crash. He remounted, tried to get back going. Huge, huge talent. We've seen him on the Moto3 World Championship circuit. He's got a race win here to his name, podium as well last time in the Algarve. He'll be looking to bounce back in style. Yeah, definitely got his eyes, as many of these riders do, on the world stage, on the Grand Prix stage. Stood in for Joel Kelso at the CF Moto Proustal GP team for two races this year. And like I said, he's got his foot in the door for the world stage. Here's your race one winner, though, Xabi Suratuza. He heads the second row of the grid. Yeah, really coming into form over the last couple of rounds, isn't he? Two wins in the last two rounds, two wins in three races overall. First one coming in the Algarve in pretty special fashion, back at the grid, long lap penalty, and he came to win it at the final corner. This morning's race, a slightly more straightforward affair, shall we say, although there is certainly nothing more straightforward than Junior GP. Uh, he starts on the second row, will be looking to repeat his heroics from the morning. Then lining up beside him, we'll see him momentarily, it's the race one winner from Estoril, Nico Carraro. He hasn't quite scaled the heights. Here we see Nico. Hasn't quite scaled the heights of that opening round win. But this morning was actually a very encouraging performance from That's him. Good. Very much in the lead group for the majority of the race. Yeah, definitely looked very good. Very, very good in the, in the race this morning. Was very racy. Picked up uh, fourth place and uh, was looking very, very encouraging, was uh, pushing towards the podium and was, like we say, looking very, very strong. So he'll be looking to try and do that again here in race two and try and go one better and try and stand on that podium. Like we say, hasn't stood on the podium since Estoril, where he took that victory. Yeah, undoubtedly a huge talent. Just needs to find a little bit of consistency at this level before he should make the step up. Here is a rider who has ridden on the biggest stage. That's Elia Bartolini. He's launching from sixth on the grid in race two. Had a superb race one as well. You see he's finished 11th and you ask why is that superb? Well, he starts at the back of the grid. He was handed a penalty for race one. Came through the pack with some other offenders, shall we say, who incurred the wrath of the stewards at the back of the grid. And he came over the line in 11th place. Showing that pace, he should be able to run with the top guys here today. Yeah, solid ride from Aaliyah earlier on, so he'll be hoping to try and replicate that, but go this time from a little bit higher up on the grid. He'll have the number 58 of Luca Lanetta just behind him, though, his fellow Italian. Lanetta, who took pole position last time out in Portimao and has looked very, very strong in the far past few rounds, really coming to his own this year, was struggled a little bit last year. He showed flashes of brilliance, but this year really looking good on the number 58. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the key expression there, flashes of brilliance from Lynetta, and we saw it last time out today, uh, today this morning rather, he kind of sunk a little bit through the pack, we we're expecting better things from him, he'll hope to rectify that. Now, Alvaro Carpe, he's got Piqueras on his mind, seventh this morning, he got three consecutive podiums, that put him into the championship picture. He's going to, he had a hell of a ride this morning as well, and just a little bit unfortunate to fall down the lead group, 
but he will be eyeing up catching Angel Piqueras. He won't want to give the title to the Spaniard just yet. Number 94 then. Lacundo Yambias, all the way from Uruguay. Picked up a strong point scoring finish this morning. He, I think it was ninth place after, it was even eighth place due to the David Almanza crash, of course. But he was running at the back of that lead group for the majority of the race. We were wondering at the time, did he have the pace just to try something late on? In the end, it turns out he didn't. He was quite settled into a very, very encouraging top 10 finish. Well, he's got that experience under his belt now. He knows he can run with the front guys. He knows he can la he knows he can latch onto that group. So now he'll be looking to try and get in the mix and get involved and, and go one step better. Yeah, Asia talent team rider Danny Shariel here, 15th this morning. You can see his record. A couple of top 10s and three 15th places. So good point scoring. Um, good point scoring. Finish, surely, the ambition for the Malaysian. Yeah, started from the back of the grid in race one, following a penalty from the stewards after court riding slow in multiple sectors during the practice and qualifying action. Adrian Cruz says then just lining up beside him in P11, another big talent coming from the country of Spain. He had a super run this morning, just unfortunate to miss out on the podium in all honesty, came fifth. He's been on the podium in Jerez, couple DNFs at the Algarve double. Fifth place, Earlier this morning, he'll be aiming to go one better. You expect him to be very much part of that lead pack. Definitely one to watch. They've got Alonso Lopez in the box this weekend, helping them out. Of course, Moto2 runner over at the world stage. And they got bullied back a little bit, the Fenetwork boys, towards the end of the race in race one. But we'll be looking to try and cling on to that front group for the majority of the race this time around. Eddie O'Shea will be starting from 12th pace on the grid. He started from the back of the grid in race one. Another one that incurred the wrath of the stewards after court riding slow in a couple of sectors the Brit on the British talent team bike. Had a couple of seasons now in junior GP and is really looking to try and push on and get some results now. Yeah, very encouraging ride from Eddie O'Shea. Starting 12th on the grid, he'll be hoping that he can get a good start just to run with some of those bigger names within the category, but it's a year of development for young O'Shea. Just behind him, there's a couple of bigger names. Joel Esteban is among them. Tachikom Buasri, of course, a race winner here, and, uh, not necessarily here, a race winner in the Junior GP category from 2022. That came in Estoril. He was on the podium in the Algarve as well. Very unfortunate to miss out. He started at the back of the grid as well. Another rider to start at the back of the grid in race one. He's a little further up. Well, Joel Esteban is back there as well. Marcus Ruda is there. So there is some quality down the field. So then, your grid four race two here in Barcelona. It's Piqueras on pole, Rulston and Almanza make a competitive front row and it's an exciting second row. Zurituta, Carrado and Bartolini leading Luneta, Carpe and Yambias who are all in row three. Fronting the fourth row of the grid then is Daniel Sherrill on the junior talent team bike. He leads Cruthers and Eddie O'Shea who lines up in 12th. Esteban Buchanan and Morosi make up row five with Adetama, Ruda and Buazri on row six. Just behind them, it's Uriarty Hamada who crashed out and Rosenthaler who also crashed out on row seven from race one. Ramerstorfer, Uchiyumi and Torin Collins next row back in Plonk, uh, Gabi Plonk rather, Uezu and Tietzi on the ninth row and completing the grid is Gordon and Noah Detweiler. So away we go then for the warm-up lap for what should be another cracking race. The tunes have been blaring out all day. They've got the crowd excited. This really is what the fans have come to see. Some top, top quality action from the Junior GP category. So many stars of the future lining up on the grid here. So many stars of the present have come through this category and are shining on the World Championship stage. We've seen some big names around the paddock this weekend already. Pedro Costa, Moto2 Championship contender, came in to give a little handout and check out some of, this, some of these guys across the different categories. You already mentioned Alonso Lopez. He's in with the Fee Network guys. Giving them Ooh, a there's hand. a crash on the warm up we, lap there. Oh, who's that gone Can't down? Tell from here. Just in the corner of your screen, you can see somebody has gone down. Hopefully, now they'll be able to remount. They're immediately back up. We might be able to catch a replay of that. That's 
Cormac Buchanan, is it, on the number 14 machine? Yeah, the Kiwi rider has gone down. We're not quite sure what's happened to him. He's trying to get it started again. So if he can complete his warm-up lap, we'll see where he can take his place on the grid. We'll find out in a couple of moments. Bit of a disaster for him. Hopefully we'll be able to catch a replay because I didn't quite see that. Always an embarrassing one, crashing on the warm-up lap, but we'll have to see what happened. It's quite easy to get to get um, caught unsighted. A lot of the riders, some of them are slowing down, some of them are trying to warm their tyres up, get their heat into the brakes. You've really got, actually got to be very, very aware on these warm-up laps, and it's actually a lot easier to do than you would think. Yeah, we've seen it several times across all the categories. Even at the top, top level, we've seen guys crash on the warm-up laps. So hopefully all OK and he'll be able to take his place. Just keep an eye out for the number 14, who's supposed to start number four, uh, in 14th. So the young Kiwi rider are coming around now to find corners. Lining up towards the red flag. They're going to take their places on the grid. You can see the timing board in the background. PIQ, Piqueras, will launch from the head of the grid in P1. Back on pole position, the championship leader. He will be out to seal the title today. Can he do it? Here comes Buchanan. Let's just see where he's going to line up on the grid as he comes around the final corner. Looks nothing serious, just all a little bit superficial, maybe a little bit shaken, but he should be fine. Yeah, I'll have to put that to the back of his mind now because the lights are going to go out and it will be time to race. Will Piqueras seal the championship in this race? And there we can see Buchanan lining up his place on the grid. Good to see he no long-lasting effects. So the red flag is, green flag goes in the background, red flag goes, safety cars pull up, revs are beginning to go up, red lights are on, and they're about to go out. Who's going to get the best start? Great start from Picares, great start from Rolston. Almanza not the best, but he will slot into third position as we take the approach into turn one. Will Picares remain in front? Almanza takes a little wider line. He's going to try something up the inside of Rolston, and he makes a stick, but Picares takes the whole shot. Almanza is into second. Rolston is in third. He's going to hang it around the outside of Almanza there, just get back immediately. Not quite. Nico Carraro is slotted into fourth. Great start from Luca Lenetta. Much, much better this time. He is up into fifth. Javi Zuratuta, race one winner, just you see the number 85 hanging at the back of this. Picaris then now pushed back to third, got the, got the whole shot, got the perfect start off the line, but Almanza and Rulston aren't going to let him have it easy as Carraro has a little look at the inside of Picaris now, not able to make it stick at turn five. Almanza is now then that leads from Rulston. Pekeras, Carraro is the number 10 machine just behind him. That's the number 85, that is Xabi Zuratuza. He is your race one winner. Will he be able to do it again this race? 15, 14 and a half laps to go. So just on our timing screens, we see a yellow flag at turn four, and it looks like two riders have been caught up in a collision, and it's more bad news for the Licky Moly Husqvarna Intact GP Junior team. Ramersdorfer has name has tumbled to the very bottom of the Not time sheets with Uriarty. Uh, yep. There we can see it now, Leo Ramersdorfer, the young Austrian. <sighs> He's had a difficult, difficult day, a couple of long lap penalties in the opening race, really interrupting his rhythm. But back out front, it's David Almanza. Out to right the wrongs of race one he had in Barcelona. Ooh, Piqueras, Piqueras, Piqueras you're not allowed to go there, Angel. He'll have to keep an eye on those track limits. That was a little bit too obvious. Uh, Jacob Rulston then just ahead of Piqueras. While well, Zuratuta looks to be making a move just up the inside behind Piqueras. Is he going to get the line out? Well, he's Carraro on the right, Piqueras in the middle, and Zuratuta up the inside. And it looks like Zuratuta is going to slot into third place while Rulston takes the lead off Almanza coming through turn one. Flick it back left again through turn two. Rulston in control out front. Almanza, Zuratuta, no change in the top three or even top five. Picaris has been bunted back to fifth place. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Out of the seat, Adrian Cruz is just there. He has managed to keep it pinned. Alvaro Carpe just behind him. He's going to get the better of Cruz. And <laughs> Carpe is just behind his championship rival. He's going to set his sights on Angel Picaris. It's confirmed then no jump starts for any of the grids, so we don't have to keep an eye out for that one. Rulston then leading from Almanza, Zuratuza. Carraro looking menacing. Is he going to make a move up the inside of the number 85? Not this time around. Now, Bikeras has been pushed to the back of this group now. He just needs to make sure 
he finishes in front of his title rival, but it needs to be 14 points more than he needs to score. Couple of riders out on track limits there. Almanza taking a very wide line there, and Rulston has shot in front of him. Zurutitsa in third, and Carraro still in fourth, with Picaris in fifth. And there's a little bit of a gap after opening up between Picaris and Carpe, as the front five have settled into a pretty quick rhythm. They're in the 154s on the last lap. 154 flats, even when if we look back, they're a little bit slower, a couple tenths slower from Alvaro, Alvaro Carpe's group. Almanza then, is he going to get the hooks into Rulston here? Rulston still waiting for that breakthrough win. Was on the podium this morning, has been on the podium before in 2023, but he wants that win more than anything. Fastest man on circuit currently, Joel Esteban on the number seven. You can just see him in the back of the picture on the red machine, the number seven. He's a rider who did very well in ETC last year and really coming into his own this year in Junior GP as well. Some moves being made there between Zuratuza and Carraro. There's confirmation. Esteban, the only man currently in the 149s. And Esteban on the move is where he is, just up behind the number 58 of Luca Lunetta. Lunetta trying to latch himself onto the back of Carpe, who's trying to latch himself onto the back of Piqueras. Expect with the kilometre long straight here, the slipstream to come into full effect, and these groups will be bunched together once again. Yeah, a little bit of chopping and changing out front has just brought Alvaro Carpe into the coattails of Angel Piqueras. So we're looking at this lead group getting potentially even bigger. So as you mentioned, Esteban, the fastest rider on track and by considerable bit as well. He had a couple of tents in his pocket over anyone else on track in the last lap. So <laughs> watch out for the number seven. You'll just see him pop out here now at some stage. There he is, just in behind Luca Lanetta. Will, he's coming for this podium that he also Oh, craves. around the outside of Lanetta. Wow, brilliant. Too wide, though. too wide. Too wide. We were in awe. We thought it was too good to be through. True, and indeed it was. He went way too wide on Lanetta. It looked like he was hanging up a move on Alvaro Carpe, too. But out front, Rulston still in control. So very much like the opening race. Rulston and Almanza out front. Jabi Zuratutsa has pushed up earlier. He left it a little bit later in the last race before he started showing his real promise. Almanza then pulling the wider line. Zuratutsa goes with him. Rulston plowing a lone furrow on the left-hand side before cutting it across. Nico Carraro and Angel Picard is coming through the centre. Who's going to take the lead coming through turn one? It looks like Rutzen is in control here. Carraro and Picard is getting a little bit close there, and Carraro nearly runs into the back of Zura Tutsa. But again, it's as you were, Rutzen, Almanza, Zura Tutsa as they come round turn three. The freight train has bunched together then, just as we predicted it would. And now... Piqueras has Cruces, Carpe, Luneta, Esteban, all for company. So Austin. it's a field packed with quality from across the world, and many of those talented riders have come through the Asian Talent Cup. And as you can see on your screen, if you wish to participate from the continent of Asia or Oceania, then you can start applying now, and your road to MotoGP begins now. Back on track, though, it's Jacob Rolston still leading over Almanza. And Almanza, he, oh, he's going to have a little look up the inside here, is he? And That's he's been cut move. off. Yeah, it was very ambitious. You, I was just about to say, Almanza, I wonder what's going through his head. So much burgeoning potential, always part of the front three, front five, but just manages to crash out of contention as Adrian Cruces hangs around the outside of his teammates and pushes himself up into third place at the expense of Zabi Zuratutsa. But going back onto Almanza, you wonder what's running through his head after a last lap crash in race one. It's happened several times so far from promising positions. Is he just trying to find the limit too much? Is he pushing beyond his capabilities? Fine margins, fine margins in Junior GP, and it is. You can just see how close this racing is. Look at all these bikes, all in victory contention. This is incredible scenes here with 11 laps to go at this circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia, and all these riders are in victory contention. They span across the whole width of the circuit down into turn one, but it's Rulston that holds firm. There's some moves being made. Unfortunately, Marcus Uriarte has crashed out. Lunetta's forced to go through the long lap loop. He must have been pushed wide or made a mistake or something there. So he's going to have to make sure there was another rider in there who went there with him. They'll have to make sure they lose enough time. 
they don't incur the wrath of the stewards, but I'm pretty sure they, you can see Luletta there. Here comes Lester, the man into third place. Here comes the charge the from a recent race winner at the Algarve. And it's a pretty familiar sight seeing him with Almanza and Piqueras. It's just dropped down a little bit, but Esteban loves a charge from deep on the grid. But yet, it's still Jacob Rulston and David Almanza who are taking control of this race at 1 and 2. That hasn't changed for quite a while. But just behind them, this lead group is just getting bigger and bigger. We saw it in race one. Rulston does like to lead, and Almanza likes to be at the front of the group as well. Rulston. Don't know the exact figures, but probably led more laps than any in race one. Now, and he's defending that first place very well as his teammate tries that round the outside move once again. Didn't learn that from the first time, though, that it doesn't work. And he's dropped back a few positions now. Just slots himself underneath Alvaro Carpe, the number 83. Does manage to hold that position then. And Rulston looking confident out the front. He looked a little bit disappointed with P2, it has to be said, when he was... Azura Tuza running onto the green, what was one to keep an eye out, but looked a little bit disappointed with P2, wants that win. Yeah, absolutely, and the same could be said for Piqueras, both of those riders were targeting that win. Piqueras, obviously, for different reasons in terms of the championship race, but Rolston wants that breakthrough win. Oh, he is craving for oh so much, and well, he's finally been punted back here as the Finn Network Mirror team come through and do a 1-2 on him, and Almanza fires into the front, but Adrian Cruz is just behind. Let's see if Rulston has anything in his locker while well, Alvaro Carpe shoots up into fourth position. Crucially, second in the championship, Carpe. Angel Piqueras is currently running in ninth place, so that would mean the championship battle continues over to Aragon, but a long, long way to go yet in this race, and any one of these riders from, what is it, a fifth group of 15 out front? Probably because I'm looking at Nico Carraro's name all the way back in 15th place. He has been bossed back into the group, having run with the front riders over the first couple of laps. But a long way to go, yes, as we look at Zuratutsa just in behind Morosi, Esteban following Zuratutsa in race one winner. Great ride here from Arby Abid, Aditama, the Indonesian. That will be a popular one over the island of Indonesia. Rider coming through that ATC program and doing quite well here in Junior GP. But out front again, so it's the Fee Network Mir duo of Almanza, the 22, and Adrian Cruces, the number 11 in one and two. Jacob Rudolston just slotted in behind them. Not a whole lot of chopping and changing as of yet out front. But we are looking at a charge here from the number 19 of Morosi, the Eagle One team. You can see him there, predominantly black livery with blue and orange on it as we keep eyes on the number eight of Eddie O'Shea, who is having a fine ride for himself just ahead of Adi Tama. And Eddie O'Shea, this is very encouraging stuff from the young Brighton. Put in a very encouraging run from the back of the grid to get himself into P12 in race one. So he's showing some excellent pace here in Barcelona. Down into turn one, Joel Esteban swings it out very wide. Eddie O'Shea takes the most innermost line, but it's Xabi Zuratutsa. He loves that move up the inside of turn one, who leads Adrian Cruces. And is that Morosi, who I see has gone into third position. Cruces trying to hang it on the outside of the race one winner, Zuratutsa. But Zuratutsa has the answer for him. So it's Zuratutsa, Cruces, Morosi. Just behind them, it's still chopping and changing. Alvaro Carpe looking to get a move on David Almanza. Eddie O'Shea still in the thick of that battle, as is Joel Esteban. So it's all happening here in Circuit de Catalunya, Barcelona. So Ratuza then hits the front. Of course, your race one winner. And he's going to be looking to capitalize on this advantage he's got now in this race. He's pulled out a couple of bike lengths, of course, with that kilometer long straight, as we've seen so many times. He will be reeled back into the group by the Fenetwork boys. Almanza and Cruces won't let him escape. Esteban now, after dropping back through the order, has now climbed his way back up into fourth position. And Eddie O'Shea is on a charge now. He's up into sixth position. He's going to be looking for a return to the podium. It's been a while for the Brit as they all change positions down into the hard breaking turn 10. A lot of the time on the side of the tyre. Esteban likes that wide line, doesn't he? But he keeps losing positions when he does it. And now he's falling into the clutches of O'Shea. How are the positions going to change when they come along the front straight? One more time down into the final corner. For one more time, it'll be eight laps remaining when they come and cross the line. 
I tell you what, for all the chopping and changing in that lead group, Eddie O'Shea is the fastest rider on the last lap out there. He put in a 150, a little bit slower this time, seven tenths slower, in fact, but still among the quickest riders. With a couple of riders, Almanza oh, and look at ahead of him. Esteban trying to go around the outside, and O'Shea up into second place now as well. Sorry to cut in there, Chris. No worries. Much more interesting on track footage happening than a roundup of the times but Eddie O'Shea is on fire here so far is he going to take the lead here inside Cruces absolutely is this would be a monumental win for the young Bright Brighton and it was still a long way to go and Morosi hot on his heels as well this is a new look podium if that were to stick like that but Almanza has fought back to take second place but brilliant brilliant stuff from Eddie O'Shea today Never tasted victory in junior GP category. Tasted plenty of victory back in the British Talent Cup when he was a front runner over in that category. Was promoted up into the British Talent team as a part of Dorna's Road to Moto GP, a scheme that's working incredibly well with the Asia Talent Cup and the Asia Talent team, and a very similar scheme working for the Brits as well. And Dorna doing so much for the youth, trying to get different nationalities over in the World Championship stage. And it's paying dividends here with Eddie O'Shea as he puts himself towards the front of this race. Loses the lead now, though, to... And that's Almanza, who slotted himself up the inside. And we can see the live championship picture. It would be Zuru Tutsa who would jump into second place. Picaris still with 51-point advantage. We see a yellow flag popping up on our timing screens at turn 12. We'll bring you more information on that as we have it. But it was just over a couple of corners ago, a couple of riders running onto the green. And I've seen some track limits warnings handed out. Angel Picaris has been on, has been culpable. Oh, culpa on the grass for bass. O'Shea! And that's lost the drive. Almansa fires into the lead. Oh, oh the Asia Talent team bikes down. Must be one that's of the That's Tachikorn Buasri has gone down at turn 12. Oof. Eddie O'Shea bunting into Almansa. Is that Jacob Rolson who's out? It's Joel Esteban out front, and he was out of the seat there momentarily. <laughs> Arby Adi Tama has moved up into second position. Ooh, and Eddie O'Shea, not we're O'Shea. not sure on that. We'll double check that, but that doesn't look good. Hopefully, it's all precaution and he's just a little bit winded. But Zurutut in second place behind Morosi. Adi Tama having a sensational ride, the Indonesian, and he's in third place. But guarantee that's all going to change. Morosi. Leading Zura Tutsa, Aditama, Alvaro Carpe is in there too. So is Jacob Brunson, Joel Esteban, David Almanza. It's a group packed with quality. And as you can see, Eddie O'Shea is still running there. He's very much showing some excellent pace here. But he's coming up against the top guys, sandwiched in between Almanza and Piqueras on track. So he's got some good, good pedigree either side of him. Who wouldn't want to be betting money on this race? Any of these riders could, could win it. O'Shea's gone from leading the race to being battered down the order, down into seventh place, and these positions keep chopping and changing. Pick a name out of a hat, like we say, would not want to bet on this one. Aditama leads now. Yeah, it's such a large lead group as well. There's 15 yeah. to 16 riders here, and any of them can just find a little bit of pace, like we've seen Arby Aditama has come from nowhere deep down on the grid and was just part of this group and now he's out front. Absolutely sensational stuff. The same could be said for Eddie O'Shea, a launch from 12th, having a super ride and he's part of this victory conversation. Aditama's current best race classification has been ninth and he scored that back at Jerez and hasn't finished inside the top 10 since. O'Shea now looking menacing, but it's Esteban that makes his way to oh, the front. Big oh, crash. Is that Morosi who's gone. Oh, yeah, I think it is. Think yeah. Morosi in the is. number 19. Ah, oh, devastating blow for Morosi. He was in such fine form here today. Very much part of that podium battle. I'm not 100% what, sure who he collided with or if he collided. Let's take a look. The number 19, far rise into the Whoa. side of Arby Aditama. It can happen. It happens when it's all bunched up like that. Space is at a premium. Ooh, he got a little bit, Aditama had a bit of a nudge there from Carpe, which pushed him a little bit wide, which pushed him, unfortunately, into Morosi. Racing incident, these things happen. All the riders competing for the same piece of tarmac, and unfortunately, it's ended in the gravel trap for Morosi. You can see Morosi not, not exactly happy, pleased, but 
there will be more days for Morosi. He'll take a lot of encouragement from the performance today. As we look, Joel Esteban out front. Eddie O'Shea not giving up the ghost yet of his podium. He might have run it a little bit wide there onto the green, but Eddie O'Shea very much in contention here as David Almanza comes charging through. And uh oh, look out behind you, fellas. Angel Picaras is beginning to make some moves on the front places. And he's music ahead once again. of Alvaro Carpe. So that's big in the championship picture, but as things stand, it won't be enough for him to take home the title today. O'Shea then doing very, very well out the front of this race, but he's got the rookie Joel Esteban, the rookie sensation of Joel Esteban to fend with still as they come across the line. Five laps remaining of this circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia. And the positions, I'm sure, will change as they go down into turn one. Again, O'Shea tries to take the defensive line and makes contact with Almanza there as he swoops back across the tarmac, across the track. And Almanza now heads to the front, and O'Shea's gone from the lead down. He's been battered right down the order there. Yeah, that can happen in this class with so much slipstream into effect. It's all bunched up. We saw it last time with Morosi. Space is at a premium. And if you can't find us, Alonso Lopez watching nervously on, but if you can't find space coming through there, you could be in trouble, and we've just seen that with Eddie O'Shea. No problem, though, for David Almanza, who is continuing to put in an exhibition out front. And just as I say that, I'm so sorry, I gave you the commentator's curse. He's been bunted down to P3, P4 even, as Jacob Rolson, Angel Picard, and Alvaro Carpe make their way through. And that's the number 58 in the background of Luca Lenetta. He's found some pace. He's been part of the back. He was at the back of this large lead group. He's now at the front. It is all happening and changing. Turn one is pivotal. If this lead group stays like this going on to the final couple of laps, anyone could win it. Anyone could win it coming into turn one because the slipstream is so immense down there. Almanza, Rulston has done excellent jobs defending in at times, but you were seeing the likes of Lunessa, Arby Aditama had a run at it, Eddie O'Shea has had a run at it, and there's a lot of quality. Arby Aditama is now back in 12th position. So looking at Luca Lenetta here, he's on for another podium, is he? He's going to target one, but David Almanza is in front of him, behind Alvaro Carpe in P3, Angel Picares in second, and Jacob Rulston, who is leading this race two here in Barcelona. Let's see if Piqueras can make a move down into turn one. He's eager to clinch the championship honours in this race. Will he be able to do it? He's going to have to win if he wants it. Carpe, though, in front of him, and he needs to finish in front of Carpe to be able to win the championship. Yeah, it's Carpe, Piqueras then, one, two. I was just watching a little further down the grid to see if there are any chargers coming through. The number 69 of Marcus Ruda is among them but he didn't quite make a stick coming through the opening couple of corners, but Jacob Rulson having led only a couple well, of corners ago there. is way back. It is very tight. It's elbows out racing. It's hard racing, but it's fair racing. Yep. Oh, oh the fell. Oh, is that Rulston who's gone? No. That, no, I think that's Nico Carraro, the Nico number 10, Carraro, that's gone down. Disaster. Unfortunate for the Italian, finishes his weekend in the gravel trap, not the end to, the weekend, to his weekend that he would have wanted. O'Shea now looking strong in fifth in this battle. There he is, really unfortunate. He's going to get restarted, and Rigor is going to give it a go anyway. Yeah, with just over three laps to go, it's a big ask to go from the back of the pack. Disaster for the number 10 as Alvaro Carpe runs out onto the green there. These guys really need to be careful coming around those corners. That's a few times it's happened. But Nico Carraro, he was showing such good pace this weekend. He's got a P4 as best since the season opener, and he was very much among the pack here. So disappointment for him but out front then it's Alvaro Carpe David Almanza has not left the top three positions in I don't know how long while well, Angel Piqueras is just hanging into P3 track limits warning I think for Alvaro Carpe I did notice him going wide coming through one of the turns and running onto the green so now he needs to keep it pinned at all times otherwise he's off through the long lap penalty and that will be disastrous to his podium hopes and perhaps even title ambitions but David Almanza leading here Aldi O'Shea on the far left Picaris taking the widest line, but it's Almanza again who's done brilliantly. Picaris into second. Eddie O'Shea from that inside line slots into third position. 
and it's all changed once again. Joel Esteban is up there. Alvaro Carpe just in front of the Spaniard. Carpe in fourth position. Zurich to the race one winner there. You can see the number 85 is in sixth. Just behind them, I'm looking for some of the bigger names like Jacob Rulston. He's there in eighth position behind Luca Lanetta. Oh, Manzalese then Carpe makes his way back up into a podium position ahead of Eddie O'Shea. O'Shea was saying back at Portimao that he, feel like, he feels like he's made a big step on board his Honda Moto3 machine and clearly whatever it was, whatever he's found with him and his team, it's working. The junior talent team helping the British rider as well as some of the Asian talent team riders as well. Now David Almanza looks comfortable at the front of this race but still two and a half laps remaining and it's becoming towards crunch time. Ruda. Ruda out on the green, a few of the riders venturing out out of track limits there, so it's going to be one to try and keep an eye on. Track limits warning for Aditama. Harvey Aditama as well. But it's all hotting up at the front of this race here. They're coming through the final sector once again, and Esteban, again with that wide sweeping line, he likes those lines. Sometimes loses him a few positions though. There is Ruda, who had, who we saw venture out onto the track out of uh, out of track bound. Sorry. Yeah, that's Utiumi at the very back of this grid, the number 91. He's following Elia Pautolini from the Yambias. They're at the very back. Will they have any say in what's going on? I think they're a little bit too far. With just two laps to go, so in race two here in the Junior GP World Championship from Barcelona. And how many wide are we going in here? Five, six riders. But it's Joel Esteban who takes the lead going into turn one, followed by Zura Tutsa. And, uh, well, not anymore. It looks like Rolston has got the oh, inside, and we've lost the rider. Seven has gone down. Oh, That's disaster! Johnny Shariel is gone. Esteban, though, leading out front. And Karras has begun to make another move. He's oh, in, in second place. Arbiadi Tamas into oh, third. Oh, he's taken O'Shea out, and oh, a few other other riders. Major, major, major Carpe has gone down as well. Oh, multi-rider incident there. Let's hope they are all okay because they've gone into one another there. That Rulston, yeah, Four Rulston. riders, a oh, disaster for a number of riders. We, I'm not quite sure who are all mixed up in that, but I think Zura Tutsa was in there. Eddie O'Shea looks to have been caught up in us as well. This is played into the hands of Angel Piqueras now, who has taken the lead of Have we this lost race. Alvaro Carpe as well? So this could yes, be the Carpe. title. This could be the title for Angel Piqueras. He just needs to outscore. Alvaro Carpe by 11 points in this race, and he it's very much 25. is on for 25 here. The title could be going the way of Angel Piqueras. Adrian Cruz has fires it up the inside. Well, that is a huge, huge crash. We're going to get a replay of it shortly, surely, and we can tell you more detail exactly what happened. But absolute disaster. Eddie O'Shea, Zuna Tutsa, Rulston, all gone as Shariel crashed out moments before. We're waiting for confirmation on Carpe. Oh, so as well went down. So oh, quite a few riders there. Absolute disaster for Piqueras. Let's have a look what happened here. So you could see Almanza goes swooping. Went to the bumps inside. Bumps into O'Shea. Yeah. O'Shea bumps into Rolston. And it's just Rolston. like Skittles they've gone down. Carpe flying out to the left. And that is all played out. It's not the way you want to see it. But it's Angel Piqueras now leading. 25 points on offer. He only needs 11. He is on for the title here in Barcelona. Picaras leads then from Aditama and Almanza. Almanza's been in there for the whole race long. And it looks as if Picaras could very well be picking up the championship this weekend. He's already a Red Bull Rookies champion. Will he be an FIM Junior GP champion? Yellow flags out there, but they're making moves there. anyway. There was some passing there, Definitely. that might come back. I misspoke, by the way. It's actually 14 points which Piqueras needs. Okay. So a podium finish podium will finish. deliver him the title. And he's very much on for that. Arbi Aditama out front. David Almanza, can he stay on track on this last lap? He's slotted into second. Adrian Cruz is just behind him. But Angel Piqueras has made a move. Almanza firing it back up the inside now. And he, that might just be the last thing he wants. He won't want to battle and get, risk getting caught up in any incident, but we're on the last lap. Arby Aditama on for a big, big win here, but a long way to go yet. Is anyone going to try and move up the inside? You bet oh, you. Oh, contact there. Contact and Picaris has been bunted down. Luneta capitalizes. Luca Luneta has pulled off a ridiculous move on that left hand. He's taken three for one. He's punted. 
He's put in Angel Picares down the pack. Adrian Cruces has gone down the pack. We have the yellow flags at turn five. That won't affect these guys. They're gone past that point. But now Picares. Yeah, Ambias is out with the green. Picares has now been pushed all the way back, and the title is slipping away from him. So he will now win the title, but Almanza is going toe to toe. Oh, Almanza has done it on the line. Almanza has done it on the line. He's denied Adi Tama by five thousandths of a second. Oh, that is a stunning last sector. David Almanza has taken the win. Arby Adi Tama, a brilliant podium. And Luca Lunera with a move for the ages up the inside, a three for one. Angel Picares crosses the line sixth. It looks like he was going to get a podium and the title. But in the end, he's come behind Adrian Cruces and Joel Esteban. Esteban in fourth, Cruces in fifth, Picares sixth. Facundo Yambias, brilliant results, top seven for him. Marcus Ruda, Elia Bartolini, and Uchiyumi in the top 10. That was a breathless last sector. The title was there for Piqueras. The victory was there for Ardi, Arbi Aditama. In the end, neither one was delivered to either rider. It's David Almanza who steals it on the line in sensational fashion. A brilliant, brilliant junior GP race, Tristan. What an end to a thrilling race here at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya. Um, Almanza, Incredible, incredible victory was there right until the chequered flag was keeping himself in contention. Aditama will be disappointed he didn't get the victory, but still a career first podium in Junior GP for Aditama. So he's going to be happy with that one as he takes second place. Lunetta capitalised so, so well, saw his opportunity, saw the other riders bump, bashing bars, running wide. And he took the opportunity, held that inside line and a perfect, perfect podium for the number 58. Yeah, super stuff all round. Uchiyumi as well, picking up a brilliant top 10 result. Popping a wheelie as we watch RB Adita. Here we have the, so, the Australia Galicia riders, Yambias and Picaris, just stopping on track, having a little look around, a little conversation. Not sure what the topic of the discussion is. Probably that breathless last sector that just changed the whole landscape of the championship picture. One of the moves of the weekend, even moves of the year, came from this rider, Luca Lanetta, out of nowhere, took a three for one to take third position and bunt Angel Picaris all the way back down the pack. That happened at turn 10. Absolute brilliant drama all the way through. Of course, there was the last lap crash, which, which wiped out a couple of other contenders. We'll see a replay of that shortly. But for now, the celebrations are all about this guy, David Almansa. Second win of the year for Almansa. Emotional victory, second of the year. is probably a little too late for a championship charge. But what a talent this young Spaniard is of the Fee Network Mirror Team. Let's listen to some of these celebrations. Shouts of vamos all around. Let's go indeed. Almanza just having a quick chat with some of the team bosses there as they look to dissect what really, really was a thrilling race two here in Barcelona. Arby Aditama. First podium in the class. Absolutely superb ride as the Dunlap pass is thrown on top of him. Just a reflection of the race. Congratulations for reaching in for him. And just in the background there, Luca Lanetta. You can look at him. P3 once again. And an absolutely super ride. That's his third podium of the year. After a disappointing race one, what a way to bounce back. And what a way to do it. That stunning last lap. Three and one overtake turn 10.
So huge congratulations all around to the three riders who stand on the podium here in Barcelona. Race two, round five, and this is the story of the race. Joel Esteban leading Jacob Rulston, but then we lost one of the riders. That was Danny Sharil, who crashed out moments later. Huge, huge crash here. Eddie O'Shea, Zuru Tutsa, part of it. Alvaro Carpe, crucially, second in the, was second in the championship. All wiped out. That meant Angel Pekeris just had to finish on the podium to take the win. But Luca Linetta's brilliant move at the end denied him. And Almanza, look how close that is. Photo finish. My, oh my. You could throw a blanket over the two of them. That is just a hair's breadth between them. That's the run to the line. That's the slipstream effect. And that's why riders want it so much. Second win of the day, or of the year, I should say, goes to David Almanza. Race two here at Barcelona. Super, super stuff. We'll hear from him momentarily. He'll be with our... Reporter down in Parc Ferme, which is Tristan, just getting some last congratulations and last celebrations in before talking to Tristan down below. Another breathless race from the Junior GP category, race two in Barcelona. One that will live long in the memory and we will momentarily hear from the rider who topped, who came out on top by just two thousandths, excuse me, five thousandths of a second. Luca Lanetta, not far behind, seven hundredths behind, just under eight hundredths off second place. So very, very close, top three. Joel Esteban came home fourth, Adrian Cruz is in fifth. Championship leader Angel Picaris is now on the tip of glory. Couldn't quite seal it today, but he takes home. A strong point scoring finish. Oh, now something has happened here. We will see it. It seems there might have been a change. Oh, it's all changed. There's drama after the checkered flag here. Arby Adi Tama has been awarded the win. We'll have clarification for you soon. There was a delay between our interviews, so we were wondering what was happening. David Almanza, he must have run onto the green on the last lap. But it's Arby Aditama takes a historic first race win. The Indonesian rider. Wow. Well, it looked like Elmanta had stolen it. So here we go. Riders number 22 and 58. Oh, disappointment for Luca Lanetta as well. They overtook. We saw it happen on the live that there was a crash and overtaking under the yellow flags. Alonso Lopez there in the background doesn't look best pleased. So as a result, we have a new standings and a new podium. Arby Adi Tama is the leader. He is the race winner. Brilliant. David Almanza drops to second position. And Joel Esteban is promoted on to the podium at the expense. You can see it there, the Italian Luca Lenetta. Absolutely got it. Let's not take away from what was a brilliant last lap move from the number 58. So this should be a replay of the incident. We'll see some riders in the yellow flag, clear as day. You can see Lunetta moving into fourth position and Almanza had made his move at that stage. Yellow flags were there. Marshals were in the gravel. It's clear as day. That You might feel it's harsh, but it is the rules. But now here is Arby Aditama with Tristan. Let's get his thoughts. Ari Aditama, an incredible victory. Put yourself in the perfect position on that last lap. Just talk us through what happened. Yeah, incredible race for me. It's so hot. It's well hot in here. Thank you to all of my team, Junior Talent Team and Astra Honda Racing Team and all of my sponsors. Thank you to all my family, my friends, my mom who always support me. Incredible feelings. I cannot describe it. Sorry. Thank you so much. And in your native language? Yeah, the race kali ini sangat panas. Race yang begitu berat bagi saya. Tapi saya berterima kasih kepada uh, Junior Talent Team dan Astra Honda Racing Team uh, serta para sponsor yang telah support kami, teman-teman uh, saya, uh, keluarga saya dan semuanya yang telah mendukung saya. Yang terima kasih. Congratulations. Congrat. Thank you so much. A very happy young Indonesian and this is how he did it. Angel Pikeris started on pole. Great start from Jacob Rolston though, but it was Pikeris who took the whole shot going in to turn one. David Almanza didn't have the good of start as Rulson, but had the run into the line to sit into P2. Rulson, the Australian rider, taking third, battling back. 
Almanza eventually shot into the front. Picaris was dropped back down to third position at the expense of Rulston, who was happy to sit into second place. Disappointment for Leo Rammerstor for a difficult day for him as he crashed out very early on. While back out front, Morosi was having a hell of a ride. And as was Arby Aditama coming from deep on the grid. Arby Aditama taking the lead here ahead of Morosi with Zurututsa in third. Seven riders abreast here. Joel Esteban, for the most right, takes the lead. But this was a crash. Morosi's great ride came to an end at turn one after collision with another rider. Alvaro Carpe then led for a while ahead of championship rival Angel Picaris. Zurututsa sat in the third position. And then another faller in the background. That was Nico Carraro. Disappointed. He was having a good day here at Barcelona. Disappointing way for him to end it. Almanza back out in front there. Joel Esteban trying to move up the inside of Eddie O'Shea there. David Almanza though going wide. Back at the front. Esteban leading ahead of Rolston. Danny Sharil crashing out. Huge disappointment for him. And then the pivotal moment of the race. Carpe bunted out. Zurututsa taken out, Rolston taken out, as was Eddie O'Shea. Huge, huge moment. That meant Angel Picaris just needed a podium finish. He was running among the top two, but this was the pivotal moment. David Almanza, Luca Lanetta, both med moves under yellow flags. So that cost them a place, a one place grid, uh, one place position penalty at the end. And despite all the late round, brilliant move from Luca Lanetta to get himself in third position. Almanza, second position behind Arby Aditama, got into the slipstream and did him on the line by 5,000 seconds. But because he overtook on yellow flags, the win was awarded to Fadila Arby Aditama. Time for the podium, though. Norman, Norman Rang. So we've got the team representative coming out. Astro Honda Racing Team representative. Proud moment for his team and rider. Next out, Joel Esteban. Crossed the line in fourth, but due to Luca Lanetta uh, overtaking rather under yellow flags, the Italian was penalized, which means Esteban is back on the podium. Almanza. Following up his win, race two in the Algarve with a race two podium here. Disappointment somewhat then for David Almanza. He crashed out in race one, thought he had taken the win here in race two by five thousandths of a second. But that yellow flag infringement demoted him a place. And look at this, Arby Aditama. The Indonesian rider for the first time on the top step of the podium in Junior GP, a moment he will never forget. Vice President of the FIM Europe then, Jean-Marc Desnus, out to award the trophy to the team representative from Honda Racing Team. Joel Esteban picking up his third prize of the season, following on from one other podium and one race win. Joseph Luis Santa Maria, managing director of the circuit here, hands out a pretty good consolation prize. You can see he's still pretty happy with his P2 finish, David Almanza. Back on the podium, a huge talent and surely a star of the future. And then Moto3 World Championship star Ayumu Sasaki hands out the winning trophy to Arby Aditama. Well, he picks up an extra prize as well, the Fee Fine Network free Wi-Fi. And now we will listen to the Indonesian national anthem.
Okay, congratulations. A very proud moment in motorcycle sports for Indonesia as Indonesia Raya, the national anthem of the island nation, rings out across Barcelona with such a growing popularity of motorcycling, of motorcycle racing within the country. Of course, MotoGP is back visiting there. We expect to see many more Indonesian riders come through the Asia Talent Cup and then through the Junior GP series and perhaps even onto the World Championship stage in the future. So then, do you remember ringing out across circuit the Barcelona Catalunya? I'm sure Fadila Harvey Haditama will never forget. He takes the win ahead of David Almanza. Joel Esteban promoted at the expense of Luca Laneta, who comes fourth. Adrian Cruz says fifth. Piquera sixth, so his title waste goes on and rolls into Aragon in a couple months' time. Marcus Ruda, Facundo Yambias, and Elia Bartolini all scoring some decent point scoring finishes inside the top ten. Rounding out the top ten is Japanese rider Kotaro. Uchiyumi, who didn't finish a million miles away from the front guys. Cormac Buchanan had that warm-up crash, but managed to recover from P11. Noah Detweiler, Jacob Rosenthaler, Alex Gordon and Cesare Tietzi round out your point scoring finishers. Looking through the rest of the finishers, Torin Collins came 18th, he was the last of them, and then crashes for Uriarte Uetsu, Carpe Zuratutsa, Moshe, Wilson, Shari, I mean, they don't pick up any points when there are one or two more in there. Nico Carraro, Alessandro Morosi, Tachikombu Asri, and Leo Ramestorfer. So leaving Barcelona, this is the state of play in the championship, and Angel Picares just needs seven points from the remaining three rounds. To, well, to outscore Joel Esteban by seven points in the remaining three rounds. He's 68 point advantage. Esteban second at the expense of Carpe. Rudson fourth, Laneta fifth, Zuratutsa sixth, Almanza seventh, Carraro, Cruces eight and ninth, Buathri in the top ten, Buchanan, Eddie O'Shea, Elio Bartolini, following Buathri, Jacob Rosenthaler, Al Alessandro Mor Morosi didn't pick up any points. Arby Aditama, 25 points today, sees him jump up to 16 in the standings ahead of Marcus Ruda and a whole host of regular point scorers such as Yambia Stettweiler, Crash for Sharils, Uriarty didn't see him pick up any points. Top 10 for Uchiumi sees him move up the standings ahead of Azawa and Leo Ramersdorfer. Alex Gordon has two points to his name. And then one point each for Tietzi and Collins. So it was drama to the wire and beyond here in Junior GP Race 2 of Barcelona. But at the end of the day, it's Fadila Harvey Aditama who takes the win. Category here at the circuit, the Barcelona Catalunya is going to be sorry, Moto 2 is going to be underway. The circuit built in 1991, which coincided with the Barcelona hosting the Olympic Games in 1992. 4.7 kilometers is the circuit, that's just under three miles. 14 turns around this beautiful circuit, eight to the right, six to the left and a circuit that has played host to plenty of historic action in motorsports, hosted Formula One, MotoGP, and many other well-established motorsport categories. But this weekend, it is hosting the FIM Junior GP World Championships. Up first for us, it's gonna be the Moto2 European Championship. 
which is the penultimate race of the day with stock six coming a little bit later on this category. Unfortunately, championship leader is going to be out of this one. Senna Aegis came into the weekend with a hefty lead and won't be riding this weekend after high siding out of the first corner during FP1. He only managed two laps, but unfortunately, despite strong pace on the Thursday leading up, had an injury to his hand and won't be racing this weekend. Xavi Cardelus won the first race and that was his first victory. And this is how it happened. Cardelus started from pole position, but he got swallowed up into turn one. It was a good start from Nico Antonelli, but it was Alberto Sura that was leading heading into the first corner and the number 31 of Roberto Garcia that took the whole shot. Garcia was trying to defend from Sura, but Sura quickly took the lead down into turn 10 on the Bosco Scuro machine. The number 67 then was pushed wide by Garcia and the battle continued between those two pretty much all race long. This move came from Xavi Cardelus where he did two in one down into the first corner. A beautiful move from the Andorran and then from then on he was almost untouchable. Unai Oradre then had flashes of pace, an incredible pace on the number 10 machine and caught up to the leading group and got himself well within the mix, making himself well known and put himself in at 2p2 halfway through the race. The battle raged on as the, as the laps ticked away. Roberto Garcia made this harsh move on the number 10 Unai Oradre down into turn one. Oradre bit back though and sat up the number 31 who picked up his first podium last time out in Portimao. Sura, though, was looking strong. Unfortunately, Nico Antonelli from the front row crashed out. And then this left the number 18 and the number 10 to battle it out. Tapia was another one that went down. And he ended his grace in the gravel trap. Cardelus and Oradre pulled away from Sura and Garcia. Oradre tried to make this move on the final lap, but Cardelus held it tight and stuck it back up the inside of the number 10 to take victory and he held strong for the rest of the lap. He did an incredible defensive race and unfortunately there was no way through for Oradre. But Cardelus crossed the line to take his first victory in the European Moto2 Championship and massively clinging the gap onto Senna Aegis who was out of this weekend's contention. Delight in the promo racing squad as they took victory ahead of Oradre who took his first podium in Moto2. And Alberto Sura picking up another podium on his 2023 Moto2 European Championship campaign. Will Xavi Cardelus be able to do it again here in race two? He's going to have the likes of Oradre, possibly Antonelli, Garcia and Alberto Sura all in the mix, trying to get themselves ahead of Xavi Cardelus. If he wins this one, there'll be 11 points between him and Senna Aegis, who went into this race with a 61 point lead but now currently sat sidelined watching from the pit garage after that crash he had in FP1. So he needed 75 point lead. He could very well have won it here this weekend, but it's not going to be. He will be back out at Aragon in October. Here's your man on pole though, qualified on pole by half a second. One race one. Will he be able to take victory in race two? He's had a credible run of form, third, second and first in the last three races. And he's going to be looking to pick up another 25 points and capitalise on the injured Senna Aegis. Myself, Tristan Finocchiaro and Chris Jordan will be bringing you through all the action. Looking forward to this one, Chris. Yeah, should be another cracker. If it's anything like race one, a real thriller and Cardaloos getting that breakthrough win. Long awaited in this class but finally he managed to get the, that breakthrough win, the Andorran rider. And what a performance it was. He had pressure coming all over the back of his rear tyre from Unai Oradre, but he held on, held his nerve, and chatting to him after the race, he was just only disappointed not to do it with Senna Aegis on track. So if he gets the win here, he's ready to take on Aegis in Aragon next time out. Nico Antonelli then, well, the less said about his race one, I think the better. Very, very disappointing. Second on the grid, but very quickly sunk to ninth and tenth as the laps clocked off. And as you can see there, 
didn't even record the finish as he crashed out of the event. Antonelli's going to have to put that to the back of his mind now and focus on race two. He's starting from the front row in second place. He's got that inside line down into turn one, so he'll have to, like we say, put that dreadful first race to the back of his mind. Unai Aradre, though, had an incredible first race, picked up his first podium in the championship and was looking incredibly racing on the number 10 machine. He starts from third place on the outside of the front row. There we go, first time he'd finished inside the top seven and he picked up second place and was very, very close to victory and he's going to be looking to try and go ball one better in this one and take 25 points. You can see the confidence in his eyes. You could see he's eyeing, eyeing it up. But he'll have to try and get the better of Cardaloos. Cardaloos pretty much had it covered, I think it was safe to say, in race one. Yeah, it wasn't easy for him, though, mind. Not at all. Or rather, he'll take a lot of confidence from that performance. He finally turned at one lap pace and translated it into race pace. So he'll be hoping for more of the same. Alberto Sura then back on the podium in race one. He's been very impressive over the last couple of weeks. You can see there picked up a P2 in the Algarve. Second only to Super Senna Aegis that day and even challenged the Australian for the victory before he had to serve a long lap penalty, which dropped him back into fifth but then took second place overall. This morning, he got the better of Roberto Garcia then for that final podium place. And this is Garcia then. Breakthrough podium in the Algarve, constantly running with the top five. And this morning, running with the top five again. But you can see, just missed out on that podium place. P4's joint second best performance of the year. Just missed out to Alberto Sura, so he'll be have a little bit of revenge on his mind. Absolutely. He picked up, like we say, his first podium back in Portimao and was looking pretty strong for it in race one, but both him and Sura just dropped off in terms of pace towards the end of the race, so they'll be hoping they can stay on to the likes of Aradre and Cardaloos during this one. Cardaloos will be looking for a better start as well in this one as he dropped back through the pack in the first one. But yeah, Roberto Garcia from fifth place on the grid will be looking menacing. Number 55 then, Alex Toledo. He rounds out the second row of the grid in sixth position on that number 55 Calex machine. The rider from Tarragona, local track for him. It's about, lives about 100 kilometers south of here. His only podium here in the category was here in 2022 where he started from the front row. So definitely very much a home hunting ground for the Catalan. Best result this year has been sixth place, which was back at round one at Estoril. So he's going to be looking to try and better that. Yeah, we were talking earlier pre-race one that we thought he may have had the pace to go with the top guys. That didn't really happen for him. So maybe he'll be out for a bit of vindication race two. But it's all about Chaffee Cardaloos, the number 18. Keep your eyes on him. He is the one to beat this weekend. Clearly faster than everybody in qualifying he had half a second in his back pocket and he was <laughs> did very well to hold on for a maiden breakthrough win let's see what he can do in race two keep an eye on Unai or Adre then he'll be starting as you can see from third card loose on pole as you can see Antonelli he's going to be looking for a much better race from the front row no excuses from second place on the grid row two goes to Sora Garcia in Toledo with row three being Bershikersky Harrison Voigt and Tapia on the next row back, Yerai Ruiz with the number 72 is joined by Rato and Mangiardo. Sam Wilford, Rio and Volpi are on the fifth row. Maxwell Toth, Montero and Kyle Paz completing row six. And then at the back of the grid, it's Czech rider Rehacek, French rider Aubrier and Thai rider Chanin Inta. 21 riders set to do battle here then at the circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya. And the man fr at the front of these 21 riders is Xavi Cardaloos, your race one winner. Took his first victory after being in the category since, well, on and off since 2015. So uh, definitely a milestone for the Andorran rider, but definitely we will be expecting hard charges from the likes of Unai Aradre, Alberto Soro was looking racy in race one as well. Roberto Garcia as well can challenge. As long as Soro and Garcia can sort out their late race pace, they could very well be there come the chequered flag. 
Yeah, Albert Osura just launched off the line here on this warm-up lap as they flick it right. And he wants left. it. He is up for mood. it today. <laughs> I think it may have been a jump start <laughs> on real lights out, but you can see he's fired into the lead on the warm-up lap. So he will be looking for a strong start as riders. One of the Harrison Voigt in the background who's just taking the long way, scenic route around Barcelona, enjoying some of the sights to behold around this circuit. Alex Toledo then, another contender from the second row. There are, with the absence of ages, it's really opened up the field. And a couple of riders have put their hand up this weekend, namely Xavi Cardaluz on pole, victorious in race one, but then Unai Radre put in the ride of his season to date. Alberto Sura, Alberto Garcia are going to be there as we look into air and track temperature, 33 degrees out there. It's Thankfully, we're in a lovely air-conditioned room, but in those leathers, that must be torture. Yeah, no, it definitely will be. The humidity is very intense here in Barcelona. The big question I have looking at the grid is Nico Antonelli starting from second place. Obviously, he can do the lap times. He's done them in qualifying. Will he be able to cling on to these guys in this one? It is one of the begging questions. He has been on the podium a couple of times this season, but at the same time, in some of the other races we've watched back, Antonelli has had such good qualifying positions, but just then nowhere Seems to be seen. Seems to lose his like head a little stone, bit in the yeah. race. So I think it was in Estoril he put in a superb race to challenge Senna Aegis. But then in the second race of that weekend, he was nowhere to be seen. He sunk into mid-pack anonymity, really. Well, let's see how the story will play out then for race two. Cardelus is going to be hoping for 25 points. But he's got a plethora of riders behind him who all want to take those 25 points away from him. Cardelus on pole then, Antonelli alongside him, and Unai Radre with that brilliant race one performance. Rounding out that front row and on the got that inside line into turn one. Cardelus looking very relaxed. Looking cool, calm and collected on the grid and that's exactly how he needs to be. They look to the lights. Race two is about to be underway. Lights out and it's another good start from Antonelli, but a very good start from Cardelus as well. A little bit of a wheelie though and he drops back through the pack. Alberto Sura again comes through from second place on the grid. Toledo looking good as well. Yeah, superb start from Toledo there as he slots into fourth Ooh, place. And Sura. Oof. Antonelli <laughs> again wasting losing no his time. head in turn We saw him on the warm-up lap pushing through from the start. Alberto Sura has just done the exact same thing from lights out. He has pushed into the lead. Cardelus then in second place with Nico Antonelli. Much better start from him. But let's see. If, well, he's got Garcia for company now, but Antonelli holds on coming around here. Sura pulling away a little bit now then on the Boscoscuro machine. He leads ahead of Xavi Cardelus. And Nico Antonelli, Antonelli dropping back through the pack again. He's on the inside line. He can push Garcia to the edge of the track, but he doesn't do it. Garcia holds firm around the outside. So Antonelli just needs to be a little bit more aggressive. He's being bullied back through the pack here, which isn't something you'd expect from a Grand Prix level rider. A Grand Prix race winner, no less. Yeah. So perhaps losing his head a little bit again in this one, but we don't want to curse him. Let's see what he can do throughout the rest of this race. He's still in contention. Harrison Voigt looking good there up into P5. Unai Radre has lost a lot of positions off the line. He did last time round as well. Like a stone. Yeah, down to seventh line. place. Let's see if he can find that race one pace again. He's going to have to. Looking at it here. It's a good start from Voigt and Yeray Ruiz from the rows further, a little further back in the third and fourth row. They're into the top six. Unai Radre down into seventh. No jump starts coming up, so there will be no long lap penalties on the way. But it's Alberto Sura who's in control, but not for long. Here comes Xavi Cardelus. Is he going to get into the slipstream on this kilometre long straight? down into turn one. This could be a pivotal moment in this race. Sura, we've seen, hasn't had that pace in race one, and he's going to be overtaken here by Cardelus. Not just yet. Sura does very well, very late on the brakes to smash it, smash the door close in front of the race one winner. That's all opened up. Roberto Garcia now on the tail of the front two. Antonelli losing a little bit of ground in fourth, and you can see Harrison Voigt on the number 29, eager to get past. Harrison had a good race in race one. Not quite in the podium battle, but now Yari Ruiz slots his way up the inside of him on the number 72 machine with the yellow flashes. 
sideways into turn five for the number 67, Alberto Sura. A rider who we saw at the world stage last year. Hasn't won yet in Moto2 European Championship, but of course, it is his rookie season in this category. Jumped up from the Moto3 to the 600cc Moto2. And he's definitely coming on song here. He's going to be ideally using this as a platform to project himself back onto the world stage if he can as Cardalus has a look up the inside. Again, Sura late on the brakes. No way through for Cardalus this time around. Unai Oradre beginning to make some moves. He's just taken Harrison Voigt. Alex Toledo had an excellent start, but he's dropped back to eighth position. But Unai Oradre now beginning to make some moves. He's back up into six. He's going to set his sights on Yerai Ruiz, which is exactly what happened in the last race. So if he can get by the Spaniard, the number 72 just ahead of him, he will be right onto the coattails of Antonelli, who is sticking with this lead group. But it's all about Suda and Cardalus out front. It's only a matter of time, I think, before Cardalus manages to make a move stick. Keep an eye on the progress of Oradre. We know he can fight th back through the pack, and we know that he can put in a very fast pace. Surin out leading at the front of this race. He was the fastest man on circuit last time around, but he was equaled by Cardalus. They both did 45 threes. And equally, Yari Ruiz, a 45-3 as well. So the pace at the front, everyone matching each other more or less. Yeah, Sura looking pretty composed out front. Ooh, a bit of a moment there for Garcia. Losing a bit of traction on the rear end, something to keep an eye on. Yeah, Perhaps just a little bit too eager on the gas this time. Links, I think, now from the guys, as you say that, I didn't quite spot it myself, but we've seen it a couple of times during race one. Can be a little bit, and another one there, he's stood up a bit. But Antonelli now has dropped back, and Yerai Ruiz is up into fourth position. But Sura looking pretty composed out front as things stand. Xavi Cardalus, it looks like he may have the pace, but he will need to bide his time to get out in front. Sura then, doing a good defensive ride here. It'll be interesting to see what the lap times are this time around. You can see Unai Redri, the number 10. The white bike with blue fashes with the yellow background. The number 10 trying to make his way through. Here's a little look at Tapia and the number 35 of Sam Wilford. These guys battling it out a little bit further back for 10th place. Ahead of Bjorsha Kursky. Rider very familiar with the Moto2 European Championship. Also had a few dips over at the World Series as well. And now Sam Wilford looking strong, but here it is. That battle out the front is Cardalus going to make a move now. He pulls alongside Sura, but Sura pushes him towards the outside of the circuit. And no way through this time round for Cardalus. It's still as you were. Antonelli leaving Falling into the clutches now. There, yeah. So we've got Antonelli just behind Yerai Ruiz. Roberto Garcia looks, as things stand, comfortable in third, but Ruiz has got some good pace. Last lap, a 145-137, the fastest man on circuit. So a pretty, pretty encouraging sign for the FAO 55 TEY racing rider as he sets his sights on Roberto Garcia and another podium. Cardalus then just taking a good look at that Bosco Oscuro machine. That is Alberto Suarez just ahead of him. He's going to lean, line up, I should say, rather his strong points, his weak points, and know when the best time to strike will be over the coming laps. Now, one thing to bear in mind as well, with Yari Ruiz and Roberto Garcia on the move in third and fourth, if these two start scrapping at the front, if Cardalus makes his way through and these two start scrapping, they'll start falling into the clutches of the riders behind. Like we can see, they're already making inroads on them. Garcia getting closer and closer to these front two. So it'll be interesting to see what the lap times will be this time around. Alberto Serra controlling the race from the front. And it's still as you were yet to see a move being made, but it's a battle of attrition at the moment. And it's going to be who blinks first. We know how good Cardalus is down into turn one. Is he going to make it stick this time around? He's in the slipstream. He's looking towards the inside. Is he going to make it stick? Are we going to see a change for the lead? He's on the inside. Yes, and he makes that move stick. What will we see now? Will Cardalus pull away from Surrey? He's a little bit wide through there. Sora pulls it back. What will we see now? Yeah, Cardalus, no surprise that's come at turn one. He's been so strong there all day. 
What has Sura now got in his back pocket? Has he got an answer for the Andorran? Cardelus, though, is lapping pretty similar times to Sura, not much between, just a few hundreds, and they're still a bit quicker than what's happening, but Unai Oradre, sound the cue to Jaws music, look at the number 10, he's battered his way past Nico Antonelli, Yerai Ruiz is within size, Ruiz also putting in a good pace, both of them about three tenths, four tenths quicker than Roberto Garcia. So it could just be a matter of time before we see Garcia. Oh, and Sam and Wilford's Sam gone Wilford down. down at turn it's five. unfortunate for the Brit. Uh, he was having another fine ride, a super ride this morning. Unfortunately, race two has come to an early end for the number 35. Not the way he wanted Unai to end Redre the weekend. Up, wasting no time. And on Yerai Ruiz at all. Oh, he sits him up. Between the two. Ruiz comes in that. with a strong response there. <laughs> it's probably some residual effect after race one overtake. <laughs> and Ruiz is saying to Horadre, you can try again, but you're not having it your own way here, buddy. Lost a little bit of time with that exchange, but it was definitely entertaining. Ruiz not having any of it. He knows Horadre strong. But he's just showing he's just as strong on that number 72 machine. Right then, is anyone going to challenge Cardalus as they head down into turn one? Sora's got the inside line, but Cardalus very, very strong on the brakes. Garcia looking menacing as well now. Yeah, I think Oradre has after picking off. Yeah, he yep. has. He has just into turn one. He got ahead of him on that right-hander and later on the brakes. So Unai Oradre has picked off. Yerai Ruiz. Does Oradre have the pace to go with? The lead guys, well, Roberto Garcia, I was saying that he was a little bit slower than the guys behind him. He's responded in kind. Fastest rider on track last time out, but Uradre is gaining on him. Alberto Sura just having a little look up the inside of Cardaluz, but just too far away to make any real move. Right then, Uradre's on the move. He's caught up with a Roberto Garcia now, so very soon these guys will be pretty much locked together and we will have we pretty much already do have a five rider battle for the lead. There's a little bit of breathing space between them. They're slightly stretched out, but not anymore. Look at Unai Aradre. He's all over the rear wheel of Garcia. He has a look to the inside. Will the number 10 make it stick? He's up the inside. Will he run wide now? Garcia cuts to the inside and pushes him wide again. And that's going to let Ruiz through. No, not this time. Well, Oradre is second invitation. belted around the circuit here in Barcelona. That's the second time contact has been made after he attempted an overtake. Just last lap, Yeray Ruiz had the same response. Roberto Garcia says, you're not getting past me so easily. But Uno Oradre is on a march here. He wants to get onto that podium place as quick as possible. And he might just, if he keeps his pace up, he might just be able to reel in the front two. It looks like it, Sura might be trying a little move on Cardalus at some stage. And yeah, Cardalus, uh, yeah. sorry, Sura in the lead. He's so. gone around the outside of him there as well. Very impressive stuff from the Italian. Yep. Judging it to perfection then, the number 67. Now's the time to hit the front. He's making sure Cardalus knows he's there. And these two pulling away a little bit after those exchanges between Garcia, Oradre and Ruiz. Those guys battling it out. Oradre now up the inside of the number 31, Garcia. Now, Garcia, oh no, I was about to Once say, again. if he's clever, he'll sit on the back of him so that they can catch the front two. But uh, now Oradre giving, rubbing giving it as good as he's getting. Again. This is a cracking battle for third place between Oradre and Roberto Garcia. Oh. They're just running side by side here. It's super, super stuff. Giving it as good as you get, as they say. Roberto Garcia was on the podium last time. Oradri made his podium debut today. They both want a second one. And they are not going down without a fight. But as you said, all this is playing into the hands of the front two riders, Cardalus and Sura. But Oradri now looks to have opened up a little bit of a gap to Garcia behind him. And a little bit of an advantage he can set about getting Cardalus out in front. Yep, you wouldn't put it past all Radre to catch the leading two. Sura's so, so put the hammer down a little bit at the front. He's got a tiny bit of breathing space over Cardalus. And now, here's that move again. Radre to the inside. This is with Yari Ruiz. That's where Ruiz stood him up. There was a little bit, the door was slightly open, and Ruiz went straight for it. Like we said, giving as good as he's getting. And this is the battle then between Garcia 
and Ouradre. Those guys swapping positions. Now Ouradre pulling in the guys in front. He was a couple of tenths quicker than Cardaloos on that last lap, but now he's got free space and a complete free lap. We'll see what he's able to do on that number 10 machine. Ouradre, very strong rider over in the Supersport 300 categories, picked up wins and podiums over there. Then spent a bit of life over in Super, World Supersport, the support category to the World Superbike class. And now, again, on 600cc machinery, but in the Moto2 category, and really, really coming into his own in this category. Looking really strong on that Calex machine. But it's the Boscoscuro machine that still leads Alberto Sura putting in the race of his life so far, keeping Cardaloos honest. But now Radre, you can visibly see, is closing in these front two. So we will see, at the very least, a three-rider scrap for victory here in the European Moto2 Championship. Don't discount Garcia, don't discount Ruiz. Those two could very well still be in the mix in this battle as well as they are going with the number 10 of Unai Radre. Yeah, Garcia just seems to be lapping a little slower at the moment. He was in the 146, flat 146, while all those around him are in the 145s. So he's just that little bit He's slower. got that carrot dangled, Yerai though. Ru Yerai Ruiz is on his tail. I think it could just be a bit of matter of time before Ruiz sees an opportunity. A little further back then, we're looking at Rato and Antonelli. And once again, Antonelli just dropping back a little bit. Slightly better than, than it is an improvement on his race one. Now, are we going to see a change for the lead here? Cardaloos pulls alongside Sura. Sura's late on the brakes. Too late for Cardaloos this time around. And that's saying something because we know how good Cardaloos is into turn one. We saw in race one him make that pass both Garcia and Sura to take the lead. Couldn't get through on Sura this time around though. Perhaps just keeping his cards close to his chest. Although that card has already been played. Right then, looking at the lap times on that last lap. Oradre again, a couple of tenths quicker than the riders in front of him. Yeah, and Roberto Garcia, once again, I point out, he's doing one slow, one fast. <laughs> he's the fastest rider around that time, a 145-230. Just a little bit quicker than Unai Oradre out front, but he had a tenth to spare over Yerai Ruiz. So he can, he can have a response when it is very much needed. He's felt oh, the yeah. pressure of Ruiz a little bit, but Garcia... It's a lot, it's a lot easier a to do more. those lap times when you've got that carrot dangled in front of you, when you can follow, especially when Oradre's going so, so quickly, when you're able to just follow his lines, and it's so much easier to follow than it is to lead, and that's obviously being shown here with these guys as they're catching the front guys, and now Oradre is in the mix. Yeah, two right, Oradre great reference for Garcia and as a result might actually drag riders four and five Garcia and Ruiz back into the podium battle here but Oradre is flying it around this circuit and Carlos might just have a problem it's a repeat of race one a battle between Carlos and Oradre but this time for second rather than the lead well, Radre now then, now he's on the back of Cardaloos. How long until we see a move? We know that he's feisty. We know that he's going to want a taste of the champagne once again. He's in podium position now. Antonelli now has dropped down the order. Has he crashed out? He's gone down at turn 12, it would seem, or he's gone into the gravel according to our live timing screens as we can see his name dropping down. And that's just another disaster for Antonelli. He rider of such promise, a Grand Prix race winner, no less, as Cardaloos has a little look up there, but he's yeah. got a Radre for company, but Antonelli He'll have seen on his pit board. another crash, and yeah, he has stopped, so he has dropped down to timing screens, and that seems to be the end of Antonelli's day. Cardaloos will be informed that Radre is now with the group, and all there is, and Antonelli coming into the pits then, so some sort of issue for the Italian, possibly some technical gremlins hindering him from the crash this morning. We're not 100% sure what happened there. Don't know if he doesn't look like he's gone down. Right then, Cardaloos, like we've just said, will know that Oradre is now all over his rear wheel and he will be eager to see if he can get past Alberto Sura. He has a little look at the inside at turn 10. Can't make it stick this time round though. Sura, again, very, very strong Ooh, on the brakes. Oradre up the inside. The door was open. And he went for it, but Cardaloos! Oh, that's a big moment seat. there. I had to take a breath there. I thought they were both going down. Oh, this is a disaster for Cardaloos in the blink of an eye. He's gone from second all the way down to fifth position. 
Oh my goodness, Carlos, that's a disaster. Hopes of taking the maximum points or even 45 points and catching Senna Aegis or narrowing the gap to Senna Aegis are up in smoke at the moment and he's got it all to do now over the remaining six laps. And yeah. Unai Oradre, here he comes. Is he going to do it? No, sort of a little later on the brakes there. Oradre just having a little peek on the inside. Here we, here we have a look at the rear, just steps out on him. So, so lucky not to tag the back of the number 10, Unai Aradre. Was so close to his rear wheel, was trying to get up the inside, was no space there, perhaps a little bit too much front brake. All the weight goes to the front, which makes the rear step out. Luckily, they got away with that one. Yeah, he did well to keep himself mounted on that machine. Oh, very heart in mouth moment. He's another little moment coming through there. Yeri Ruiz. Oh, Ruiz! Both of them have gone He's down. Taken. Ruiz has taken out <laughs> Roberto Garcia in front of him at turn five. And suddenly Cardalus is back on the podium places. What an absolute disaster. He saw the move there. And Unai Oradre now going to try and move up the inside, runs onto the green. It looks Ruiz like both are okay. okay. It's good to see that. No hard feelings, but oh, that's going to take a little bit like of time that. to get over for Let's Roberto have a look what Garcia. Here, then. So Ruiz has a look to the inside, just too much front brake, tucks the front, and unfortunately nowhere for Garcia to go. And he takes him out, and that's, well, that's helped Cardalus, but really unfortunate end to their race. Now Cardalus will be rubbing his hands together at the sight of Clear's track in front of him. Now, but he's going to have to put the hammer down to catch these two out the front because Oradre oh, now Oradre has taken the lead. Again. We missed that one. But Oradre is very much pushing it here, and he's on Ooh, the green the gr again, oh, as Cardalus. is Cardalus. Oradre may have a track limits warning coming his way because I think I've counted at least two over the last couple of laps and may have missed a couple others. Sura around the outside. But Sura, brilliant again into turn one. And Cardalus was just under a second behind these two coming through the final sector. He's narrowed that gap down to seven tenths, so he's got some pace to burn with five laps to go. This victory fight is far from done, and Cardalus may yet still stand on the top step of the podium here in Barcelona. Five laps remaining then. Cardalus a couple of tenths quicker than the leaders on that last lap. But what can he do about these front two? Will he be able to catch them? He's got about four and a half laps to be able to do it. Or Radre, though, eager for victory. Sura, eager for victory. Cardalus has already taken his first victory. Will we see another rider take their first victory in the Moto2 European Championship? Will it go the way of Sura? Will it go the way of Radre? Or will the veteran Cardalus stamp his authority on Moto2 once again? I know Senator Adrius will be hoping that he can't. Now then, Oradre having a look up the inside. Is he going to make a move at turn 10? Sura again late on the brakes. Difficult to make a move on the Italian. Now, Cardalus does look like he's making inroads. We'll check the numbers. We'll check the lap times next time across the line. It does look like he's making some progression there. Yeah, I think he's got it down to six tenths at okay. the moment. So he is progressing. That's about three and a half tenths better position than he was one lap ago. And now for the dangling leg from Oradre can be a little bit mis uh, misconceiving. It looks like he may have lost, but he loves to dangle that leg, particularly around the right-handers. But Sura now, will he hold on to the lead coming into turn one? Will he be late on the brakes? It looks like he's good enough and will hold on to the lead. But Cardalus again is down to within half a tenth. Interesting to see how on the change of direction there. Oradre gets his foot quickly back onto the peg so he can put all the weight through it. And you can see just him using a little bit of back brake there as well. So, Sura doing an offensive ride here. You can see him just trying to make sure there's no way through there. Good ride here for the number 13, Mattia Ratto. He's in a world of his own in fourth place at the moment. So, all he has to do, keep it clean, keep it tidy, and he's on for an excellent point scoring finish. Out front, though, still plenty of legs left in this race. Unai Oradre has been eyeing this up. And look, here comes Xavi Cardalus. Absolutely yep. nothing in it now. Any mistake from the front will see Cardalus pounce. So Sura still leads the number 67 ahead of Unai Oradre. Cardalus won his first race in this category this morning. 
Oradre and Sura bumping on the podium. Here comes Oradre, then Oradre. up the inside at turn 10. Will he make and it stick? Oh, Cardalus trying as well. Just caught out a little bit there. So Oradre now on for his first win in this category. Sura also searching for that first win. Cardalus for a second to bring him to within 11 points of the absent Senna ages. But Oradre is having a field of a time down here in Barcelona. Now, what can Oradre do? We saw in race one that Alberto Sura wasn't able to cling on to the pace of the front two in the closing stages of the race. He's right with them this time, though, but it looks as if Oradre is starting to edge out a bit of a gap. He's got a tiny bit of breathing space. We've seen the Bosca score a very, very quick in a straight line. But it's Cardalus this time. Up the inside. Not oh. quite this time around. A little bit too far back this time around. But possibly next lap. I wouldn't be surprised if we see it happen. Right then, can Oradre break them? Doesn't look like it. Sura very, very strong through this first sector. And he's just reeled in Oradre once again. Cardalus just on the edge of track limits there. Not quite sure if he ventured out, out of track bounds, but very, very close to it. And that'll be something to keep an eye on. We did see a change of positions in Junior GP earlier on. We won't spoil the results, though. Right then, Oradre. Can he cling on? He didn't finish inside the top eight before this weekend. Picked up P2 in the first race. Can he go one better this time around? Two and a half laps remaining. Who's going to take it? Will it be Oradre? Will it be Surat? Or will it be Cardalus once again? Once again, running in very close to track limits, Oradre, but he's, you can see it's wobbling around, all fine and clean through there. But Oradre is looking very, very good here. Fastest of the three of these riders on that last lap was Cardalus, but not by much. Oradre out front, the second fastest, both in the 145s. 146, though, for Alberto Sura, so he lost quite a bit of time in that. He, he mentioned this, you mentioned it earlier, Tristan, his late race pace. We saw it suffer a little bit in race one. Is that going to come into play here again? Well, with the battle it being so close, you'd imagine that he can stick with Oradre out front. Or is Cardalou seeing him lose pace? Because look at that gap now coming over the line. He just loses. Lap times are the same. They're all 145.7s, but Surat making up all his time in the first couple of sectors and just loses out in that final, in the final two. So... The Bosca Sura clearly working well through this first through these first two sectors. You can see now he will reel in Oradre once again, and he does. Cardalus, though, is going to need to try and find a way past Sura before Sura loses time in that final sector. You can see Cardalus running a little bit wide there, perhaps struggling a little bit with traction. He would have had to put the hammer down to catch these guys. So is grip going to play a part for Cardalus? Trying to turn it tight there, turns it tight and gets the power down, so it doesn't look like he's struggling for grip. Well, Radre goes defensive, and that allows Sura to get back onto the back of him. Sura then, will he make a move before that final sector where he seems to lose a little bit of time? Sura over the rear wheel of Ul Radre. Is he going to make a move down into turn 10? That'll be the next passing opportunity. He's going to need a good run through here through turn 9, down the back straight. Cardalus is a little bit too far back at the moment. But provided he's got the slipstream, it could be possible. I think they're all a little bit too far at the moment. Right then, the penultimate lap coming towards a close, and then it'll be last lap time as it stands. Cardalus will be 20 points behind Aegis. If he can win this one, it'll be 11. Yeah, Cardalus needs to get the hammer down a little bit here because there is not long left to go. And it looks like it's going to be a shootout between Oradre and Sura. Cardalus has done very well to get onto the rear back into the top three, I should say, as a consequence as well of that crash between Garcia and Ruiz. And he has roped them in from a second out, but he really needs to get the hammer down as we begin the last lap here in the Moto2 European Championship in Barcelona. Last lap time then, which way is it going to go? Sura makes a move down into turn one. We knew it was coming. Will Oradre have a response? We know that he can make a move down into turn five. Didn't make it stick last time around. The team watch on with bated breath. Is Cardalus out of it? He's a, trailing a little bit, but could possibly still be in this one. Is Oradre going to bite back? Sura goes defensive down into turn four. The next passing opportunity is down into turn five. Oradre's all roll over his rear wheel. Is he going to make it stick? He's eyeing it up. Is he going to do it? Not this time. All right, we've got one more passing opportunity down into turn 10, unless he can magic something up special. 
All these on this final lap. Should a battle commence between the top two, Cardalus is there waiting yep. patiently Important to, remember. to get in through. The P2 even would be an excellent result for the Andorran, but it is Sura who is in control as we speak at the moment, coming down now, final the down run downhill, final sector, and he's wobbling all over the place. Here we Sura go now, defensive. is there a move coming? Oradre goes to the inside, is he gonna make it stick? Very tight for Oradre, is he gonna run wide? Sura's gonna get the cutback, there's no room Contact. through there, but he does it anyway! No, he doesn't! Beautiful defensive move from the number 10. Contact through there, and what a move for Unai Oradre, he's into the lead, and is he gonna make it stick? Can Sura do a Valentino Rossi into the final corner? Oh, oh he's, he's by the moment! Who's it gonna be? Is it gonna be a drag to the line? Sura goes wide, tries to get the late apex. We know the Bosca score is fast in a straight line, but it is Unai Oradre who takes his first win in the Moto2 European Championship. Alberto Sura takes second, and Carto, uh, Carter loose. Third and first, I'm going to take a breath and I'm going to hand it over to you, Chris. Take a rest because that was breathless stuff. Unai, Unai Radre, where has this come from? He has been improving all year, but he has turned such a corner this weekend. And starting on that front row, he has made it count. P2 earlier today, he's gotten one better. He's done it at turn 10 doing Alberto Sura at the well-renowned turn 10 and Sura just had no response going through those final four corners. They always say if you're leading coming out of turn 10, you're on for the win. He timed it to perfection. Cardalus, a little bit unfortunate maybe that he didn't get his chance. He got caught up in the crash, but that did hand him the podium place. And it's been a very successful day for the Andorran rider. But race two, it's all about the number 10 we see on screen here. What more can you ask for in racing? What more can you ask for in the Moto2 European Championship? An incredible, incredible final lap there. Sura gave it absolutely everything he could, tried to get the cut back, but unfortunately there was just no room through. He was there in case the door was open, but Oradre kept the door firmly, firmly closed. Unfortunately for Cardalus, after that moment earlier on in the race, he dropped down the order, and then that crash between Garcia and Toledo let Cardalus free and he managed to cling onto the back of these guys but didn't find a way through but first place and a third place he's now got 20 points in between him and Senna Aegis who leads so he's done himself a world of good this weekend with first and third he was 61 points going into this weekend that he had to Aegis in front and now the gap's only 20 points Unai or Radre though an incredible victory, the rookie of the class, hadn't finished higher than eighth before this weekend and now not only is he a Moto2 European Championship race winner, he's also got a podium in race two, he picked up the podium in that race one and now he is a Moto2 European Championship race winner, an incredible ride for the number 10. Incredible, incredible ride as well for Alberto Sura, who clung on right until the end and had it snatched away from Unai Oradre. Before this weekend, Oradre had only finished inside the top inside the top ten once. Could this be the turning point for the Spaniard? Raced in World Supersport last year. It wasn't his first front row, so we were wondering if he was going to be able to have the pace in the race, but he's proved us, he's proved to us that he definitely does. And he comes in. A historic moment for him, a moment he will never forget. And he comes in to take victory. To the delight of his team. Let's have a little listen to these celebrations. They're happy with that one. And so they should be. Unai Oradre for the STP Laglish Racing Team takes victory in Barcelona. No Seno Aegis this weekend. He looked watched on from the sidelines, but what action we've had in the Moto2 European Championship. Incredible stuff. He was in the mood. And he got it done.
he knows how to race. He's raced in the Super Sport 300 category before and he's definitely learned how to overtake in that one. And he's put that, those skills to good use here in the Moto2 European Championship. We will hear from him in a little bit. Chris Jordan has headed down to Park Ferme and will be getting the reaction, the first reaction from Oradre. Alberto Soro then, slightly dismayed with second place, but can definitely be proud of that one. Put in a solid, solid run and was there to pick up the pieces. Unfortunately, though, there were no pieces to be picked up as Uno Oradre left no stone unturned at the end of that race. Carter Luce, third place, will be a little slightly disappointed with that one after taking the win in the first one. That moment halfway through the race, though, it could have been curtains for him. He could have, could have finished the race in the gravel trap. So 16 points is what he should be happy with taking. Here's the move between Alberto Sura and Unai Aradre a little bit earlier on in the race. Sura very, very strong in the, on the brakes into the first corner. Sura went defensive, but Aradre was trying to find his way through, and he did so with perfection. Went very, very tight. We thought he was going to run wide, but he didn't. He got it stopped. Sura tried to make his way through, but... Uradre hung it round the outside and he took victory and an incredible victory it was for the number 10. Incredible scenes for Unai Uradre as he takes his first, first victory. We're going to hear from him now. He's down there with Chris Jordan. Thanks, Tristan. Unai, a special, special moment for you. First ever Moto2 European Championship win and what a way to do it. Talk it. Tell us, what was going through your mind as you made that la uh, turn 10 last lap? It was a very, very difficult race after the first one this morning. But I know that we have pace, we have reason to, to fight for the victory. And this victory for me is special in my first year here. Uh, I changed a lot of this, this year. I fight a lot to, to be here and I'm super happy. I say thanks to, to all my sponsors, to my team and see you in the next one. Ahora en español, por favor. Sí, eso ha sido una carrera muy, muy difícil, hacía mucha calor y después de la primera carrera ya estábamos todos un poco fatigados. Pero bueno, sabía que tenía ritmo durante todo el fin de semana, sabía que podía luchar por la victoria y así ha sido. Al final en la última curva, me la, en la última vuelta me la dejó la curva 10 y la victoria es para nosotros. Ahora solo toca seguir trabajando en el verano y nos vemos en la siguiente. Felicidades. Here's how it went down then in race two for the Moto2 European Championship. It was Cardaloos that started on pole, but didn't get the whole shot down into turn one as the number 23 of Nico Antonelli shot up the inside. But Alberto Sura it was that snatched the race lead away from his fellow Italian. The laps ticked away and Sura it was that led out the front, coming under threat from Cardaloos. Cardaloos made some impressive moves down at turn one. And Alberto Sura, bit straight back later on in the race. Unai Raidre was making moves and he went on to win the race for the end. This big moment between him and Yaya Ruiz happened. And there were some wild rushes through that turn 10 throughout the duration of the race. Cardaloos then led the race as the lap six away. Meanwhile, Raidre was on the move as he made his way up the inside of Garcia. Garcia bit straight back at him, sitting up the Spaniard. Once again, then this moment for Cardaloos, nearly wiping out Oradre, nearly finding himself in the gravel trap, managed to rejoin. And then, unfortunately, this moment happened between Ruiz and Garcia. Ruiz went up the inside, took the front, took Garcia with him into the gravel trap, and this freed Xavi Cardaloos to be able to catch these front two. The moves being, being made out the front, though, as Oradre made a move on Sura for the lead. Sura kept himself in Oradre's wheel tracks as the race went on and these guys swapped positions. Oradre then kept himself, kept Alberto Sura honest as the laps ticked away. Cardaloos did manage to get onto the back of these guys but didn't manage to make a break. Sura led into the final lap and then this move from Oradre brought in the lead as the laps ticked away once again. Sura bit back though on the number 67 machine. Into turn one was very, very strong into the first couple of corners. Very strong on the bakes on the Boscoscuro machine. A little bit leery on the power for the Boscoscuro. And then this moment down into the final, into the final lap at turn 10. Sura tried to make his make his way back through, but couldn't quite do it. There was no room for error. No stone, no stone left unturned 
for Unai Aradre and he held it to the flag. So he tried to get a wide line down into the final corner to get the drive, but it was Aradre that took victory in Moto2. Sura took second, with Cardalus taking an important third place, but, but Unai Aradre takes his first victory in the Moto2 European Championship. Here's Cardaloos looking a little bit dismayed with that third place, but he makes it out to the podium. Landoran, who took victory in the first race, was forced to settle for third place in that one after that moment. Surat looks delighted with second place, could have been a victory, but this man who's about to walk onto the top step of the podium was just too good today. Dropped back in the pack off the line, but it didn't mean anything as he fought his way back through the pack to take victory in a brilliant last lap scrap with Alberto Sura. Incredible action here in the Moto2 European Championship as the managing director of the circuit, Barcelona, Catalonia, hands out the trophies of the team representative for the SVG Leglise Racing Team. Alberto Sura as well sat there in second, but Cardalus taking that sec that third place. Doesn't look happy with that one, but it went into the weekend 61 points adrift of Senna Aegis. Now it's only 20. So with the next round at Aragon in October, he'll be looking to try and capitalize, and Senna Aegis will be looking to try and reel those points try and put that to extend that advantage back out. Lucas Tulevich, the Moto2 World Championship rider and former world champion here, so European champion here in the Moto2 category, hands the trophy to the race winner Unai Radre. Now we'll have the Spanish national anthem. Que levanten las manos, ¿dónde están los de La Rioja? ¿Eh? ¿Dónde están? Venga ahí, lo vamos a celebrar con el Proseco. Vamos a remojarlo. Venga, Sobe, ese es el podium de Moto 2. Celebrations from the top three then, after what was a barnstorming race two to close the weekend for the Moto 2 European Championship. Incredible to see you and our Edre take that victory. Here are the results then confirmed on your screens. Oradre is a European Moto2 race winner ahead of Alberto Sura and Xavi Cardaluz. Mattia Ratto finished fourth with Alex Toledo rounding out the top five. Harrison Voigt picked up P6 ahead of Bursha Kursky, Gerard Rio and Marco Tapia rounding out the top nine in race two here in Barcelona. Rounding out the top 10 was Matteo Volpi ahead of his fellow Italian Francesco Mongiardo. Kyle Paz was 12th ahead of Rejic. Charles Aubrey and Channon Inter rounding out the finishes and rounding out the points in a 15th place. Unfortunately, Roberto Garcia and Yari Ruiz didn't finish. Nicola Antonelli had to pull into the pits with seven laps remaining. Montenero Toth as well also didn't finish this race. Here's the damage to the championship then. Despite not racing this weekend, Senna Aegis sits at, still sits at the top of the championship by 20 points ahead of Xavi Cardaloos and Alberto Sura, who's 43 points adrift, equal on points with his fellow Italian, Matteo Ratto. Ruiz rounds out the top five in the championship ahead of Toledo Garcia. Carlos Tatai, who is out injured as well, and Unai Raja bumping himself up to ninth place. Tapia rounds out the top 10, 91 points adrift ahead of Sam Wilford, who didn't finish in that race. 96 adrift of the leader. Antonelli, Gerard Rio, 
Matteo Volpi and Harrison Voigt round out the top five, 15 in the championship ahead of Piotr Bishakursky. Johan Rodriguez, Rodriguez is 18th in championship ahead of Karl Paz, Vinucic, Toth, Rejcek, Inter, Aubrey, and Montenero rounding out the tw top 25. Montenero with a single point on his 2023 European Championship campaign. Incredible scenes then in the European Championship in the Moto2 category. A barnstorming race and damage done in the championship. The next round will be at Aragon in October where Senna Aegis will return and will be looking to rack up as many points as he can on this 2023 Moto2 European Championship campaign. Unai Aradre it was though that took the victory in incredible fashion. He deserved it, he put everything out there on the line and as we said, left no stone unturned. It was an incredible victory for Unai Aradre. European Championship action here then at the circuit, the Barcelona Catalunya here in northeast Spain in the Catalunya region of Spain. A beautiful circuit with plenty of history behind it and plenty of action coming your way. The 4.7 kilometer circuit's got 14 turns to it, eight corners to the right and six to the left. It's got a mix of changes of directions, long swooping fast corners, hard braking, and always throws up something special here in Catalonia. The circuit has played host to some historic moments in motorsport, but this weekend it's playing host to the Fenetwork FIM Junior GP Championships. And the final race on the billing, the final race of the day is the stock European Championship. All these bikes, stock 600cc machines. The difference between this category and the categories that we've already seen here in Barcelona. These are the only category that run road bikes. All the others are completely prototype bikes made for racing, whereas these ones, these are 600cc road bikes that you can buy yourself. But obviously these ones are adapted to be able to race around these circuits. Myself, Tristan Finocchiaro, will be bringing you all the, all the action and alongside me will be Chris Jordan. Looking forward to this one then, Chris, a perfect finale to the day's action. Yeah, it should be an absolutely superb event once again in the stock class. And the title is very much up for grabs here as well. The story of the season, well, we'll come to that in just a moment. Here's a review then from the last round in the Algarve. So lights out, so Daniel Munoz take the whole shot and he was in a world of his own as he shot out way out in front as we look at Gonzalo Rivera, the home hero coming over the famous Portimao crest. At the back of the grid from lights out was Eric Fernandez and he came all the way through the grid. Mario Mayer had a good start as well. A long lap penalty ruined his chances of a podium. But Eric Fernandez started at the back of the grid and within three laps was slotted in behind Daniel Munoz out front. That meant only the final podium place was up for grabs and after a long and wonderful battle that went to the number eight Marco Garcia but Daniel Munoz was the king in Portimao and perfection in Portugal and now that sets up a title tilt here in Barcelona. Sun is beating down on the Circuit de Catalunya Barcelona and that title charge 
continues and may just come to a head today for Daniel Munoz. He's got a 30 point advantage over his closest adversary. That is Eric Fernandez, but they do start one and two on the grid. They have been a cut above the rest this season with either one of those two riders winning the races on offer. With the, with the one race that Eric Fernandez winning, Daniel Munoz came second, and likewise, Fernandez has been a regular finisher in second place, except for the season opener, where he crashed out in a battle with Munoz. The championship story is very much, like you say, Chris, being between Danny Munoz and Eric Fernandez. Fernandez had to start from the back of the grid last time out in the Algarve, and by lap two, as we just saw, made already made his way up into second place. Those two, an absolute cut above the rest. Dino Yotso looking good, at the moment though we've got a yellow flag at turn four not quite sure if something's happened maybe on the on the sighting lap on the formation lap here or if it's just something uh, something wrong with our timing screens but we'll keep an eye on that danny munoz then he's going to be starting from pole position and he's going to have eric fernandez alongside him those two if those two get away there'll be a danger of those two well, pulling away so let's have a little listen to what danny munoz had to say after qualifying ya que es un circuito en el cual nunca hemos rodado con esta moto y me estaba gustando bastante desde el primer día. Y bueno, al final hemos podido conseguir igualar el ritmo de Eric y conseguirle batir en otras pole más. La verdad que es un circuito muy complicado ya que entre el calor, eh, a veces hace aire con rachas bastante caliente y la verdad está costando encontrar buen, buen feeling con la moto en todos los fines de semana. Pero bueno, es lo que hay para todos igual, así que nada, mañana apretar. Bueno, intentaremos el máximo para conseguir lo máximo posible mañana y bueno, se la, se la dedicaría a mi entrenador Robe que ha venido aquí, que es su casa, es, es de aquí y nada, se la dedicaría a él, a la familia, a Jorge Arroyo, al equipo, a todos. So 147.308 puts Danny Munoz on pole position once again in the stock class. And you could tell there that he does have some concerns about the conditions out there today. It is an absolute scorcher here in Barcelona. Over 30 degrees and a very, I think it was 38 degrees track temperature last time I checked, which is quite warm. And that really does affect the grip of these machines and tires. It's almost like when it gets too warm and the grip starts going, it's a sweating effect. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. It's sort of. The track starts to get a little bit greasy and you start to lose a little bit of grip. We saw the times were a little bit slower in the Moto2 race that we've just had and that can affect, that can affect the grip levels out on circuit. Munoz then, who we just saw, he'll be starting from pole position. He's won every race this year except one where he's finished second to Eric Fernandez and that was back in Jerez. He's got he some incredible consistency and there is Eric Fernandez, the only man that's managed to get the better of Danny Munoz this year, the only man who's able to match him he won, like we said, back at Jerez, finished second to Munoz and all the others, crashed out at Estoril, crashed out of the lead back in Estoril, and I'm sure he'll be eager to return to the top step, starting from the front row this time and not from the back of the grid. Yeah, from the front row will make life easier, but he did scythe his way through the pack like a hot knife through butter last time. He did that one DNF may prove crucial as he is 30 points off. And should he crash out and Munoz take first or second, that will be the title for Munoz. As we look at Dino Yotso, two podiums so far to his name. He completes the front row. Real talent in this class as well, the Italian rider. And has plenty of potential going forward. Yeah, Yotso really coming into his own into this category. Actually raced here last season as well. Was a former runner in the World Super Sport 300 category as well. Iotso looking very, very strong yesterday. Was almost challenging the lap times of Fernandez and Munoz. Only a couple of tenths shy of Fernandez's lap time, but Munoz with that 47.3 looking very, very strong indeed. A touching message then to Carlos Tatai, who unfortunately suffered a pretty heavy crash in, uh, not Estoril, in Portimao last time out that has seen him hospitalized since but thankfully Carlos has taken to social media during the week posting a thumbs up and a big smile on his Instagram page which is fantastic to see but we do wish him a speedy speedy recovery the Moto2 European Championship rider it's Adrian Rodriguez who has that adorned across the front of his machine two P5s to kick off the season hasn't really kicked on from there 13th in Jerez 
and 18th then in Portimao last time. So he'll be looking for a little bit more consistency going forward. Yes, our eighth place in the championship is the number 44 of Adrian Rodriguez, a rookie this season. And then just behind him is his easy race team, Yamaha teammate of Marco Garcia in fifth place on the grid. Slap bang in the middle of the second row. Jumped up onto a 600 this year after racing in the European Talent Cup last year. It's been a very positive jump up for Garcia, two Portuguese podiums, one in Estoril and one in Portimao. Super, super rookie season from the 16-year-old. Looks a big talent. Now, Archie McDonald here in the number 69, riding the MRE talent machine. Fourth in the championship, 46 points, but as you can see, still to get that podium. And look how close he has been, P6, P4, P6, P4. And it's always just been a matter of milliseconds. So he will be hopeful of finally making the breakthrough at this level. But bear in mind, he still is only 16, the young Australian. So time is on his side, but he undoubtedly has the talent. Yeah, in his rookie season in the stock 600 category, he was uh, also another one of those rookies, plenty of rookies on this grid, and that's a lot of these riders use it as a stepping stone into the Moto2 category. Here's the number 74 then, Carter Brown, looking very, very strong so far this weekend. The British rider formerly riding in the British Talent Cup, rode in the e European Talent Cup as well, riding for the CF Motorsport outfit. That's Craig Fitz Fitzpatrick's team, a, a former racer who successfully ran in the BSB paddock, taking multiple wins and podiums. He's much happier now, Carter now he's on a 600cc machine, now he's on a bigger machine. He's, he's a tall lad, he's a big lad. He did well in the British Talent Cup, struggled a little bit in the European Talent Cup on the Bridgestone tires, but chasing his first points, and he picked up his first point scoring finish last time out with a P13, so next step for him, top 10. Yeah, super, super qualifying result for young Carter Brown. Let's hope that he can build on that as we look at Mario Mayor. P6 last time out. He had a super, super ride in the Algarve. He was competing for the podium places, but ended up having to go through the long lap penalty a couple of times. That still couldn't stop him coming sixth over the line. Yeah, Mayor taking that long lap penalty last time out. You're riding for the Yamaha GV Stratos team, currently fifth place in the championship. Raced in the ESBK 600 championship last year and finished eighth. Here's Borja Jimenez. He lines up in ninth place on the grid, the number 95 machine riding for the Super Hugo 64 team, a team that was set up in honor of Hugo Millian. Just 17 years old, jumped up to the stock category after racing in Jerez and Portimao and ETC, but failing to qualify for the races. So he's making his first appearance in the category this year after competing in the ESPK 600cc category as well. So he'll be looking to pick up points and pick up experience on one of the bigger bikes. There's the number 37 of Corey Tinker, or a British rider who's spent a good bit of time now out in the European stage and will be looking to push on. Was been looking pretty strong this weekend so far as the number 37. Yeah, he's put in some good efforts, but just a little bit further back on the grid than he would have liked in P14. But he looks a uh, good talent, and he's definitely had some great paces here throughout the campaign as of yet. Battling for six, seven plays, but they've been very entertaining battles. Not afraid to get the old elbows out, is Corey Tinker. Right then, 16 laps of battle here between the stock 600 riders. Here's your starting grid. Danny Munoz will start from pole position ahead of Fernandez and Dino Iozzo. On row two, that'll be headed by Rodriguez. Garcia with Archie McDonald rounding out row two. Carter Brown, Mio and Jimenez make up row three. And Mario starts from P10 with Moreno and Alex Millan in P12. Keep an eye on the number 23, a very promising rider. Pascal Alfano alongside Corey Tinker and Jacobo Hostrick in row five. Roca, Brooks and Hulowitz in the sixth row. While completing the grid is Nestola, Gonzalo Ribeiro, Javier Del Olmo. And then at the very back, Jack Bednarak is joined by Gomez Arieta and Ferrer. Right, 
Right then, the final race of the day, the final race on the billing here in Barcelona. They only get one race, do the stock 600 category. A category used as a stepping stone up into the Moto2 category. A cheaper option on the road bikes. Moto2 category proving to be a little bit more expensive than the road bikes. Of course, those prototype machines for this a more affordable category for the riders trying to make it out on the European scene and trying to be noticed. So it looks as if, as ever, it'll be a battle out the front between Danny Munoz and Eric Fernandez. The big question will be whether Dino Iotto, who's been showing some good pace this weekend, the only rider to join Fernandez and Munoz inside the 147s during qualifying, will he be able to latch on to those two out the front? It is going to be an interesting one to see. Yeah, outside 45 degrees Celsius on track. That is going to wear the tires down quite a bit throughout this stock race. But we have some quality competitors in this class. All eyes will be on the number 17 of Daniel Munoz and the number four of Eric Fernandez, of course, as they continue their title, Titanic title battle. But then the likes of Marco Garcia, Archie McDonald, Dion, Dino Iozzo has been on the podium a couple of times, as has Alex Mian. He's going to launch from P12. So there's a lot, a lot of quality to come through the field. Right then, it's anyone's guess. Could it be Fernandez? Could it be Munoz? Will Iozzo be able to bridge the gap? He's always sort of been the bridge point in between Munoz and Fernandez. A lot of riders saying they look to him as a reference rather than Munoz and Fernandez because they're just so far ahead in the league of their own. And then Iotto also in a league of his own, but a little bit further back from those two guys. So will he be able to bridge that gap this time around in the European stock category? We're about to find out. They come across to the grid and they will line up for their one and only race here at the circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. The number 17 then rolls up to top spot on the grid. Daniel Munoz, little stop, he got some heat into that front tire. SP57 racing team, keep an eye out. Let's see what he does in the first lap. And does Eric Fernandez, who's taking his time getting up to second on the grid, does Eric Fernandez have an answer for Munoz? 16 laps of battle then ahead of the stock riders here in Barcelona. Who is going to take the spoils? Will anyone be able to dethrone Eric Fernandez? The attention turns to the lights for their one and only race here in Barcelona. The lights are on, the lights are out, and we're off. It's a good start from Munoz. It's a good start from Fernandez as well, as both of them start to break away a little bit from the pack. They're all defensive down into turn one, taking that inside line. And it is Munoz who has the whole shot comfortably. Here comes Dino Iotto up the inside, but he didn't quite make that stick and has been pushed back. I think that's Marco Garcia then, who has slipped into third place, but it is Munoz and Fernandez, as expected, leading one, two. It's actually Adrian Rodriguez, Rodriguez. who has jumped up into third place. My mistake, my apologies. And Dino, Dino Iotto has moved into fourth. It's not what Iotto needed. He's now through on Rodriguez. There's already a little bit of breathing space for those top two, as we said so often in this 2023 stock campaign are just a cut above Fernandez. the rest. And Fernandez now taking the lead. Runs a little bit wide, but should keep it pinned. He, means and he business. does have the advantage here. He means business. This could be huge for him. They could really reduce the title lead. We're still a long way in, but you know, Iotto doesn't want to let these two guys bolt out at the front. And the number 13 of the IUM Motorsports machine is keeping tabs on Fernandez and Munoz. But as things stand, it's Eric Fernandez who's gotten the dream opening lap and he leads. Dino Here comes Iotto. the Iotto. Is he going to chance it? He's Not a little quite. too far. And in fact, Ooh, Adrian Rodriguez, Rodriguez round the outside. Adrian Rodriguez round the outside, but way too wide. Yeah, that's not going to stick. If you've got Dini Otto up the inside, he's not shy of a move, but Rodriguez gets the cut back through the right-hander. Munoz, Munoz unhappy with something Not there. sure what he's unhappy with, and perhaps a tear-off, but it just looked as if either complaining or a tear-off there for Danny Munoz as a hand flicked up as they went through the right-hander into the final couple of corners. 
for the first time as they head onto the front straight. A few riders heading out onto the green there, out of track limits, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Fernandez it is that leads then, ahead of Munoz. Rodriguez it is in third. Can Iotso put himself in the mix? And he does, he puts himself into second place. Brilliantly done there and from Munoz the number 13. Bunted back into fourth place. Rodriguez and Iotso mean business here. This Iotso is trying to get through there. There's no way he's gonna make it through, but he does. There was no room there and he pushed him out the way. Brilliant stuff from Iotso. This is a big, big ride from him. Munoz has been pushed all the way back. Now he's got Marco Garcia swarming all over the back of has Garcia actually gotten through on him now? But, well, Munoz has some trouble here. It was, we predicted that Munoz and Eric Fernandez were going to be in a class of their own. Well, how wrong were we? Two laps in, Iotso shows he means business. Adrian Rodriguez means business. And Mar Marco Garcia, too, is right there in the thick of it in the top five. Iotso, then, it is that leads a surprise here in the Stock European Championship. We said that he was looking strong this weekend, and he's going and he's proven us right at the front of this race. It's Iotso, then, that leads ahead of Eric Fernandez and Rodriguez. Munoz has been pushed back to fourth, but he's trying to bike back. Eric Fernandez takes the lead, and Munoz moves up into third place now. So Fernandez in control once again. Dino Iotso, let's see how long it takes. Daniel Munoz to make a move on Iotso and let's see how Iotso responds because you feel Munoz will not want to let Eric Fernandez build up much of an advantage out front. But yes, he doesn't want to battle Iotso in case he still gets put back into third position. That does just hand the advantage to Fernandez once again. Fernandez, you can see here, is a couple of bike lengths already. And here comes Munoz on the outside of Iotso. Iotso covering that inside line well, but Munoz is going to dart to the inside at turn one. Round the outside at turn one goes Iotso on Fernandez, but Fernandez says no. And he made sure there's no way through for Dino Iotso. It's going to be really interesting now to see how Fernandez and Munoz cope with having other riders around them because they've been out at the front on their own all, all season long. So it'll be interesting to see now how they'll fare with the likes of Iotso and Rodriguez in the mix. Yeah, they've got a fight on their hands. Like you said, nobody has been able to get near either of these two guys throughout the season. They've only been keeping each other company out yeah. front. But now look at Dino Iotso. It looks like he's made a serious step today. We've got Adrian Rodriguez there. We've got Marco Garcia. It's quite a big league group over the course of these opening laps. So yeah, let's just see. Particular Of particular interest will be Dino Iotso. Is this just some early race form or can he go the distance with the heavyweights of this class? Just a little bit further back, it's Munoz in third, Adrian Rodriguez in fourth, Garcia fifth, Alex Mian is already up the sixth after starting twelfth, Mario Mayor into seventh, Archie McDonald to eighth, Carter Brown on first with a good point, he's in ninth position when Borja Jimenez rounds out the top ten as things stand. Meanwhile, Fernandez is starting to check out. Munoz could see that happening, and he put himself up the inside of Dino Iotso down at turn 10. Can Munoz now reel in Fernandez? You'd like to think so. The pace so far this race has been a little bit off what we've been seeing from these guys. That could be down to the heat and track conditions, but I would expect the times to tumble a little bit more than they have so far, and they do. Fernandez sets the fastest lap of the race so far then. 1.48.0, and he improves his time by almost a second. And he's starting to stretch these guys out now then. Will Iotso be able to go through, go, go with them? Will Rodriguez be able to go with them? Yeah, Iotso, you can already see the gap. There's a few yeah. bike lanes in there. So it looks like the top two in the championship are going to check out and pull the pin a little bit. Let's see what Dino Iotso has in store. Can he, well, he's got Rodriguez and a couple of riders hunting him down behind him. But if he can just find a couple of tents over the next few sectors, then he'll be right back on the tail of the top two. Runs a little bit wide there. But some good starts then for other riders. Fernandez confirmation then, a 148.052, fastest lap of the race so far. And in response to that true sector one, Danny Munoz and sector two has set the fastest two sector one and sector two of the race so far. So Munoz looking to gain ground on the number four ahead of him. He's got that carrot being dangled ahead of him. He's reeling in Eric Fernandez out the front. Fernandez has only been able to get the better of Munoz once this year. 
Will he be able to do it here in Barcelona? Dino Iozzo very, very lively on the brakes. Every lap he comes round completely sideways into every corner. And I'm just wondering if it's losing him a little bit of time here. But perhaps just his style, just the way he likes to ride. We'll see what the lap times are this time around, but I think it's safe to say the top two are checking out once again in the European Stock Championship. It was only a matter of time, really. But now iozzo has got his hands full in the battle for third in the form of the number 44, Rodriguez. Marco Garcia's in there as well in fifth place on the number eight machine. Now, how close has Munoz been able to get? He sets a 47.8 on that last lap. That's the fastest lap of the race so far. Two tenths quicker than Fernandez, and he's now latched onto his rear wheel. We have a race on our hands for the race win once again. So a little further back, just checking on Corey Tinker. He's riding through magnificent hair flowing out of the helmet on the young Brighton. He's just tucked in, is it Carter Brown? Yeah, yep. tucked in behind Carter Brown with Archie McDonald then ahead of Brown. Archie McDonald, the number 69 there, is a big, big talent in this class and they'll be looking to rope in some of the bigger group ahead of them. Daniel Munoz then still chasing down Eric Fernandez out front. Fernandez seemingly having a response for him. He was two tenths slower on the last lap. And looking at the times now, it's been fav advantage to Fernandez. He's put a little bit of time back between them over that last sector. Not a whole lot of time, but just a little. Daniel Munoz, though, will not give up in the pursuit of his title dream. A little bit further back, are we going to see some movement here? We've got Adrian Rodriguez and Dino Iozzo. Dino Iozzo sliding through the left-hander there. Adrian Rodriguez looked at that angle like he might have been close enough for a move. But oh, there's a bike a down in the background back. there. And who has that gone down? I think that might be Borja Jimenez, but I'm not quite sure. I didn't get a good look at it. We'll update got you momentarily. We'll keep an Yellow eye on that flags one. are out at there. turns 10 and 11. As you could see, a rider went down in the background. We'll bring you confirmation momentarily. <coughs> in fact, it's Mario Mayor who has gone down. I thought yeah. it was Borja Jimenez who was riding alone, plowing alone furrow just behind the lead groups. But in fact, it's Mayor who was just a little bit closer to those guys in the podium battle. So now it's a two-way oh, fight for big victory. Big mistake there from Fernandez as he runs wide. He's looking behind him. Does he think there's There's a couple a looks flag? behind them. They're both looking behind. So maybe there's an on-track distraction, but there's something happening. I don't see red flag. Perhaps Hands he thought waving. he saw a red flag. Possibly. Almost. We'll bring yeah, you an update as we flag. hear as we learn about it ourselves, but that's Munoz has now closed the gap to him. Munoz as well also had a little look around and he has another one there to keep looking What's around. What's going on here? Something is happening, yeah. Perhaps an issue here for Fernandez or but something because he went both, wide. Both riders seem... Well, I think Fernandez is just holding up Munoz here. D Munoz doesn't know Dino what's going Hiotto, on. Dino Hiotto is right on them. Is he trying to slow them down and... He's not trying to slow Surely them down not. and Surely get them he into isn't. the pack. What's happening here? Surely there's an issue. He's still looking behind him. I'm not sure what's going on there well, with Eric the Fernandez. At first, I thought of sight here in Barcelona. They both had a massive gap out front, but they've been reeled in in a matter of seconds. And it looks like neither rider knows if the race is continuing. Did they see a red flag? Well, it seems the riders behind are happy to continue racing. So, <laughs> well, it's perhaps strange state. Fernandez of thought affairs. he saw one in the first sector, but I don't think that's the case because. He's continuing going and he's still losing time. Let's have a look at the lap times on this on this next lap because it's going to be considerably slower. I'll have a keep an eye on the top speed as well. I don't know if it's a speed issue, but I don't think it is because he ran wide at turn one and then started looking behind him as if there was some sort of issue there. But he seems to be back on the gas here. Not sure. 151s Three for both of them. Three seconds slower on the last than what they had been doing. So and we'll have to see what they do this time around. the group around. behind. Now it's all to play for here. Fernandez still in front, and look at that. Adrian Rodriguez swallowed. has moved into second. Danny Munoz has trouble on his hands once more. Dino Iozzo. Oh, that is an outrageous move on the flip-flap. Takes the outside line, jumps from fourth to second place. That is a special move as we look. And a retired rider here, Jacobo Hostrich, unfortunately, unfortunately for him, has pitted early. But back out front... <laughs> After one of the strangest laps you're likely to see on a racetrack, Eric Fernandez still leads. 
but Dino Iotto with a brilliant move has pushed himself into second Ooh, place. Iotto very, very close to the rear wheel of Eric Fernandez there. I'm going to have to keep an eye on the lap times here because Fernandez keeps still looking behind him and was just struggling through that first sector. Now, if Iotto can get through on him, we'll have to see if Iotto can pull away because it just feels like there's something not right here on that number four machine because there's no way you just lose three seconds. Obviously, he's looking behind him a lot. So I don't know what's going on there on that machine, but once Iotto's passed him, we'll see if he pulls away. Munoz looking eager to get back past Dino Iotto. They look as if they're back on normal pace, but we'll have to wait and see when they come across the line to see what the lap times are. There's something in sector one that they keeps drawing their attention, it would seem. Yeah, it's, it's Fernandez. He's just holding them up. It, it, there's something on the change of direction he looks behind every time on the change of direction. He just seemed like he was struggling to change direction first time. Let's have a look this time around because he looks fine through the rest of the circuit. I don't see any issues anywhere else. So let's have a look here. The lap times are back down to more or less what they were doing before, slightly slower, but nothing massively out of the ordinary. That number 13 machine so quick in a straight line. Right, let's have a look through this first sector then. Through the right. OK, we're looking at Munoz. All right, I guess we won't see it then. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep a look and... Seemed and fine seemed, that time, yeah, no idea. Just the reaction no there, idea. no... Yeah, it's very, very strange state of affairs, perhaps around turn five as well. We might just have a little look because they began to sort of slow down throughout this whole sector. I think it's coming around here as well. He's not... He couldn't be trying to slow, intentionally slow the pace, just get the other guys into it because... Even if he does win every race and Munoz comes second in every race, okay. I believe if my maths is correct, not to speculate too much, but Munoz is odds on title favorite. So he needs some favors from the other riders or for, for example, Munoz to record a DNF and he needs to win the races. But it's a strange, strange state of affairs. Regardless, he still leads. Dino Iotto is in second place and Dino Iotto will be delighted by whatever happened there because it looked like the front yeah. two had decided to come check out him. and now he's pushed himself brilliant brilliant move in that turn one turn two right to left uh, switch to get from fourth to second and then that's the number 23 of Alex Mignan who's just pushed himself up into fourth place brilliant ride from the 50 motorsport rider number 23 keep an eye on him there just ahead of Marco Garcia started 12th on the grid and has been putting in some fast, fast laps. And now it was chasing a podium of all things. All right, then he stretched them out again on this lap then. So it seems to have put the hammer back down, 48-4 on that last lap. So he's back to the pace we know that he's capable of for Eric Fernandez. So whatever happened there, whether he was slowing the pace up, it seems to be over now, but it's put Iotso straight into the mix and he doesn't need a second invitation. He will happily get well and truly stuck in on that number 13 machine. Fernandez then it is that leads and seems to be controlling this way this race in in some form at the front. Iotto though all over his rear wheel, just clinging onto his coattails now as Fernandez continues to put the hammer down. It looks as if this front three now is starting to break away, with seven and a half laps remaining. Are we going to have a three-way scrap for the lead as the laps tick away? This battle then for fourth between Mian Garcia and Rodriguez is hotting up nicely as well. That'll be one we'll have to keep an eye out on. Yeah, absolutely. Some big talent here. Alex Mian is on a fine, fine run. Quite a surprise to see him qualify so low down on the grid. But it's no surprise to see him charging through. A couple podiums to his name this season. Lots of top fives, top six results. And generally always part of that podium fight that's left behind Eric Fernandez and... Uh, Daniel Munoz, but Dino Iotto remains in second. Marco Garcia just goes through on Adrian Rodriguez, but Mian very much in control here, runs a little bit wide, but gets to drive out, cuts it back left, and still in control here. So two front groups forming here, one for the podium battle and victory, and the second for fourth place. If they can fall in behind Alex Mian, he's lapping quite quickly, not quite as quick as the guys ahead of them. Dino Iotto doing an excellent job there. And yeah, just checking back, another group forming back, but it's Alex Mian. If they can just keep going at this pace, it looks like the front three might open up a bit of a gap, but if Eric Fernandez decides to slow down the race again, who knows what could happen? Yeah, still perplexed as to what happened there, but 
we can only we can only wonder. Oh, and a nice move there as Mian goes wide. Rodriguez takes full advantage of it. Sorry, I believe it was the number eight of Marco Garcia actually who went wide. So a good move there on his teammate. The, the 44 is telling him to follow him. He believes he can catch the top three. Well, if you think you can do it, let's have a look. Let's have a look if you see if you can do it. He needs to find a couple of tenths at least to match the pace of the guys out front. Dino Iozzo was the quickest of those three riders in the podium places last time out. A 148-1 and a couple of tenths as well on the other two guys. So maybe, just maybe, they're beginning to slow down Fernandez and Munoz and settled into a rhythm out front here, which is very much music to the ears of Eric Fernandez, Dino Iozzo, Daniel Munoz, though, let's see how much he's willing to risk it. 16 points currently on offer. Another little look behind. But 16 points on offer for Munoz. Will he risk it all and go Is for victory? He's looking behind again there. I'm wondering maybe if you're right, Chris, if he is trying to slow the, slow the pace up. Because look, these guys are, are, are coming in on them again and they're catching this front three again. So I wonder if he's just trying to put as many bikes between him and Danny Munoz. But he's looking good at the front of this race on the number four machine. He's controlling the race perfectly, exactly what he needs to be doing. And I wonder, let's yeah, have a look at the laps. you can see it now. The number yeah. 44 of Adrian They're Rodriguez has really closed that gap. So this is going to be interesting. From him. Let's yeah. have a look at the lap times. 50.2 he is, I think he is. And Dino Iotto might make him pay here. He's gone right side by side. And here comes Munoz up the inside. Well. <laughs> oh, Eric Fernandez, that, right then. that is karma. If that is what he was doing, Ooh. we can't speculate too much. But Mr. Danny Gear Munoz there. has decided enough is enough and he wants to lead. Here comes Fernandez. What's he got in his back pocket then for the championship leader? Could you see Munoz as he went down into turn one looking down at the dash? He'll be looking to make sure he selected the right gear. And the fact that he went right, I think he was just in too high of a gear there. Didn't have enough engine braking to get it down, get it down to the apex. Uh, but it hasn't cost him too much time. Now is the breaking point. If Munoz can put the hammer down and take Fernandez with him, it might stop the games from the number four. Now what Fernandez needs to do is bike straight back at Danny Munoz. And he's going to be looking to try and do that. Is he going to be able to do it, though? Six laps, well, five and a half laps to go of this race. And we very much have a race on our hands. Everyone's looking behind them in this one. Look where you're going. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, Corey, Corey Tinker. Tinker is down turn four. Huge disappointment for him. He's been excellent all season. He's really developed into a top, top rider at this class. Still waiting for that. Maybe that real breakthrough result. Ooh, it was a fast one too, eh? Couple tumbles through the gravel trap. And Eric Fernandez now has got big problems. He's been pushed back. <laughs> I'm perplexed, as you said, to what actually has been going on. The lap times, 150s last time out. I imagine a much quicker one now. Danny Munoz has said enough is enough, yep. and he's going to bolt out front. Dino Iotto wants to stick with him, but Eric Fernandez really, really needs to get back onto the coattails of the man in P1. That's Danny Munoz, the number 17, a 149.653 that time. So not a whole lot quicker, but definitely quicker than what the pace that had been set. Coming into turn one then, will there be any change in the lead? Not quite. Oh. I love watching Iotto on the brakes. Gets it sideways, gets it leery every single lap. He's enjoying that Yamaha R6. And it is a characteristics of the R6. You bang it down the box, and a lot of the time the rear wheel steps out, and he uses it to full effect. Really impressive stuff from Iotto. Now, Fernandez needs to be careful here, because he's trying to run this strategy, we think, of putting bikes in between him and Munoz. But now it's the roles have reversed, in a sense, and he's got a bike in between him and Munoz, but the wrong way around. Exactly, and he's got problems behind because Adrian Rodriguez, Marco Garcia and Alex Mian are not going anywhere just yet. So he's going to take a little look up the inside here, not quite. Dino you know, Iotto is putting some space between them. I, I'm not sure what's going on with Eric Fernandez. Does he potentially have a problem on the bike? Again, a few riders having a little peek behind them to see what's going on. But yeah, let's just keep an eye on how this progresses. Just over four laps to go, under five laps remaining. It is Danny Munoz who leads. He won't quite take the championship with this result, but if things stay like this, it's a huge step in the right direction for the SP57 racing team rider with the number 17 emblazoned across the front of his machine. Dino Iotto though, he's on for a super, super ride and potentially a season best performance. 
Three wins out of four races so far then for Danny Munoz. Can he make it four out of five here? Or will Iotso or will Fernandez make their way ahead of him? Iotso's losing a little bit of ground there and Fernandez can sense it. Fernandez try. Fernandez trying to get the better of Iotso down into turn one. He's got the inside line. Who's going to blink first on the brakes? It was Iotso incredibly late on the brakes. Almost touches the rear of Eric Fernandez there. Fernandez, sorry, Danny Munoz. Munoz runs a little bit wide, but keeps them at bay for now. Yeah, Iotso very, very late on the brakes there. It looked like he might have just gotten up the inside of Munoz, forced him wide, which would have played into Fernandez's hands. But Iotso, again, he's just a little bit too far. He's got about a bike length, a bike, uh, length and a half between them. So Iotso will probably need to start making up some ground get into that slipstream. Remember, it's a kilometer in length, the front straight here in Barcelona. So there is plenty of slipstream on offer, but it's one of the best races of the campaign so far. Danny Munoz has got problems. He is leading here. Eric Fernandez is in third. It's really ripped up the script of the season to date. Dino Iotto is not going anywhere, nor Adrian Rodriguez, Marco Garcia, or Alex Mian. They're a little further back. Ooh, oh, Munoz. Munoz well into Careful. the green there. So we've seen riders on the green plenty of times already in this race. We'll need to be careful, Danny Munoz, if you don't want to get your track limits warning or a penalty. Yep, that'll be one to keep an eye out, one to watch. From memory, I don't think he's been on the green. I haven't spotted anyway him going out, out of track bounds at any other point in this race. But obviously, the stewards will have a lot more of a view than we do. Right then, Munoz then, controlling this race out the front now, putting the hammer down. Last lap was a 48-3, so the pace has really dropped here, and you can see that because the front three have broken away. Are we going to see a change for the lead anytime soon, or is Eric Fernandez going to try and make his way past Dino Iotto? They're three abreast going down into turn one. Fernandez trying to go around the outside of Iotto. Iotto is not going to let that happen, but he's got the inside line through turn two, but no, Iotto closes the door. Brilliant stuff from Iotto. It looked like Fernandez had lined that up late on the brakes, getting on the outside, trying to get that inside line. But Iotto closes the door, slams it shut in his face, and he's not letting go of this P2 without it being a dogfight. Saying that, he might still fancy his chances of getting on to out in front, rather, of Daniel Munoz. He's, Munoz still unable to break away. It's not like what we've seen in the year previous. Now they've put a bit of space between them and here we go track limits warning for the number 17 there we go Just so as we now go. it's another twist in this race should he go onto the green again if he sets off those sensors Danny Munoz must go through the long lap penalty and Tristan as you know it is a pretty unforgiving long lap penalty here in Barcelona yeah absolutely when well, we've seen it happen in a couple of the other categories and you do lose a lot of time going through that Long lap loop at the beginning of the lap. Iotso again gets it very leery on the brakes. Sideways on that number 13 pink machine. Nice livery on that bike. Yeah, really nice. Sultan of Slide as well. Would Easy be to a spot. Nice apt title for Iotso. I do appreciate the way he's sideways in through some of these corners. Now Munoz just needs to keep each corner pinned a 148.427 last lap Eric Fernandez was pretty much the same 148.2 and after this lap Fernandez just has a slight edge as does Iotso over Munoz so are we going to look at a move coming up here oh, Eric Fernandez. Fernandez is into second two under two laps remaining now chance for Fernandez to make his move right then is it hammer down time now for Eric Fernandez? Two laps remaining of this stock European Championship. It's R6's one, two, three. Well, Yamaha's all the way through this field, really, with the exception of one Kawasaki. But Munoz then leads the way ahead of Fernandez. Fernandez now, it's now or never for him if he's going to try and put himself ahead of Danny Munoz. We asked the question ahead of the race whether Dino Iotso would be able to cling on to these guys, and he has been able to do it. He's matching their pace, matching their lap times. A little further back then, we see Adrian Rodriguez winning this battle for fourth. Just ahead of Marco Garcia, Alex Mian has faded somewhat. He was 
probably setting a little bit too hot of a pace to keep going. You can see him just there in the background of this battle. So he'll have to settle in for a sixth place finish. Out front though, Munoz still leading. Oh, Eric Fernandez just gonna have a little oh. look up the inside there. He's definitely not close enough for it to pull off. Maybe just showing a little wheel to Munoz, put him under pressure, maybe force him into a mistake. And remember, there's a track limits warning already applied to Danny Munoz. So he's got to be perfect going through some of these corners. We've been admiring Yotso's sideways style all race long, but he had a little bit too much there down into turn 10 and lost a little bit of time because of it. And now it's last lap time. Yotso's a little bit at drift. Looks as if he's out of victory contention, but anything can happen here in motorcycle racing as Fernandez goes to the outside down into turn one. Munoz going very defensive, but we know Fernandez can make that round the outside move. Munoz isn't having any of it though. They come through the first sector for the first time and it looks as if Iotso's just reeling him in ever so slightly, but still a little bit of breathing space between Fernandez and Dino Iotso. Where will Fernandez make the move? Will he be able to make the move? First opportunity gone then at turns one and two. Brilliant from Munoz on the brakes. It looked like Fernandez may have had that slipstream. Coming around then, not much of an opportunity there. What about here at turn five? Popular overtaking place, but once again, it seems Fernandez is just a little bit far away. Defensive line from Munoz hanging off his bike there. Another couple chances then for Fernandez, but he's going to need to get a lot closer here. Yep, Munoz. He's defending it well now. He'll go down into turn nine. Now, this run through turn nine is going to be very important for Fernandez. He's going to need to get on the rear wheel, and he does. He's got a good drive out of there. Very close to track. Will limits. he be able to? He is. Will he be able to make the move down into turn 10? He gives it a go. Oh, here he He's comes. not too tight either. He pushes a perfect block pass from Fernandez. Will Munoz have any answer for him? He doesn't have an answer through here. Oh, but Fernandez really closing the door there. No way through for Munoz. The only way now is either a drag to the line or an absolute lunge at the final corner. Is it going to happen? It doesn't need to for Munoz, oh, but he's having a go. He's doing it. Oh, he's got him. And he's there's got no him. way. Fernandez has been pushed on the outside. Munoz takes victory in Barcelona with an incredible last lap move, reminiscent of Valentino Rossi in 2009. And there's nothing that Eric Fernandez could have done about it. He pulls off the impossible in Barcelona. What a move. We thought Eric Fernandez had done the job getting inside a turn 10. But what a move. Valentino Rossi, Jorge Lorenzo, Daniel Munoz, Eric Fernandez. What a sensational move from the number 17. And crucially, a huge result for his championship chase. Puts him 35 points out with 50 left on the board. Wow, what a, what a race here in Barcelona. I think we need to stop saying that if you go come out of turn 10 in the lead, you're going to win the race because we've been proven wrong once again here, this time by Danny Munoz. An incredible victory. He's got to be happy with that one. Fernandez puts his hand up, did absolutely everything he could, but... Nothing could have been done about that. Like we said, he's pulled off the impossible at the final corner. What a move from Munoz. He's proud of that one. Tries to skid it into turn five. Munoz then. Five, sorry, four victories in five races for the Spaniard. And Fernandez will be wondering what he has to do to get the better of the number 17 SP57 racing team machine. Clearly, there's not much he can do. Perfect performance by Munoz. Brilliant, brilliant in Barcelona. Dino Iotso put in an incredible race to cling on to the guys, but perhaps just lost a little bit of grip towards the end with all those slides, all that sideways action that we saw all race long from Iotso. Perhaps just chewed up a little bit too much of that tyre. Didn't quite have enough in the tank on that final lap. But Danny Munoz, I'm still trying to catch my breath from that one. Oh, what a ride from the number 17. What a last corner, what a last lap. Nice sideways action there again from Iotso. He celebrates leaving a dark line. He's leaving his mark on the Barcelona circuit. Picks up another podium on his 2023 campaign. That's his third podium this year out of five races. So. Looking very strong, incredibly consistent for the 
the South African running under the Italian flag with an Italian father but was born in South Africa and I believe still lives there. Danny Munoz then comes into pit lane and look at him. <laughs> he can't believe it. I couldn't believe it. He can't believe it. An incredible run from him and absolutely untouchable. His worst result this season has been second place. He's won every race apart from one. And that race was second at Jerez to Eric Fernandez. Fernandez tried everything he could, but it wasn't enough. He's congratulated and look how much the team are loving that. I don't blame them. What an incredible victory. That's one that he's never going to forget. That's the last corner that I'm not going to forget in a hurry. I don't think any of the spectators will forget either. He can't believe it. <laughs> the team can't believe it. Incredible scenes here. And really nice to see that we stand with you, Carlos. Carlos Tatai, unfortunately, sat out of Moto2 European Championship action this weekend with his injury. We know he's OK. Well, relatively OK. He's on the road to recovery. Eric Fernandez. <laughs> What does he have to do to take victory? He tried everything he could, but he put in that perfect pass at the final corner, but it was, uh, sorry, at the turn 10, but it wasn't enough after that brilliant final corner manoeuvre from Munoz. Iotso's happy with that one. Yes, he stuck with them until the chequered flag, more or less, just dropped Woo! off the boil ever so slightly at the end. Hot. Yeah, <laughs> apologies for the language, but yes, it is quite hot out there, Dino. Here's how it happened then. There was plenty of action out the front. Danny Muthenos was pulling off incredible move after incredible move on the number 17 machine. Went incredibly defensive on that final lap. Fernandez tried all he could to get the better of Munoz, making the perfect block pass at turn 10, did absolutely everything he needed to do. But unfortunately, the door was left ever so slightly open and Danny Munoz did not need a second invitation. He takes victory in one of the most spectacular, probably the best move of the day in the Fenetwork FIM Junior GP Championships. An incredible way to finish the billing here. And you're gonna hear from the race winner, Danny Mignoth, who's down in Park Firm 8 with Chris Jordan. Yeah, thanks, Tristan. Danny, at times, a little bit of a strange race, but the finish, my word, a sensational way to take, yes, another win here in the stock class. Yeah, yeah, the, the race <coughs> was strange because the pace is very slow. <coughs> uh, and when I see this pace, I try my best, <coughs> I, I think, that is better, uh, try my best in the last lap. Uh, and when uh, <coughs> no, the last lap, I push uh, my maximum. And the last, in the last corners, Eric passed me, and I passed him in the last corner. I'm very, very, very happy. Thank you for Robert, my trainer, uh, Jorge Arroyo, my, my team. Y uh, una pronta recuperación a Tatay. Y ahora, toro en español, porfa. La carrera ha sido muy rara, el ritmo ha sido muy lento. Eh, Eric quería frenar al grupo, pero bueno, al final hemos sabido desenvolvernos bien. En mitad de carrera he metido un tirón, a ver si podía sacar una distancia, pero he visto que era difícil. Y he aguantado ahí el ritmo, sabía que Eric me iba a adelantar en esa curva. Y yo tenía claro que tenía que intentarlo en la última. Muy contento, agradecer a Robo, mi entrenador, a Jorge Arroyo, al equipo y a Carlos Totay. Bueno, felicidades y muchas gracias. Here's how the action went down in Barcelona for the Stock European Championship. It was an incredible start from Danny Munoz, who took the whole shot from pole position. He led the way on the opening lap as Eric Fernandez pushed his way into second place. It looked as if Munoz was going to run away, but not if Fernandez had anything to say about it. There was this incredible move from Dino Iotto, who pushed his way through on Eric Fernandez and put in an incredible, incredible performance to take the podium. Iotto led the way 
in the opening laps, but Fernandez then was incredible on the breaks down into turn 10 and put himself underneath the South African running under the Italian flag. Fernandez to continue to push on. Looked as if there was some issue halfway through the race. Slowed the pack down. He was trying to put, we think, bikes in between him and Danny Munoz. Not 100% what happened there. Danny Munoz, though, making moves on Dino Iotso halfway through the race. Plenty of overtakes happened down at turn 10, and unfortunately, the number 82 went down and out. That was Mayor. Moves were happening at turn one, number 44. Rodriguez was putting himself into the mix at one point in the race. He was to be battered about down the order a little bit and then finished in fifth place by the end of it. Fernandez then pushed his way back to the front and he was scrapping away with the likes of Iotso and Danny Munoz for the rest of the race. Munoz made that move down into turn one, looked as if he'd missed a gear, went slightly wide, but managed to keep the pack behind him. Corey Tinker, unfortunately, went down and out of the race. So he ended his Barcelona weekend in the gravel trap. Danny led the way then onto the final few laps as there were some wild rushes into turn one. Fernandez went round the outside of Iotso. Iotso then just dropped off the back of the front two, but managed to consolidate P3. And then on the final lap, Eric Fernandez, perfect block pass at turn 10, put himself up the inside of Fernandez. He thought he'd, jog, he'd done, he got the job done, but then as the team looked on, it was the move of all moves at the final corner as Danny Munoz put it up the inside of Eric Fernandez to take an incredible victory in the Stock European Championship ahead of Fernandez and Iotso. The team were happy with it, and so was Munoz. An incredible victory, an incredible end to his weekend in Barcelona. Y es Manuel Pastrana quien va a recoger el premio. The team representative then for the SP57 Swan heads onto the podium to receive his trophy. Dino Iotto then running under the Italian flag heads onto the podium. Bambino is the nickname for him, has been since he was racing in Super Sport 300 on the Honda. Eric Fernandez. Doesn't look happy with that one, but there's nothing else that he could have done about it, Chris. No, absolutely not. I mean, those moves are just so rare. He timed his to perfection. But just clearly something special on that last corner from Danny Munoz. You can see the contrast of emotions there. All very happy on one side there at the top step. Eric Fernandez gutted. He thought this was a big opportunity to get himself back into the title fight. Unfortunately for Fernandez, it was a masterclass from Munoz once again, who took another 25 points towards his championship campaign. And surely now, he hasn't won the championship yet, but surely the deal is more or less sealed for the number 17. For four victories out of five races, the only race he hasn't won, he was second. It was this man who receives the second place trophy once again. He got the better of him back in Jerez. He's got the pace, but clearly Munoz has got the strategy and he's got the race form. It is Munoz who takes another win. He receives his trophy and he's delighted with that one. So we'll hear now the Spanish national anthem. Danny Munoz takes another victory for Spain then, ahead of his Spanish compatriot. Eric Fernandez and Dino Iotso rounding out the podium.
What does Fernandez have to do to get the better of Munoz? It's a big, big question for sure, Tristan, because Danny Munoz just has that X factor in this class, doesn't he? Eric Fernandez is also excellent and absolutely no mug, but he's been second one win and he's been second every other time. And the one time he didn't come one or two, he had crashed out from the lead. Well, he's got to keep learning. 35 points now, though, in the championship between the two top two. You can see Eric Fernandez still not overly delighted. Very bittersweet podium for him. But Danny Munoz and Dino Ayotzo very much leading the celebrations. Some fizzy water and Prosecco there as a little bit of earth, wind and fire belts out around the circus. Once again, DJ on point today. The podium DJ, we should make this more of a common thing, the podium DJ. Let's have a little look then at how it ended. There's your confirmation. Daniel Munoz took the victory ahead of his championship rival, Eric Fernandez. Dino Yotto with an incredible and important podium, this third podium of the season, ahead of Marco Garcia and Adrian Rodriguez, who rounded out the top five. Alex Mian finished in sixth place ahead of Borja Jimenez and Archie McDonald down in eighth. Carter Brown on the number 74 brought home a solid top 10, his first top 10 on the number 74. Moreno finished in P10 ahead of Rocca, Armario and Dan Brooks, who's got a shoulder injury at the moment after a crash at Jerez. Pasquale Alfano in, down in 14th ahead of Hulewicz in 15th, Del Olmo. 18th place went to Jack Bednarek, the Brit, ahead of Arietta, Mayor, Ferreira, and then unfortunately, Corey Tinker, one of the non-scorers. Here's how it affected the championship then. It's a 35-point lead for Daniel Munoz after his fourth victory of the season. Eric Fernandez, 35 points adrift with Marco Garcia, still there in third place, 49 points away from Munoz in first. He also jumps up to fourth place in the standings ahead of Archie McDonald and Alex Mion. Adrian Rodriguez, Corey Tinker rounding out the top nine. Max Rocker rounds out the top 10 ahead of Morena, Hoschik, Dan Brooks and Carter Brown. Jimenez rounds out the top 15 in the championship ahead of Nestola and Alfano with seven points to his name for the Italian on board his Yamaha R6. Ribeiro is 18th in the championship as well. Seven points to his name ahead of Rivera, Florov, Armario, Jack Bednarek, down in 22nd, four points to his name ahead of uh, Del Olmo, Hulewicz and Arietta, both with three points to their name in 24th and 25th respectively. Munoz now then with a firm hold on the championship and the pack will be wondering what they have to do to get the better of the Spaniard. An incredible victory for Munoz and an incredible end to the day's action here in Barcelona. We've had a brilliant day of racing and we've had some incredible action. It's kept us glued to our screens all the way through. But ending with a win for Danny Munoz.